right, check one. Starting a little early, just to make sure that there are no technical difficulties on the stream. So if you're watching live, uh, yeah, enjoy the uh, behind the scenes. Uh, if anything is wrong, put it in the chat. I wanna make sure that you can hear us and uh, that we all look beautiful. Thanks.
Check. One, two, three, four, five. Hey! Hey, assholes. We're live streaming. Come over here. <laughs> Are we changing the seating order or same? Same. Okay. My back will be to Pat the entire time. Well, again. that was feedback that we got from I know. Edwin. That's what I was asking. I know. Yeah. Check, check. Pat we, is stupid. He is. We did do all this already, jerk. All right, here we go. Woo! There's, Welcome to the wild There's still times. much smeared banana what? and tortoise poop in front of me. <laughs> is that tortoise from poop? From yesterday. Perfect, dude. Bottle I, opener in the crowd. I fished it out of the... Uh, Anyone have a bottle opener in the crowd? Bad brosers. Anyone here with a bottle Useless. opener? Useless brosers. Anybody in the building? No one has one of those sandals where you have the bottle opener on the bottom? Here comes... Here comes Forrest with his weird su South American Ooh. traditions. Don't forget mine, eh? Thanks, baby. Fat tire. Ooh, Cheers, Thanks for man. sponsoring us. Get over here and let's talk about what animal kind of. They're they're healthy. How do they get through their days? We're animals. <laughs> Diet Coke is not a sponsor, but it is delicious. All right. Can't say that. Coca-Cola uh, will sue you if you I say that. I think some of the people on the live stream are asking, what is Animal Con, first of all? No one's asked that. I swear to God. Not one person. I swear to God. Uh, all right. Well, what is Animal Con? Actually, here's... Are we, are we live? Have we We're live. live. Let's go live. Oh, oh Jesus. Live. I sound yeah. terrible. I drank way too much. How's everybody doing? You guys good? All right. Sweet. Can you guys hear us? That's a huge improvement over yesterday where no one could hear us. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, let me ask you guys this as we get started here. Yes, sir. What is Animal Con? I was here last year. I, I, I knew what I was getting into. What are your first impressions? What do you think? Pat? I mean, it's a booze convention. It is, yeah. Basically. <laughs> well, it was for us, but I, I don't know if anybody else was going as hard as we were last night. It was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, you, what was it that you made us do last night? Why are you bringing that up? Because it happened. What, okay. what was this called? Tequila Suicides. Yeah. Explain how this works. Should I explain it or should you explain it? Uh, so Forrest was like, oh, we're going to do a really fun shot. Roped in like 25 Animal Con peeps. <laughs> this is true. It involved snorting a line of salt. Yeah. Then you take a shot of tequila. Drink the shot of tequila. And then you, instead of squeezing the lovely lime into your mouth, you squeeze it into your eyeball. Correct. Yep, tequila suicides. Yeah, I'm. I'm it uh, makes no it. sense. It's good that I. I, I yeah. don't think there's anybody under. Are you? Well, how, how old are you? No, behind you. Oh, it's all right. So nobody's underage here. That's good. This all is right. good life lessons. This is animal important. Con don't is an do it. Convention. No, do it. Go to college and do this. It will make you popular. Remember that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's bring up our first guest. All right, of Diane. The day. Let's go, buddy. Reptiliatus. How you doing? What's up, brother? Good to see you Always too. a pleasure. What is going on, dude? Oh, well, you know, we're at Animal Con. This right is, into this the mic. It's been a great weekend so far. Thanks for having me. Hell yeah, now, brother. Let me ask you, because I, I, it's whatever is on everyone's mind watching on, on YouTube Live. Is Was Reptiliatus the name that you were given at birth? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, to be honest, though, my, my real name is just as complicated. Oh, it is. Okay. So my True. name is Dion. Dion. Yeah. It's yeah, that's a cool yeah. name. I like yeah. that name. It's actually Arabic. So, Dude, yeah. what's going on? I haven't seen you in about a year. I know. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what's new? Tell us what, what is happening in the world of herpetoculture. Well, well, in herpetoculture, I don't know. Me, I, I'm always looking for new and exciting species to work with. Yeah. I really like to find the more obscure critters that are sort of underrepresented in the trade. And I don't want to say spearhead, but attempt to and... Yeah, so right now I'm getting into Cynodactylus, some of the sand gecko species. Sand gecko from yeah. uh, the Ar Arabian Peninsula? Yes, and also, well, yeah, so like northern Africa and into the Middle East. Okay. So there's a Cynodactylus, Cynodactylus, uh, which is, uh, I think the common name is the elegant sand gecko. You knew this, right? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's and then the yeah, he's a big sand gecko. I will guy. after this. I'll know it yeah. after this. After and then there's a, a species that's a bit larger. It's the 
Cynodactylus petri or petrii, and okay. they call that, I think, the Egyptian sand gecko. And they're really cool. Like, they're these really interesting little geckos. They can be kept communally, even multiple males. Um, you can set them up in, like, a large desert environment. They dig tunnels, and cool. they're actually cool. kind of handleable. But so are you are you building, like, an ant farm, basically, so that you can see it? No, <laughs> I swear to God, it's like, a, like, you know, like the tunnels and stuff. Like, can you come up with an enclosure like that you definitely could but you can also use the right substrate that they create those tunnels themselves oh cool well i'll just go fuck myself (laughs) Um, (laughs) no uh no all right he's like you could do that Uh, correct no one would correct yeah Um, you could give them like the start of a tunnel and then let them do the rest you know dude diane tell me okay so you you specialize in underrepresented weird bizarro critters yeah. right specifically reptiles and bringing them into the hobby trade sure i mean things that are coming in like I, i'll elaborate a bit on it like i have this it's not really i think it's a shared philosophy or idea that you know we we have a healthy understanding that there are animals that come in from the wild and 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 are trickling into the trade but i really have this principle that those animals like the sacrifice they've made at, unwillingly to come into the trade should be to establish them as a captive population. You're, you're preaching the choir over yeah. here. We all, we all, everybody on this panel and probably yeah. everybody listening agrees that getting, you know, look, it depends what creature you're talking about, right? You know, I don't, I don't think hobbyists should have orcas, yeah, um, no. <laughs> but I do think they should have sand geckos sure. and have robust populations yeah. of them. So, um, you know, you, you preach the choir over here, but tell us a little bit more about that. Like what makes you, how are you researching this? What species are you finding? Yeah, because you're you're very into like the education side of it, right? I like to think so. I mean, I also I never try to seem like my way or the highway sort of thing. It's like I, I I try to come across as well, not just come across. I try to be genuine and sincere, and and this is like my humble experience, and I show the good side, the bad side. So I think one of the things I'm more well known for at this point is is my work with crocodile skinks, they're the tribulonotus. Yeah. All right. So I have two species: the gracilis, which are like the red eyes, and the white eyes. Which the it's a kind of complicated Nova Guinea or however you pronounce it. Um, and with those, you know, I, I, a lot of the imports I got in were riddled with parasites. Some of them had sepsis. And I'm very fortunate that one of my closest friends is a veterinarian, Dr. Alec Brown. And so we've been able to show, like, our vet visits and how we're treating the animals and, and oh, yeah. impart that. that is cool. and, and, I mean, there, there's some sad sides to it. You know, I've lost a few animals in that process, but a lot of them have recovered. A lot of them are now healthy weights and breeding. And so That's great. Um, I think it was that that kind of inspired me to do it with other species now and really in hopes to perpetuate that and and it's so cool to see all these other hobbyists now not just because of me but i think that maybe gain something from what i shared that are now like really helping to spearhead and and create these established captive populations of these animals to alleviate or or make it unnecessary to collect them anymore so how much of this comes down to good husbandry versus some animals are just not meant to be kept in captivity i mean that's the tricky thing too with spearheading is because you know as much as some species there have been hobbyists that have worked with them, like when, when there's limited information, you don't necessarily know that yeah. that's the case until Forrest, you try, what's, right? What's like a known reptile that's like impossible to keep or that's just one that <sighs> you shouldn't keep? I mean, I keep? don't like to. Well, I, I, oh, yeah. sorry. No, go no, ahead. you go, you go. Well, I can give an example like Fly River Turtles, right? I'm right. a turtle guy. I like turtles. Yeah. When they first came into the country, which was probably, what, 40 years ago, 35 yeah. years ago? These are unbelievable animals. They look like a cross between a sea turtle. Well, they look like a sea turtle, but they live in fresh water and last of their genus. When they first came into their country, pretty much everyone that came died. They couldn't figure out why. They were importing them. They got crazy fungal infections, which led to bacterial infections. They all just diminished. And then it took many, many years of being like, oh, well, they actually have to have like slightly brackish water. They have to have super high pH. They have to have all these various factors in order for them a picture to picture the t-shirt sorry oh nice yeah yeah good <laughs> um they have to have all these various factors in order for us to keep them well and now they're i wouldn't go as far as the word common but they're they're regularly kept and hobbyists have them and they do great but it took several generations of poor husbandry and tinkering to figure that out basically. gotcha but even those like the controversy of that is like it's 
they're still, to my knowledge, not reproducing captivity because in, they, in Indonesia the they are. Okay, cool. uh, that's what I, that's what it, I've been told. Is it yeah. captivity or is it like they? Because I understood that their their nests have to flood to hatch the eggs or something like that. So my understanding, and it, it is limited, is that in Indonesia they're yeah, captively limited. breeding them, but that's they're doing it, you know, in like. <laughs> giant simulated environments yeah yeah not, yeah not like in an aquarium right yeah and i mean there are other examples of you know species that have super niche or hard to provide diets like i can't remember the name of them for the life of me there's some kind of iguana in i think in guyana that it's like green and striped and it yeah, has I, a spiny hold tail. on say that four times fast iguana in guyana iguana in guyana iguana <laughs> that, that was he one and a half try it didn't even get to try it easy do it. No, you always get this. You go last. Iguana in Guyana. Iguana. In yep. Iguana in Guyana. Iguana. Fuck. Okay, now, now, now you got to try again. Iguana in Guyana. That? Iguana in Guyana. Uh, no, 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 that's hard it's to impossible. do. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Please. All right. Continue. Anyone who can do this gets a free uh, gecko from Reptile. Yes. Yeah, great. No questions <laughs> asked. Of your choosing. I'm in Canada, so you're going to pay for shipping. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, yeah, to my knowledge, that species feeds almost exclusively, I think, on ants and termites. And so, sure, depending where you are, maybe you can provide ants to the animals. But um, and there, there's interesting developments. Like I know, I think it's Rapashi has like a, it's like a formic acid supplement or something like that that you can dust to animals. So I don't know if that helps. Um, maybe it doesn't. It depends on the species, how they, I guess, how palatable or whatever it is. But there's yeah, there's species like that um, that maybe don't. Th you know, there's so many options out there. Maybe we put less focus on something that's so niche and hard to keep and focus more on preserving its environment instead. So we put about, I don't know, what, 15 seconds of thought into the name The Wild Times. <laughs> we Not, just, like, yeah. said it and we're like, this that seems good. AI too, Correct. so we didn't have that help. Yeah. I know. No, yeah, how yeah, did you come up with thought. Reptiliatus? So <laughs> my channel didn't really take off till, I don't know. Like I, So I, I've had my YouTube channel since... 2009 or 8. Wow. I'm, That's like one of the first ones. You're an early adopter. Yeah. When but did YouTube come out? I feel like YouTube came out like nine months ago. Am I wrong? No, it was like, <laughs> okay. like 2000. That's yeah. TikTok. Yeah. I don't know. And, Whatever. Yeah, no. So, and yeah, I was in grade 11. I think, I, you know, I was watching Brian. He was inspirational He was in grade me. 11. That's and how Canadian he is. Yeah. 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 He yeah. wasn't yeah. in 11th grade. He was in grade 11. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or that's just how I talk <laughs> I know, about I it. Yeah. And yeah, so I mean, I... I grab my mom's camera as like a cyber shot and probably like two pixels or something oh yeah i remember and, those and just try to film stuff and and i had to come up with a name and i think what i did at the time is just keeping out uh, crested geckos and their latin name is ciliatus or ciliatus and uh i just wanted to take half of the word reptile and combine there it with go. that and that's just what i did what's the uh what's the biggest video you've ever had on your channel uh, it's actually right now it's a it's a feeding video and the thumbnail is of like a close up of this crocodile skink coming up to like hand feed or tongue feed nice. on the silkworm or something. So I think it's probably some level of is that thing real? Let me click on that video and <laughs> then they're cool. like, Holy yeah. crap, that was That's actually cool. real. Yeah. It's right. not edited. How like, big are those? Uh, they're not very big. They're like a few Five inches. inches. They, they look like Something out of Game of Thrones, though. Yeah, little oh, dragons. Really? Yeah, they yeah. look like dragons. They're amazing. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, they're really neat. And Where's uh, Kyle when you need him to pull up a picture? He's, used, <laughs> he's at a wedding, useless idiot. Uh, <laughs> no, that's what I was, today, that's what I was really thinking, too. I, I, I haven't had one sip of fat tire. Yeah, get I it get in, back on the horse. Hey, what's the <laughs> biggest uh, reptile that you keep personally? Um, Right now, it would be probably my green tree monitors not necessarily by weight but like they're the longest or kind of largest yeah animals they have the largest enclosure uh, everybody's been waiting on me to finish this upgrade i have like a seven by three by seven foot enclosure that i'm building uh, or assembling for them through custom reptile habitats and it's, it's i'm really excited to put this thing together i got my ficus trees and everything ready nice and, um That'll got be sweet. my cork walls so it's going to be really cool and nice enriching and for them so they're really cool animals too. any plans to uh get like a, a crocodile monitor no no come Aren't on those, like the most no. terrible, not any yeah. not any time you got a terrible animal you gotta do it what i've learned guys is space 
is a very precious commodity, yeah. Yeah. especially no when you do everything from home. Dude, yeah. try living in Southern California. Oh, my no. God. Yeah. Canada's pretty bad, too. Is the real it? estate yeah, market true. is terrible. True, so true, true. true. But yeah, Forrest enough. has an entire zoo in the size of a garage, basically. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> Teach me how to Tetris, man. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's a mess. You yeah. don't want any part of it. Trust me. Just <laughs> if you start taking in animals that need homes, you become yeah. a victim yourself. I've, I've yeah. seen your video yeah. on yeah. that. You see, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Just take on every useless creature unknown to man. Yeah. And then you end up with peacocks, and oh then you want to kill yourself because you have peacocks. Yeah, <laughs> pretty loud. Dude, right? there's oh. like a peacock situation going on in Florida right now. They're get, well, they're what invasive? situation is it? Yeah, That's a good one. Everything <laughs> Name one creature yeah. that doesn't yeah. exist. No, but in Miami, there's too many of them. They're pecking cars, <laughs> and so really? they're just getting rid of them. Yeah. yeah. I'd eat a peacock. I'd eat my own peacocks. I, I would. I would. If I didn't think my wife would kill me, I'd probably kill and eat our peacocks. <laughs> All I heard hey, is I'd eat my own. It's sustainable. Yeah. Um, all right, we're way off topic here. No, yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> we're talking about eating peacocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice, Dan. Well, what else have you got coming up? What else is exciting? I mean, obviously, you're doing the sand geckos. That's huge. What's a weird um, out there creature that you're working on? Um, I don't know. I mean, I have the... Um, I'm very lucky to have a group of the Shinisaurus, or the Chinese crocodile lizards. Oh, that's they're, really they're cool. Also like Another, think, he likes these dragon-looking things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sweet. Yeah. And they're, they're kind of, they're not stressful. Like, I know they're doing well and thriving, but I haven't been able to reproduce them yet. And they're Ascites, one animal, so, like, getting more of them is kind of out of the question. They, okay. I, I got them because they were already in the country before they went Ascites, one. And so I'm really trying to focus on reproducing those guys. But I'm hoping to do a bit more traveling as well. Um, last time we, well, when we first met, yeah. I think I'm, I told you about how we went to, or we're planning to go to Madagascar. Yes, and absolutely. you gave me some great tips on that. And so we did that in January. Oh, you went? Was, you went? Yeah. It was oh, well, tell us about that. Uh, Dude, that's like a time here. reptile oh, no, that's heaven. Good, but, like, <laughs> that, that was an incredible experience. Like, you know, myself and a few of my fellow creator friends, we went on a 16 day expedition through Madagascar. You know, Where'd you, what, what part of Madagascar? So, I mean, you, you as everyone knows, <laughs> we started in Antananarivo and then we made our way up to um, Rano Mafana. Mm -hmm. so we did the long drive. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to Fian Fianaransu. We stopped there um, and then made our way up to Andasibe, which yep. was. It was like everything we talked about. Yeah. 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 And yeah, Duke yeah. came in handy. Thank yeah. you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> and yeah. diuretic medication. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Lots of yep. zebu, which is their, I guess, type of beef. They yeah. So we're basically Delightful. eating steak and fries every day. Yeah. And Did which you somehow still will destroy your stomach. Yep. It makes no sense. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but Did it, you bring diapers with you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you Next should've. time. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know, though. Yeah. Yeah. I, would you go back to Madagascar without Depends? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'd That'd actually seek foolish. out a sponsorship. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they probably like would. Huggies, like, dude. Yeah. Do you see all sorts of crazy, like, chameleons? Unbelievable. And, yeah. It's funny, you know, a few of us were joking. It's like, I think I've seen too many chameleons. I'm like, what's wrong with you? But, like, that no, was, it's, like, it's overwhelming. the chameleons <laughs> yeah. you see there. My goal was to find your Platus, the leaf tail geckos. Leaf tails, and they're yeah. just my favorite. I've worked with them that for many years, That was the first thing too. we found on our first trip. Yep. Remember that? Yeah, Literally, right. it was, like, hour one minute. During and the day or at oh. night? What was it? I didn't hear That's the name. That's even luckier. So there was this little, geckos, there's this little island where we oh, went uh, cool. up in the northeast part of the country, and they're like, this is the leaftail gecko island. And we're like, like... It's not Nosy Bay or... No, right. it's it's um, the other side of the country from Nosy oh, wow, Bay. Oh, wow, okay. So maybe western side. I don't cool. even remember. Don't but whatever. But bad we're bad. on the way to where we were starting the expedition. They're yeah. like, do you want to stop at the at the leaf tail island and we we're like yes indeed we do <laughs> yeah. and uh literally we like stepped off the boat and like where the cameras are the guide was like right there and it, i was like looking at and like i'm pretty good at spotting stuff and i'm yeah. like looking like this and i was like yeah. there's no gecko on this tree and <laughs> Honestly, he's like how do you not see it it's like the most cryptic it depends what kind yeah. too but like even the mossies like because they have that dermal flap along the side so it blankets over the branch yeah. and you don't even see that there's something there's no sitting outline there. yeah there's no so outline. wild it's yeah. crazy and dude. then the the satanic leaf tails are so unbelievably cryptic. Like I filmed a few videos on the experience. But like one of like my friend who's the videographer, he were just walking down the trail in Ranomafana to go see the Indri lemurs, which was yeah, like a, it was practically a spiritual experience. Yeah, the Indri and the call. Yeah, you get their yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. They're so crazy. Yeah. But he just kind of I guess fixated on this leaf that <laughs> lo and behold was not a leaf. It was the gecko just hanging upside down head first yeah. and has like the tendril of the leaf everything just evolution is just incredible yeah it's it's such it a crazy, crazy animal don't don't yeah. don't make no sense no yeah um no that's cool what was your favorite what was your favorite thing you saw in madagascar 
Uh, man, it's so minus hard. Minus the inside of a toilet bowl. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? I was thankful. I for said that. minus the inside of a toilet bowl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. Like I, I went there to see. Like for me, it was like kind of a full circle moment to get to go see the the satanic leaf tail. So I was like, I, I pretty well cried at like just a little bit teary eyed, not to get all dramatic, but just to go all it's the all way right. there and make the trip and see yeah. those. But something about those injury, yeah, like just sitting there in in it's the trees the most under them. Piercing thing I've ever heard. By I, the way, so yeah. injury are the largest lemurs. We didn't make it there on our trip, right? But they're the largest lemur species. They kind of look like a panda. They're like yeah, like a teddy bear like thing. Like a teddy too. bear panda. <laughs> I don't know, but they have this crazy shrill call yeah. that you hear only in uh, Endosabi. No. I think that well, Is I that think the, park? the uh, yeah doesn't matter. And, yeah, and the sea bear. Or, and and yeah. it's just like it's this crazy shrill thing that they do at dawn and dusk. Can you do it? Yeah. I what does it try. sound like? Yeah, Let's hear go. it. No. Oh, no, it's yeah, like, Dan's you know, you know do what it. it's like? Dan's it's it's like when it. you take a balloon and stretch the sides. Like, oh, yeah. Like, it kind of <laughs> yeah. sounds that like that. Really that was really good. That was really good. Give us one more time. I, I, I'll talk Into the mic. You. Into the mic. <laughs> do it as loud as you can. Do it I'm like an injury. <laughs> like, Dude, literally that like that. Beautiful. Really good. Yeah, really nice. One oh of God. our guides. He the had monkey like over there is going insane after he did that. No, scared the shit out of that guides would do this, like, whistle thing. Yeah, And it was unbelievable. Like, how do you do that? Like, teach us, man. It was perfect the way he would just... You'd expect him to oh, yeah. whistle, but the, the injury call would come out. Like wow, dude, I've been trying to do that whistle yeah. for years. Yeah. What, the finger whistle? Yeah, I can't do yeah, it. It's called back. the dad whistle. I, 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 I'm not sure how many children you have to have before. It's <laughs> I think three. Three? Is that the number? I and think then you have instantly. to have three, three stout young men. <laughs> and then you get the whistle? <laughs> yeah. That really adds up, yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, ah, dude, man. Dion, thank you so much, man. It's been yeah. a pleasure having, having you. Buddy, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on. Thank Always you. a good time to see you. Let's Likewise. talk about your next trip after this. Sounds great. Thank you. All right, man. See you, buddy. Later, yeah. Sweet. All right, well, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. I Dude, think people get a bad rap about Madagascar from us because we got so, so violently People are so sick of hearing time. us. They're like, enough shit talk, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody we get in it. Madagascar definitely hates you. Oh, that's okay. Both of all of our listeners in Madagascar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, next up is a very cool guest. Uh, Paul is one of the OG Gator boys. That's right. Big time Gator guy, wrangler, wrestler, did the shows. And then came into Come nuisance up, alligators. Come on up, Paul. What's, What's up, man? How are you? How you been? Always good to see you. you too. How's life? It's going. Let's talk gators. Uh, What's no, new? let's talk Cayman. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I wanna, Pivot. I like it. I want to know about <laughs> the the formerly extinct Rio. What's it called? Rio, Rio Apaporis. Yeah. Uh, what, are there any like? Um, is there any programs being put into play to bring that back? Like a breeding program? It's that's such an interesting thing because uh, that's why that asked. animal is <laughs> so protected without human intervention because of humans, and I'll explain course, that further. It is in the most violent, like, well, it's not as violent anymore, but it was one of the most violent, war-torn part of the jungles where the FARC rebels were in con in constant combat with drug runners and the government and everything else within this area of Colombia. So much so that the caiman were completely ignored and overlooked and completely protected because nobody's hunting them, nobody's going in right. there. It was just literally so controlled by chaos yeah. that the population is totally, totally safe. There, There is a guy, I'm blanking on his name. Um, David? D David? Is his name David? No, uh, is this, he's a scientist. We, I, I talked to him once or twice. I can't remember his name, but he was studying them. He lives in Colombia, he was working on them. Right. And I think he's doing sort of ongoing studies but not necessarily like protection because literally no one can get in there. Like right. it was, even us going in there was incredibly stupid. So, yeah. So, Paul. Cool. I'm just reading a little thing here. It, you're a very interesting person. Let's talk about all of these things. Peter's going to start fanboying. Here we go. Hard, uh, well, first of all, you catch and rescue alligators that would otherwise be like killed because they were a threat to humans. Yeah, by, by law, nuisance alligators have to be uh, caught and destroyed or caught and kept in captivity. Yeah. You get paid as a nuisance trapper with the meat and the hide of the alligator. So, as I always say, no one else is dumb enough to do this stuff for free. <laughs> and for me, it's not their fault that they you built your house in the Everglades and they happen to be around. Like 99% yeah. of the gators I remove, to me, are not a threat to anybody. Mm -hmm. So to have somebody turn them into a pair of boots or a handbag, to me, is like just heartbreaking. Pretty shitty. So, yeah, it's not. I mean, it's the only way they can really do it. It's a, it's a brilliant method by the, by the state of Florida to get people to work for just what they're doing. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, 
you know, you have to protect people from alligators because people aren't too smart. Yeah. I, yeah. I get people all the time that complain about gators, but the kid's in the backyard five years old fishing at the water's edge, and I'm like, how about the kid drowning? Dude, like, yeah. You don't even right. think about that stuff. I, right. saw, I saw a video. There was a viral video of a kid that got snatched right into the water. It was years ago this was out there, but exactly what you just said. Yeah, I've had, like, moms laying on their back, sun tanning by the pool. Yeah. Like, yeah, the gator's back there somewhere. My son saw him this morning, and I'm back <laughs> to looking at this five-year-old kid at the water's edge. I'm like, who's watching the kid? Yeah. <laughs> what up? Uh, oh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, how many calls do you get a year, and then how many are you actually um, able to go respond to? I save between 50 and 100 gators a year. Hearing that thumping? It's a lot. Am I going insane? Yeah, it's not here. But okay. I probably get 300 calls. Got it. Um, or permits. The, the, you, people don't. People call. Try to call me all the time. You call the state. The state issues a permit. Send the permit to me. Got it. And then I go out in my area, which is North Broward County, and try to catch. An There's a lot of that, cops. The TV show in Broward County. What's that? The cops. The TV show. You ever seen it? Yeah. There's a lot of uh, episodes in Broward over there. Oh, Thanks, is it really? Peter. That was a <laughs> yeah. helpful tidbit of. Is it really? I don't know. But um, I, oh. Paul, how does an <clears throat> how does an alligator become a nuisance alligator? What Tip, classifies it as a nuisance? Is it just somebody feeling threatened. He's it's around scary, and you feel yeah. threatened. Now you can enhance that. People feeding them, obviously, sure. is the biggest thing. Once you feed them, you've taught them that people equal food. You fall in the water. That five-year-old kid falls in the water. Gator's waiting for something to get dropped in the water. He hears a splash, and there's somebody falling in. Oh, that's the food. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah. grab right. them. So that's right. the biggest thing. People feeding them. Um, but just... If you've got little dogs in the backyard running back and forth behind a fence, mm. gators and crocs, as you know, will wait for months. They see oh, a food yeah. opportunity, they'll wait by a river's oh, edge yeah. and just wait and wait and wait. I caught a gator in uh, Broward County that killed a lady back in 2018, I think, or 16. Oh, wow. And it was a, a lady walking her dogs. And there's people in there every day walking their dogs around this area, and there's a wide open area where people let the dogs swim. Uh, sometimes wow. so the gator's probably waiting right by that and as soon as the dog went in the water he grabbed the dog this is a lot of this is uh um me guessing what happened but uh it looks like she had the leash wrapped around her wrist oh my god gator man. grabbed the dog as he's yanking the dog away she flew right into the gator because no it's tied to her wrist. he came back uh the coroner report said she died of blunt force trauma to the head we found her later that night on the bottom and her arm got ripped off and eaten but I think he grabbed her, shook once, came back, and Very just KO'd her. KO'd her. So I think she really panicked for like half a second, and the lights went out. Got Either it. that or he caught her, death rolled her, and she hit her head in the bottom. Mm. Oh, interesting. So, do so you, she didn't have time to bleed out, and she didn't have time to drown. That's probably better. According to the court, that's uh, 100%. Yeah. Um, do you have a spot where you keep all the gators? Do you have like a uh, There's three different places I work with. I, Gatorland, right? I have given Gatorland some gators, okay. but I'm, I'm uh, based on a holiday park. Everglades okay. Holiday, Holiday Park, Park. That's right. That down in Broward. Right. Yeah. And that's where I'll take – there's – I have this – I don't know if it's a gift or a curse, but <laughs> it's only happened about 20 times. I just got one the other day, too, where I'll catch a gator, I look in his eyes, and I know he's going to be a puppy dog in two weeks. All right. I've got – I know I can pet him in the face in two weeks, 100%. I've only happened about 20 times out of over 1,000 I've caught. I just got one. Somebody called me to get one off near a boat ramp. And he had an arrow stuck through him. Somebody had probably during no the way. somebody during the hunting season had hit him with a crossbow bolt or something. Yeah, Damn. and it had worked its way out the other side. Oh, wow! So it looked like it was going all the way through, but it was only about halfway. So it looks like it went in. He death rolled, snapped it, mm. and then over time it worked its way out. Itself, uh, Can't go backwards because of the barbs. Right. Yeah. And right. when the barbs hit the skin, it stopped it from going forward. So just the tip was sticking out. Right. And uh, I had just done another one like that, like a couple weeks before that. Somebody else had shot one. A totally different area. Well, that's a common thing. This happens a lot. Yeah, it's only happened twice ever to me, and it happened oh, okay. within like a month of each other. Oh, yeah. weird. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, the other one that I did, I just got, I as soon as I put him in the truck, I was like, oh, you're you're a sweetheart. Like you're gonna be a puppy dog. <laughs> did especially, you nail? Especially yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially after I remove this arrow from your side, you'll be yeah. you'll be in a good Get mood. Get that thorn out of the side. <laughs> yeah, good but mood. but yeah, I, I keep uh, the ones we use for shows and educational stuff is Everglades Holiday Park. Gotcha. So you did a TV series for, what, four or five seasons called Gator Boys back yeah, in the Yeah, I think day. we had six seasons out of Gator How Boys. How was yeah. your experience on that show? <laughs> We've talked about this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, yeah I'm not trying no, to no, get anyone in trouble. Yeah. No, no, you're, yeah, it's, it's TV's TV. 
Yeah. Like the they, they catch, you know, catching the gator stuff, you can't fake that. You can't, yeah, I can't right. put a gator in a canal and say, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Because <laughs> right. if, right. if I caught him once, he knows the game at this point. Yeah. yeah. That's like with anything. When you, if um, like a gator, if I'm trying to catch him with a rod and a reel and he breaks off, 10 times harder to catch the second time. Sure. He sees that rod go in air, takes off like he stole something. There. Yeah. Um, but there is an element to TV where they want you to, like on the TV show, I've got eight people following me around. Like, yeah. in real life, it was me and my girlfriend at that time and a kid named Scott who was on the show. Gotcha. There was, like, the and three Chris of us. Too. You, Chris, too. Chris was at the park lot, more, right? though. Chris, at the park, okay. He wasn't out helping catch alligators. He does now. His My agent is his girlfriend, Gabby. Oh. So they'll I go out together and catch gators. But when we're filming the show, he was just at the park. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm. gotcha. But they kind of forced him to catch, to go do that stuff, too. Because, like I said, nobody wants to work for free. It's, sure. Yeah. I got a lot of people like, oh, I want to help. They work for two weeks. They're like, dude, this is awful. Yeah. <laughs> 40 hours. I didn't get paid a dime. I didn't see one alligator. It's like, yeah, dude, that's yeah. my life. <laughs> so the producers were like, that tall guy might look good with his shirt off. Maybe he could go with you. And uh. yeah. I, think, I think Chris was more, more like his shirt off on his own. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> ah, zing. Calling him out. That's funny. Um, what is the most preposterous gator <laughs> rescue you've had? Like, Oh, there was one in a hot air balloon. How did you get that? <laughs> there was one. I didn't, I didn't catch it. This isn't mine, so I don't know if I can. I'll, I'll tell it anyway. Tell, tell it anyway. Kevin Garvey got one on the third floor of a construction site That's out of the freight elevator. <laughs> ridiculous. Somebody, somebody was on the third floor. The freight elevator was on the bottom. The gator walked in, apparently. The guy <laughs> hit the button. <laughs> elevator comes up. Oh, hello. No way. And he ended up getting it just for it fell to its death. Oh, wow. Um, because it was like walking around on a ledge. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So he was like, it was like looking down like this, like, and they can't see down. So they're always kind of like start easing their way. Uh, and he, he was like walking out on a girder or something. Yeah, it was like walking out of it. It was like an open, like, um, uh, I guess like, um, it was going to be like a patio. Story, yeah. 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 Just yeah. an open yeah. thing. He was going to walk right over it. <laughs> so, so, um, how long have you been doing this? Um, this podcast about five minutes, <laughs> seven way. minutes with, with the gators, yeah. loving rescuing uh, gators. About thirty years. What got general. you into it? You're from Florida, uh, right? No, I'm from Massachusetts. Oh, per- makes, makes perfect total sense. sense. Yeah, yeah. I'm the best alligator wrestler in Massachusetts. Yeah, I that for <laughs> yeah that's for sure. Um, I don't know. I used to I used to race triathlons like really seriously, and I would couch surf my way up and down the East Coast, and. Uh, Whenever the weather would change, I'd go find some other zoo or bike shop to work at. Anybody who's dumb enough to hire me because I was leaving when the weather changed. <laughs> and uh, I started working at a zoo, and I just, I don't know, I asked, I asked the guys where they get their gators for the gator show from. And they were like, um, oh, we just go, we, it was on the Seminole Reservation. They were like, oh, we go grab them out of the, uh, the Big Cypress Swamp. And I was like, what are you bothering those guys for? They're not bothering anybody. Yeah. Like, Why don't you buy them off the trappers? They're just going to kill them. Yeah. And they were like, well, if you, if you want to waste 300 bucks on a gator, go for it. We get them for free. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I was like, to prove a point, I... I probably made about five grand a year at that point, but I was like, yeah. to prove a point, I scratched enough of money and bought a gator. And then eventually, Kevin Garvey uh, was like, hey, if you want to trap gators for me, when I'm too busy, you, I'll give you permits. Whatever you catch is yours. And I was like, oh, that's going to be amazing. And my life ended. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I hate, listen, I, people think I love catching, I hate catching alligators with a passion. Really? I just, I just hate dead gators more. Yeah. yeah like, uh, I just, I feel so bad. There's so many, like, especially the, when I get those puppy dog gators, because I'm like, how many of these guys just got bullets in their head today? Yeah. State kills 8,000 a year. I saved wow. maybe 100. Really? Yeah. Wow. For nuisance alligators. Plus, there's another, like, six or eight between the hunt and the private land hunt. So How it's, has it, that changed over 30 years? You've been doing this 30 years. Well, not the trapping. I've only been trapping probably for, like, 15 or 20. Regardless, what have you seen over the past 30 years of being around alligators? Like, how have things changed? Public perception, the way the state treats them. Are things getting better? Are they getting worse? Is there more human wildlife conflict? Like, how? Wh- yeah, what, I think is it the same. I mean, yeah, what I think uh, to me the like that's what I was asking about the caiman. The most successful recovery of any endangered species that I know of is the American alligator. I don't, I don't think most people realize that the American alligator was like facing extinction in like, yeah. what was it like the fifties, right? Well, Four hundred, right? Is that the right number? Four hundred uh, gators yeah, left at one time. Yeah, it might have been in Florida. Might have been four hundred. Maybe it's in Florida, um, but it was it was very limited. And what they did is they allowed now the hunt. every pond. They're probably in the hotel pool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. And now they what saved them is the alligator farmers, which makes no right. sense. Right. Guys killing alligators. I mean, you know this from like the um, the jaguars in yeah. South America. Yeah. They open up a hunt. Yeah. And it saved the jaguars yeah. because now the guy who had now there's value. Right. There's value to yeah. him exactly. And that's right. the same thing with the farm. They would go out. They'd raid the alligator nest. They would take 40 eggs, take them back, hatch them all out, and then release half of them in the wild. Where yeah. And they wait till they get four feet, so now they get a fighting chance. Right. Whereas if you did that 
if 40 hatch out in the wild now, maybe one makes it to adulthood. Right. Wow. Rest get eaten by birds, fish, other alligators, mm. uh, raccoons. Probably, probably even more now with all yeah, the Yeah, pythons, stuff. everything, yeah. yeah. Right. So, and, Four, the, you know, the, the tegus raiding the nests. I mean, everything yeah. like that. Yeah, we were talking but, about the tegus yesterday. Yeah. yeah. If you want to catch some, let me know. I don't know there's plenty. Around of them. here? Not here, but Miami. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be super fun. Yeah, yeah let me know. Let you know. They're oh, so yeah, cool. for sure. <laughs> Forrest, what's the longest you've ever run in a straight, like, just that you've Probably nine continue. seconds, maybe ten. No, come on. What you- uh, I did a Tough Mudder uh, like ten years ago. It was like 20-ish miles, something like that. That was Really? Long. It took like five hours, yeah. Wow. What about you, Paul? That's cute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've got – I'm training right now. I rode my bike from Fort Lauderdale to Massachusetts. Uh, did like 110 miles a day. Oh, my crashing God. Crashing hotels. But I've got a f- quintuple Ironman coming up, which is five Ironmans in five days. Oh my That's God. in like a month, and I'm and, uh, 15 and pounds overweight. What is each Ironman? Uh, it's 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and a marathon. Oh my 26.2 God. miles. So every day for five days. Hey, hey Paul. What's this the is a podcast where I'm the cool, tough guy. Okay, <laughs> like you're gonna have to take really? off. Really? Yeah, I know it's <laughs> cool. the no, bar's real low, by the way. <laughs> no, that's a, that's dude. Dude, I mean, you you found you found that came in. You've got me beat uh, no, every day of the week, that. dude. This stuff, every day of the week. Bananas. Two point anyway. four miles. The swim part. Because I can, 110 mile bike, I can't do it. No. Yeah, you could. But you could fathom it. You'd be it. fine. I understand what a 26, I've done a half marathon in Key there West. You go. You'd be fine. Yeah, it was I right. remember. It was fun. You walked much of it and drank beer through the finish. Yeah, <laughs> a two point, I did not walk any of it. A 2.4 <laughs> mile swim to me is, that's an impossibility. Well, it's I, crazy. I, I usually do the double Ironman, which is, but I do it all at once. So it's a 4.8 mile swim, 224 bike, 52.4 mile run. I've been lucky enough to win two of those, and I've completed, I think, 16 of them. Yeah. That's but bananas. But you can do the quintuple straight through as opposed to one a day. So you can do the oh wow, 12-mile swim. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. 12 I've got two bum swim. shoulders, so I'm not. 12-mile uh, swim. Yeah, are your knees made out of, like, space-age materials? Or? <laughs> you know, I always get that when I, was, when I was younger doing it. I did my first double Ironman at 24, and guys like, you won't be able to walk when you're 30. You know that, right? And I was 30, and I was like, hey, what's up? And they're like, yeah, when you're 40. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, was, I turned 40. I was like, what's up? Yeah. And I was 50, and I won, like, the quintuple Ironman. I was Jesus. like, what's up? And they were like, okay, but when you're 112, you're going to be really like, sore. you be really sore. Dude, when yeah. you're in your casket, you're going to have some knobby knees. You're not going to be able to wear shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. It's going to be a closed casket funeral for sure. I always say, they say death catches everybody. I say, when he catches me, he's going to be really tired. Yeah. <laughs> nobody's going nobody's to die for a week. They'll be like, I finally caught that son of a bitch. What's your go- Do you listen to music while you do these? No, I don't listen to music at all. Really? Even okay. like I'll, I'm. There's something, there's some voices in there. Yeah. And I'll, I'll drive from here to Massachusetts and not turn the radio on. Are you yeah, kidding that's me? crazy. No. My wife does that. It drives me nuts. She hates music. She's that's a short drive for us. Hates yeah. music. You hate music. Driving you nuts is a short drive. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, music is okay. Sometimes I rediscovered it like five years ago. Like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. Music's um, great. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, whatever. And if I. If I do when I'm running or something, I feel like I'm cheating. Like you're you're ruining it's the experience of the of the the moment you're in with a run. So, yeah, I'm not big into music or whatever. So well, when it when it gets it. hard at the end of the fifth day marathon, and that that thing of like I could just stop starts creeping in. What's your go-to? Because for most of us, we just put on Enter Sandman and just power through that last <laughs> mile. No, that's that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. I just um, I don't want anything to detract from that moment. Got it. Like, I got bit by a Western Diamond back years ago, and uh, I was fighting with the doctors not to take the pain medication. I'm like, I'm not taking it. Like, I wa- yeah. I did this to myself. Right. I need to experience this whole thing for real because I don't want it to happen again, number one, because this is horrible. What but I, I don't want it, to. It takes away from, I don't know. I don't wanna, like, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do any drugs. I've never tasted alcohol in my life. Like, I don't want to alter anything. Good thing we left the beer. I want yes. to yeah. go through it all. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> what, did, what did the doctors say when you were like, no, sir, you may not do your job? <laughs> oh, no, that's that's a real that that that's that happened. Yeah. Like not the not the not the not the pain medication, the fasciotomy, because they always want to slice your hand open. Oh, and that's actually a good story. I was. Yeah, let's go. I got bit by a Western Diamond back doing a show. It was just to be in, in the, California. No, I was in I was in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Oh, Native oh, village. I was doing. Animal. I was doing. A, yeah, I was doing a show. I always for, think every animal is where it comes yeah. from. Yeah. Sorry, captive animal. Uh, I was doing that? a show for a school group, and at, the show was over. The kids were gone, and I still had the snake in the pit. And this snake, every time he touched him on the head, 
he put his head down like trying to get under something. Does this so sound like something you do, Peter? Yeah. This Western guy back, tap him on the head, yes. see what he's doing. But that's yeah. the easy way to, to pick him up. You go from behind, you tap him on the head, he'll put his head down, and then you can pin him. So I'm talking right. to my buddy Dan, and I tap him on the head, but I'm holding him by the tail with a snake hook in my hand like an idiot. Yeah. Oh, man. But I, I'm doing it like half thinking about it. Like I had a friend put his finger through his spokes in his bike to adjust his brakes on yeah. the other side. That's pretty Because you're just not thinking. That's pretty yeah. Dumb. So I like it. That's my, my finger in the spokes moment. And I was just talking to him, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tapped him on the head. He didn't go down. I tapped him on the head. His head didn't go down. Tapped him on the head. Oh, just push it down. Oh, and okay. As I went, I pinned him like super slow. He turned around and grabbed me. Ugh. But Just one fang into the finger. No, two. Big you got time. me twice. Like Oops. bang, bang. 30, oh, yeah. 36 vials of antivenom. Oh, that hurt. Wow. So I get to the hospital, and they're trying to give me like the Dramamine and put ice on it. I'm like, no, no, you have no idea what you're doing. Like, I'm like, where's the uh, what's the uh, time on the anti venom team? They're like, what anti venom team? I'm like, oh my god. You're like, I'm going oh, to die. Boy. So I get in the phone. <laughs> my finger is gonna melt off. I get in the today. phone and I dial uh, Chuck Seifer to call him Snake Bite Chuck. So I call him like, hey, are you guys in route? He's like, for what? I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, dude, I just got bit by a western. I got lit up. Blah 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 blah. So he gets there, and they're getting ready. My fingers blown up. And the doctor comes in. Old Mike, nice guy, old guy. He's like, yeah, we're going to do a fasciotomy on your finger and slice it open. And Chuck had already got there and gave me a couple so, of vials. So define that. That's where you open up the tissue to let it bleed so it doesn't rupture, right? Yeah, it's just the swelling. It's so yeah. intense. they got to open up so it doesn't, like, cause nerve damage right. and all this other stuff. Right. How big was your finger at this point? I couldn't keep the middle finger and index finger apart. They oh, were touching. Wow. Yeah, so it's like the size of the Yeah, it's part. close <laughs> to that. It's like the size of yeah. three fingers. Ugh. So, uh the guy says, yeah, we're going to do a fasciotomy, blah, 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 really the pressure. I looked at Chuck, and I said, no offense, you do whatever he says. And the guy got real, like, high on himself. He says, uh, son, excuse me. He goes, that's a paramedic. He goes, I've been a doctor for 30 years. I said, so you're telling me you're going on 30-year-old education? Yeah. <laughs> and he, I said, how many? I said, just to ask you one question. How many snake bites you have last year? He goes, well, last year we had none. But two years before that, we, or a year before that, we had two. I said, Chuck, how many snake bites you have last year? 250. I said, we go with Chuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The guy yeah. was like, okay. He stormed off. And he's like, don't let him cut your finger open, dude. Don't. Really? Yeah. What's the reason? Because it, that, that doesn't, do doesn't do any good. You're just causing damage. That, that pressure, the only nerve damage I have is where the f snake bit it? me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. I cr I, that's too that's, bad. That took me like every day yeah. just cranking on it every day even it was Jeez, still bleeding I, I knew what was going to happen those tendons and ligaments are like yeah they're, they're so just damaged like, yeah they just yeah. like a dried elastic Ugh, so man, i just dude. kept cranking on it every day but um you can drive it it's uh can't feel it you can drive a nail through if you want <laughs> it's a cool party trick. so it actually kind of helped you out um yeah 100 yeah. percent. <laughs> yeah now, now you have a superpower <laughs> how, how hard does that gator bite <laughs> Not hard enough for me to feel it. No, Paul Bedard, you can you can cut off his finger; it grows right back. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows that. Yeah. So no, but the, all the nerve damage happened right where the snake bit me. It was any all this swelling. No, it's fine. Yeah. That's it's you're causing more damage to to maybe help a, a little bit with other stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not worth the the risk. Make so sense. how did it how did it end up? You got the vials and it stayed swollen for like yeah, a it week? went like 34, 36 vials. It took me like hope you had good insurance. Two weeks. I've got I'm making a YouTube video. I got it on film. It's funny. Oh wow! Oh wow! But yeah, um, yeah I've I've been I've been lucky, blessed, or I don't know. I've got a, a 12 foot gator biting me in the arm. I've got that on video. I've got a 12 foot gator, same 12 foot gator crushing my hand. Jesus. Well, you're the, pretty much Superman. The two rednecks, yeah, I mean, he, he my two redneck friends miles, that I coached. So. I. Jimmy from the TV show never stitched a button on his shirt before. Uh -huh. He learned how to sew on my arm. No oh, shit. You don't even have bad scars. No, I, I mean not great. Oh my that's god! Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one tooth got in me and just uh, one tooth right. got in me and kind of opened it up. All right, and, and point out the size of those, by the way. Yeah, these are about the size of the teeth. This, yeah. They're like four that's inch. A tooth. On a gator? Yeah. yeah. But all you see is that oh, much. Shit. That's oh, a lot okay. of tooth. that thing coming in at like a tomahawk. Oh, it'll open oh. you right up. Look. Well, we've we've really established the bite force of the gate because you look at that tooth, you're like, ah, oh, it's not even sharp. No, <laughs> it's yeah, not no, even no, it's, it's a yeah, you're blunt talking tooth. Trauma. Yeah, yeah, they they. Yuck. Insane. The, the other thing too with with, with gator bites, whatever you've heard, double it, because oh, every hey, gator bite it? test I've ever seen is with a captive alligator, crocodile, same thing. Oh, right. for the you need, PSI strength. You, yeah, wise. you need to catch a wild. Like I'm dying to go to Africa with Dingo or Australia with my buddy. He's got a place out there. He wants to catch some crocs for him. I went there in 2016, but he's got a um, a cattle station 
and these crocs, these 14, 15 foot crocs, come in and eat cattle. Sure. But Why that's not? the one when you're catching him. Put that bite force meter in his mouth then. You'll yeah. get a real reading because he's fighting for his life. Sure. Right. Right. You go test yeah, right. my puppy dog gators. I can, I can grab Godzilla by the jaw. Well, I can tell you <laughs> this isn't a good out. metric of their, uh, their PSI, but we built this massive rebar cage to catch this problem now, crocodile in Mozambique. And he went in it, and we're like, oh, the, door, the door's down, the door's down. And I jumped on top of the cage to, like, do it, and he, he struck up at the door. And the rebar, which was, like, this thick, not the kind that, like, you or I yeah, right, right. The, like, I, I don't know anything about rebar, the hard kind. Yeah, three-quarter. He, yeah, he literally, it just, like, it looked like a spaghetti noodle. It was just, like, bloop from him just hitting it with his nose. And I was yeah, like, no, oh, it's, my God. The power is people don't get it. They just You don't get it until you feel it. Oh, I bet. Insane. That'll never happen. I never want to feel it. Paul, we could sit here and talk about this all day. This is my favorite stuff, but unfortunately, we only have 20 minutes. All Such right, a man. pleasure to see you. Right, thanks, time. man. Good to see you. Dude, thanks hey, so much. Good having you. Very much. Yeah, thank you, buddy. We, Forrest, let me ask you a quick question. How 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 long have we been doing this podcast? Mm, about a year. Can you put the is mic right? in front of your mouth correctly? <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's <laughs> insane, dude. <laughs> How long um, have we been doing this? Two years. Three years. Three and a half. Three. Years. Wow. Hey, we time. got another guest ready to go. Yes. Yeah, baby. I see uh, he's, he appears to Kiri. have a, a What's snake. up, buddy? Come on Get up. Come on up here. Come right on in. Mr. Molinaro, how are Hello. you, buddy? Whoa. Wait, are you What's the up, guest man? or is the snake the guest? The snake is the actual guest. <laughs> Dude, I'm, tell I'm us. Just, I'm What's, just here to. What's, What's going name? on? What's Actually, this, this is a, a Colombian uh, right. boa constrictor. Yeah, I see that. She's an albino. May I? Yeah. Sorry. What do you mean it's sorry, just take her. So you got to go right into the mic there. To me right now, so let me get oh, strong. So she's about three years old. Talk right into the um, mic there, Carrie. Sorry, Thank right. you. You could hear me. Oh Whoa, boy. Right. So she's about three years old. Okay. And she's she's beautiful. Puppy dog tame. Very um, very. She's a, it's a boa. It it is a boa. She's coming your way. Cool. Three year, three year old female. Yeah. Is this one of your snakes? It is not one of my snakes. I, I'm over there at the vision enclosure, uh, and they kind of handed me a snake, and they said, "Here." So <laughs> tell us. I mean, look, you're a big snake guy. I am right? a big. Yes. I mean, everybody knows that. That's yes. what you're most known for. So Correct. tell us about breeding snakes. What do you got? So tell us projects. Tell people. This is actually a question I get a lot. I people often often ask me, which they shouldn't, because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what is the first reptile I should get as a pet? And I always say a snake. I, I agree. I could say there you I, go, I agree. So I uh, I have the what's called the Molinero Snake Lab. I started a few years back, and I, I breed I breed snakes out of it, and it kind of turned into first was breeding, but now my passion is more of the educational side and showing the 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 breeding process of okay. hatching the eggs and the different. But you do you do some pretty out there snakes. So I well I do I do a lot of ball pythons. They're just popular. I'll but do, the morphs and I'll things. Do, um, yes, I'll yeah. do I'll do a couple different. Yeah, I'll do I'll do some different types of morphs. Um, you hate snakes so much. I'll do uh, <laughs> tricolor hognose are, are one of them that I hatched for the first time this year, which were a lot of fun. And, cool. and she like triple clutch. I locked her once in um, November. They locked for me, and then December she laid a clutch of eggs, a ten. And then in January, she laid another clutch of 10. And then in February, she laid, so it was like all these eggs coming all at once. So that was a That's lot awesome. different from the pythons that I, I typically breed. You know, she triple clutched for me. Yeah. Um, I'll do breadly pythons. I've done children's pythons. So a little bit of, little bit of everything. What's your favorite? Out of all the snakes that I've ever kept, um, the breadly pythons or breadle pythons, however you want to Why pronounce it. Why are they your it. favorite? Um, I do. I like to do educational events. I'll go. I'll do like career days, or I'll get out in public to let people like like this, just kind of bringing snakes around, letting people experience in them, um, to try to reduce some of that negative stigma that gets associated sure, with snakes sure, a lot. Yeah. And um, so I found that Bradley, the, my my Bredel pythons are, are are my favorite. So they're a fan favorite when I bring them out to to events. They got some wow factor because they're a little bit big, so all the little kids squeal yeah, when, sure, when I pull sure, when I pull sure. them so out. And you, you do career days? I do. I'll, so it's like. Timmy's dad comes up. He's the fireman. Exactly. <laughs> and then Tina's, you know, Tina's mom's a doctor. And then right. you, you roll up and what are, you're like, hey, do you want to breed snakes? And then here's <laughs> Carrie. The, 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and nice. I, uh -oh. you know, and the teachers ask for me. Like, they're the ones that, that uh, she's, putting oh, her, she's, putting herself she's getting her stuck in the chair there. Way to go, um, Forrest. <laughs> but yeah, I have I have a lot of the teachers are the ones that ask for me because the, 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 the kids love it. You know, the kids, <laughs> yeah. the kid, the kids really enjoy, enjoy seeing them. And, and I, I kind of play it off as well. Sure. I'm a snake breeder. It's on, science kind of based. Stuff. And then I play it off as I'm a YouTuber and right, a TikToker. So I'm sure you know, the kids. You, you pull out the little YouTube plaques and the kids go crazy because <laughs> they, nice. they think you're famous. You know, she may be stuck. <laughs> so are you shocked at Forrest's sort of 
the fact that he already got the snake stuck in a chair. Now, here. Yeah, now I have a. Stu- we're gonna have to get Call the, the jo- fire department. Ha- get the jaws, jaws of, of life. life for sure. No, but she does need to come back out, <laughs> silly back girl. Out yeah, this is fun. This is fun for everybody to watch. You guys yeah. enjoying this? This is, this is, uh, <laughs> yeah. this is real good. Competent. She really went in there. Oh boy. Well, uh, yeah. So what's going on, Pat? What did you think of handling that snake? Did it scare you? No, I really liked it. I I'm actually not afraid of snakes that I know That's what are I was trying to do, like but domesticated. She wasn't doing it. What do you think, though? I mean, because I've been watching this with you my kid, and she right now she face. likes snakes. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, d- at some point, <laughs> she's going she? to probably most likely learn to be afraid of snakes. Oh yeah, definitely. Is it just from watching movies? No, I think it's inherent. <laughs> Sorry, like, it's I wasn't paying attention. I just, yeah. just crawled back this there. Is, and this I was is like, part oh. of the snake experience. It's Josh, yeah. what's uh? Real life. Is it Josh? Huh? Is it Josh? Carrie. Carrie. I'm sorry, dude. Carrie. No, Carrie. no worries. Man. My bad. Um, there is a mess. What's like a bucket list snake that you wanna you wanna see in the you wild? Know, he's like, I, I really just want Forrest to not kill my pet. Yeah, back I just. There. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for this snake. Um, Oh, you know, she's trying to go in deeper. As Come far on. as a, a bucket list, you know, I'd, I'd really like to keep venomous snakes. Um, yeah. A gaboon viper is always like, ever since I started keeping you're the, snakes, you're the I've, third I'm person fascinated with to them. To talk about the gaboon viper, what is so cool about? They're it? amazing. Everybody I, loves I them. I think it's the coloring, the the look of them. The, 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 the I, I like that they're kind of short and stocky looking. Yeah. Um, of course, they have the, you know the big the biggest fangs and all that kind of stuff, which is just the yeah, further, just yeah. the cool. I don't know. So what's keeping cool you from trick. just getting into venomous snakes? So I, well, I, I'm, I have three little kids at home. Okay. Um, I keep that all my snakes <laughs> at home. I breed, Pat, out, I breed out of you, home. What's keeping you from getting into venomous snakes? I and, don't like snakes. And so, <laughs> and so yeah, so I, I, I mean, my wife, she lets me get away with a lot. So she draws the Ow. line sometimes. So. Oh, Did boy. Got we got Forrest, a bite. Guys, right. Forrest just got <laughs> bit by a snake. Yeah, it's fine. You saw it live. You were here. Right, pull the medic. Call the medic. Get Paul back <laughs> this over is here. Killer Get snake Paul Bedard's guy in yeah. here now. This is the now. real world right here. This is what Forrest does uh, in the wild, typically. Here's what's annoying, though. Like, that would be his reaction if it was a venomous snake. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the funny part is there he's out in the here. wild She's catching snakes all, all the time, down. and he can't handle one, like, in a chair. Well, this is an I'm odd I'm trying not to hurt her. She's a little bit upset For- now. Forrest, how did that snake bite feel? Get a napkin up here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey. This, is not, this is not good TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so got bad. He's really gotten into a little bit of a debacle got her. over got there. Her. All right. We got, got her. her. All right. Yes. Free. Good She's job. Free. <laughs> thank, yeah, you, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Applause. <laughs> <laughs> so heroic. Oh. Now she's, now she's a little bit. She just, she just took she's a, a little scared. She'll calm down. Took a run at Gary's neck. The snake is a sweetheart, though. I've been holding her for the whole for a lot of today. Yeah, give her yeah, to me. Give her to me for three minutes, yeah, and she gets stuck. She was bites. fine with me, dude. Yeah. You're just very. <laughs> you want her now? No. Uh, <laughs> so what got you, know, you, you into the up. whole world of uh, snakes, reptiles? So, so I, I was as a kid. Um, I, I had a lot of lizards and turtles and stuff I would keep, and I would find snakes in the woods. Yeah. Um, I grew up in uh, Northeast Pennsylvania, so we'd be out in the woods a lot finding stuff. Why um, are there so many snake guys from Pennsylvania? I'm not sure. We, ha- we don't have a whole lot to do, so I think we just go out <laughs> in the woods. And I, I must I know mean, six I, snake guys from Pennsylvania. I grew up playing in the woods and finding, you know, snakes and sure. frogs and everything else. Um, so I had them when I was a kid, but then I, I joined the Marine Corps. So I was in the Marine Corps for nine years. I had to get rid of everything. And then once I got out, I was like, you know what? I, I miss having snakes. I had a house. Um, so I was like, I could get snakes again. I ended up getting a ball. Uh, I, when, I, but I, when I went online to find them, I was like, what the heck happened to the community? Like there's all these different morphs and stuff. And before, all you could find was a normal ball python or you could find a, an right, albino maybe. Right. right. Um, so they had all these different morphs, so I ended up finding a blue-eyed leucistic was the first one I got back into, and then I saw that you could make all these in it. And that's why I named I named it the Molinero Snake Lab, because I felt like a mad scientist, where I was like, oh. And you also look like and, a mad scientist. And I, yeah. I, 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 I guess I have. Well, yeah. this is your military garb, right? With the, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, with sure. the beard and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and that was the other thing. I, once I... Yeah. Once I uh, Got out of the Marine Corps. I was like, you know, I'm done shaving, and I even I do I compete in beard competitions now. I'll nice. travel around. <laughs> I'll travel really? around the country. That's cool. To compete. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's three years in a row, I, I placed second place in the country for freestyle goatee. So I'll, I'll <laughs> that's a big deal. Hang on a second. Style. Let's talk about this. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, <laughs> that's a big deal. So what? Like, I've seen dog shows, right? Right. They come up, they stroke the dog, they take a little feel of the genitals. <laughs> 
What do they? What are they doing? What does the they judge do? They do all that do? to carry. They so, weigh yeah, him, yeah, so. feel his genitals. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, this guy, this guy's gonna have a That's good beard. Do, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> what do they do? Do they like? So, do they stroke so, your beard? And no, well, no. Well, it depends. Some judges might. There are some judges that want to, to feel it. Um, but for have me, have you had anyone sniff your beard? Um, I think I, I might have. Yeah. But, they get their I, in the, in the crowd though, Gary, not so I much by the judges. Out of there. Someone just came up, was like. <laughs> I'd be like, nope, this is not it. Right, right. This is not this, for me. This, this is, is a competition I will no yeah. longer be a part of. Um, no, it's it's, you know, though in reality, it's a it's a great community. Um, yeah. It's all done for charity. Every competition is held oh, nice. for for charity, so they're all you know raise money for different events. They have they 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 do a world competition every two years, which is I think it was in Germany this past year. Um, so every two years they hold them all over the world. So it's it's just a it's a neat community. It's a charitable community. It's filled with interesting. Our people, accessories so it's, so it's a fun. factor. Um, they judging wise, no, they shouldn't be. But of course, if you stand out a little bit, the judge is going to okay, look at you a little my bit harder. Obvious next question is: Do you bring snakes as accessories yeah. to a beard? Dump? <laughs> I um, I have not. I'm kind of known as the snake guy for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But a lot of them I have to travel to, so it's kind of hard What's to bring. What's uh? Earmuffs, everyone. What's a weirder community, animal people or beard people? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I would say as far as a variety of different types of personality, I would say the beard community because it yeah. it's just a slew of all different types of people. Up your game, of all of you. Yeah. Try harder. All, You're not all, weird yeah. enough. Yeah. I, also, just, I want to know how you qualify to become a beard judge. <laughs> Like what is it? Just like I just like them. They, I just I, like beards a lot. Yeah, you just like beards, and you know they, they get some interesting people. Like uh, last year at war or at nationals last year, they had somebody from the Guinness Book of World Records that was one of the judges. They got they, so they get they get a pretty good variety of people. And and last year we broke a world record, in for the Guinness Book of Worlds for the longest beard chain. Everybody took their beards and like pinned them together. Are you hearing <laughs> this? Yeah. I don't, this is, I don't remember the distance, awesome. but it was the most <laughs> interesting. I'm go. I'm gonna go to the next. It's I'm going. Be, to you know what? It's, in, going, it's in Daytona. In, in, right. in November, it's going to be in Daytona, I'm Florida. There. I'm definitely you, going. You remember the jackass <laughs> prank where uh, Johnny Knoxville would run around with the shaver? Yeah. And he's like, come up behind somebody, just jam. Yeah, yeah. How? <laughs> oh, quickly, you'd get, you, you, you might. Would you get? <laughs> you killed? might get. You might get killed. You yeah. Might, you might get. Killed. Yeah. You imagine yeah. you just go to a beard thing and you're just like you're, you're basically a beard terrorist. You, you, <laughs> you, know what? Yeah. you might as well just go to Sturgis and start doing that to the yeah. bikers. Yeah. And see no, how well that goes. That's probably not a good idea. <laughs> not a well, good neither idea. is getting a snake stuck in the back of your. Yeah. Chair. How did that's you? Not so, a, that's not a good so idea. So that snake, you you handed the snake to Forrest. Yeah. yeah it do we need to get into the weeds on this? And. Yes. I mean, you're gushing. He was just like, let's let's try to stick it in this little. He instantly got the snake stuck in a chair and yeah. then got it hot so where it was biting things. And, bite, yeah. so he knows and the then burn. he gave it right back to me after he, but then after he, he made now it he's very Well, calm. yeah, I didn't want it to bite me again. <laughs> no, just kidding. What did you do? Like, you just calmed him down in a matter of yeah, seconds. What are you doing? I'm well, I was basically harassing the snake to get out of the chair. So I was, got like, it. tapping it and pushing it to get it to move out of okay. the chair. So I that's think why it got upset. He's just happy to be with me and away from this guy. So yeah, like, definitely. Like, I'm like that, too. I'm the animal guy. I'm really good at it. I hope you guys noticed. Uh, Does anyone have any snake questions for for Gary? Yeah. Any snake fans? I'm happy to answer questions. In the uh, live chat over there as well. Billy, any know. live chat questions for Gary? Gary's a... What about it? It's a mess. That I'm an idiot? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Internet. <laughs> Not Nice people on the Internet. Yeah, that's a nice community. Nice people on so the Internet. So one of the things that I, I did recently, um, and I'll give it a quick plug, is I wrote a children's book based on snake keeping. I called it What's in Dr. Serpenstein's Lab. Oh, so that's it's a cool. short. It's a short children's book kind of based off me and, and kind of keeping snakes. And, and I kind of wanted to, I guess, get more attention to or uh, – Kind of reduce that stigma on keeping snakes. So yeah. I want, you know, it's always good to start with the kids. They find them fascinating. So I wrote this. I wrote a little a children's book that I, I have available on uh, uh, MullenArrowSnakeLab.com. You can also get it on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles on online. Nice. nice. Um, but yeah, something I, I did that I thought that you know you always see books about pet dogs and pet this. Sure. And that. Right. So, so I, I was like, you know, how's I'm it gonna, doing? Doing well. It's it's not, yeah. I, ju awesome. I just released it. Hey, it went out in chair. April. Oh, yeah. She's, she's she, stuck in her head back in that crack. <laughs> Let's not start there. that again. Let's not go there. Um, well, Gary, thank you, man. It's yeah, been buddy. A, been thanks a pleasure so much for coming you. on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I hope people buy your guys. book. I would shake your hand, but I'm an idiot, so <laughs> I'll I'm gonna, give you a fist bump. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you one of those. Dude, yeah, thanks for coming on, Gary. Thank you, thank you so much. Much appreciated, bro. Thank you. Good luck with your beard comps. Yeah, yeah. Win some more. Good dude. Good guy.
Forrest, do you want to wash that or anything? Yeah. yeah would I you might like as well. to take just a Part quick on. moment? Part on. Hustle. <laughs> uh, this is for everybody to see what an idiot I am. Oh. I, had, I had a feeling he was. It was not going well the second he got the snake. Oh yeah, I mean it was. He's a he's a mess. Well, and then someone in the audience brought and very nicely brought him a bandana, which he then covered in blood and handed right back to him. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? That's Luke. He also did a tequila suicide shot last night. That's right. <laughs> what are you talking about? I wasn't. I was making fun of Luke. Don't make fun of Luke. Yeah, so... Uh, we got a few minutes for our next guest. What do we got going on? Anything in the chat? Anyone dumping questions in there? Oh, Billy! So now he's got snake questions. Anyone have any questions for Retep that you've been dying to ask him? Nobody cares about no. me. And that's oh, we got one. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, we'll he's do the, the second. We're going to do the dumbbell competition at the fitness he, center. He's the second. I met uh, Caesar, who came in from L.A. this morning. Literally, the elevator opens. He's like, yo, yo when are you guys doing the bench competition? <laughs> um, yeah, so we scouted it out. The, the fitness center does have the 80-pound dumbbells. Yeah, we're going to do it. So, it's yeah, it's got to happen at some point this afternoon. We'll see. Yeah, it'll be great. Well, who, do you, who do you think is going to win? No. Me meager boy. Who do you think is going to win? Fuck. No, the thing is, the stakes of the bet are what fantastic. Are, talking are we talking about, about the bench press yeah, bet? Because if I win the bench press competition, Pat has to talk to me only in baby talk for an entire month. Yeah. And, if, and if he wins, really no stakes for me. I just can't call him meager. So... I really I, have nothing. I'm really is it glad they're. Are they just turning the volume of the music? They just keep turning up the volume of that every music. Every five seconds. They don't want to hear us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Real, Mike, what's up, buddy? Tarzan? Get in here, bro. Let's go. Hey, Sarah. All right, this is a big S deal, guys. The real Sarah. Tarzan, Mike. Hey guys. What's, what's up, up, man? How are you? Good to see you, man. How are you guys? Good. It's good. What's going on? Peter, uh, Patrick. What's up, what's up man? Uh, there we go. Dude, welcome, welcome, welcome. Dude, thanks for having me, How man. How are you, bro? Oh, can't complain. Dude, always good to see you. Good to see you too, How's man. How's life? Oh, can't complain. Yeah? Can't complain. What's, uh, last time I saw you, you were taken off for Africa. Yes. How was that? Sick. Yeah? So Tell sick. Uh, last time I left to, uh, from here, mm -hmm. I went to, um, I went to Uganda. That's right. Yep, That's the right. mountain gorillas. Yeah, and, and I was sick, man. Amazing. Hanging out with the pygmy people. Yeah, you know, going up. They and probably thought you were a giant. <laughs> yeah, like you're pretty. Yoked. Well, they're pretty small too. Yeah, <laughs> you and know? you're pretty big. So yeah, they're probably like, it was Jesus. it was fun, man. Yeah, seeing them. Uh, they were showing me how they catch their they catch rats and all types of mammals to eat, you uh -huh. know, but they set these crazy traps. It took the cane rats, right? The yeah. Endeavor, the big swamp Sick, rats. Dude. Did you eat it? No. no. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah. It's not great. I get. I, ha I had coffee from there. Um. They had like a bunch of. They had a little chameleon spot where they catch chameleons, but uh -huh. they're so scared of chameleons. Yeah, they think they're, they're venomous. Evil spirits. Yeah. Evil spirits. Yeah, uh -huh. they're just like, no, no, no. And I'm like, bro, it's a chameleon. But I understand. I saw a post of yours. Sorry, we're just catching up. You guys can fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> so we can't like, hear anything over the music anyway. <laughs> yeah, no perfect, shit. perfect. Um, dude, I saw a post of yours recently. You went to India, right? Yes. And you and your buddy ended up in the hospital. Yes. What happened? Oh my goodness! Everybody thought we got bit. All right. Yeah, you and, did. Uh, no, you didn't just get bit. Ate Indian food. No, I, we love Indian food. So here's the here's the crazy part. We uh, my buddy Ricky, he's a absolute lunatic. He's yeah. from Australia, which okay. is all they they all lunatics, and um, we're uh, we're out there looking for snakes all day, every day. Yeah. And uh, we get to a, a point where we haven't seen any monitors. And we know there's Bengalensis over there. Yep. And we're like, dude, where are the monitors at? Like, there's all this one spot where there's massive monitors, but it's like off limits. But the kind of sort of dialect from English to Australian English to like Indian. Yeah. It's kind of hard. It's a mess. To, like, it's a mess. And also, I, a lot of people don't know this, but the bureaucracy of dealing with India is unlike anywhere else in the world. It's, Unbelievable. It's insane. Like, nothing <laughs> makes sense. Everything takes like a month to get like. Yeah, you can go across this line. Like it doesn't make any sense. Any sense. But anyway, yeah. So we um we Can you hear anything? No, Peter's working on it. I can hear him. Okay. Can Sorry. you guys hear or no? Okay, they can so, hear. Yeah, Good. We're, um, no, maybe. We are, Mics are picking it up. We're full speed looking for uh Indian rock pythons. Yeah. Uh spectacle cobras. Yep. Um Bengals monitor. Uh, Bengals monitor, like literally everything. But we haven't seen any monitors. So we hit we hit the guy up and we're like, dude, take us to see monitors. 
there was one spot. So we got in this back of this moped, and we're dodging cows and <laughs> dodging buses. Bro, that I almost died 50 times. You're in the south of India, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and Karnakata. Karnakata, okay. And Sweet. I'm just dodging buses more than I'm dodging snake bites. Yeah. And I'm dodging lots of snake bites, but more buses. It's crazy. It's there. ridiculous. It's yeah, dog. it's absolutely insane. So, um, anyways, we're uh, we're driving back in a moped, and I lost my buddy Ricky. Uh -huh. He's on another moped. So after like 30 minutes, I see it and I'm like, bro, what's up? Nice to see you. You're alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has bloodshot red eyes. And I'm like, bro, what's wrong? He goes, he goes, mate, I can't breathe, mate. And I'm like, all right, like, yeah. are you having like a respiratory attack or something? Like, what's going on? He goes, I don't know, mate. I just can't breathe, mate. And I'm like, and he's like, he's like rubbing his eyes. His face is bloodshot red. And this guy's taking like six Taipan bites. So he's yeah. like, yeah, his he's immune not, system. He's not a baby. He's not like, a baby. Yeah. He's not a baby. He walks barefoot everywhere. He eats crabs with the shell on it. He's a full-on barbarian, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he's crying. He's like, his eyes are watering. I'm like, dude, what's up? He goes, bro, I just can't breathe, mate. And I'm like, all right. So as we're driving, I'm realizing my eyes are starting to itch, too. Oh, shit. So we oh, get, boy. We, uh, I'm looking in the distance, and we're going towards these, like, power plants. It's like nuclear power plants. Uh-oh. So oh obviously. God. This oh, sounds way worse than a snake bite, by the way. It's terrible. Yeah. So there's, like, apparently there's tons of big crocs over there. There's tons of snakes, and there's big monitors and porcupines. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, this is where we're at. And by the time we got there, dude, my skin is crawling. Is it just the air? What is it? I don't know if it was just that like the air quality was so terrible. Yeah. And I think it was a radiation zone. So <laughs> we're, we're, so terrible. we're Holy literally shit. in like a radiation. We got radiation exposure. Wow. So uh, like I've been traveling a lot. So I've had like Bali belly and like yeah, yeah, different yeah. diseases that like <laughs> flush my immune system out. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. worms and. All types of all stuff, of it, right? Yeah. All of it. Ricky's never traveled outside of Australia. Okay. So outside of his immunity to like snake bites and you know sure. build his immune system up, he's never had like a like a like an internal bacterial infection, you know. Yeah. So he's also eating all the food. Yeah. And then this uh, this I guess radiation exposure just dropped both our immune systems. We were both at 100. percent So I dropped to like 50. How, do you, how are you measuring this? I'm feeling like shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought this was like an actual no, 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 no tool time. required. I'm like, I need to know what watch. He's Apple like, I'm fucking is. dying. <laughs> what bro. generation are we on? So, Ricky, he's dropped down, I mean, like, to like 10. His life meter is yeah, way, he's way down. Like, he's gone from yeah. like this off the wall adrenaline junkie, like, he's, he's, he's full on 100% wild animal, right? Yeah. To like, shriveled up like he's like mate i don't feel good mate i gotta go home oh, like, and i'm like bro you you feel terrible i'm Jesus. my eyes are damn near bleeding yeah because like i, we, I just Jesus. can't i can't even it feels like someone just throwing needles and sand in my eyes my this hair's itchy my skin feel like it's gonna rip god damn i'm having like an asthma attack so i'll tell the guy like bro let's get out of here i don't care about the lizards right now i just want to go yeah so as we're going home India is the most populated place on earth. Yeah, you know. And, you, and this guy we're with, he's like the local known snake catcher with all the permits. Yeah. So everybody knows him. And he's telling everybody Ricky Mack and Tarzan's here. So as we're going home, there's like 150 people in the street. Just to meet you. Just to meet us. Yeah. So we like, we're literally dying via back of moped. <laughs> so I don't get back to the house. What, which, which, which like a 30 minute trip to this radiation zone from the house turns into like a two and a half hour trip back home oh. to get through all the people. Yeah, so Damn, like, dude. Ricky's having a bad time because he's not feeling good, and now he's getting pulled by all these guys left and right to take selfies. Yeah. And I can see him like fade, like fading away in the crowd. So I'm like picking up my shoulder. We're like, bro, we gotta go home. <laughs> I get Ricky Mac home, and uh, <laughs> this guy again, he's been bitten by all types of stuff in Australia. Yeah. So he calls his mom. He goes, Mom, I don't feel good. And his mom's like, gets on the phone. How old's this guy? Bro, he's like 24. Oh, he's a kid. Yeah, he's okay, a kid. And like my thing is, if you travel with me. My number one thing is to get you back home safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In one die. piece. Not yeah. in jail, yeah. not in no, no missing fingers, nothing. It's I like the get opposite of what I do when we go on trips. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. So uh, we get home, and uh, it's like 12 o'clock now, and about like, he went to the bathroom like 15 times, in and out, in and out, in and out. He's like puking, he's pooping, he's puking, he's pooping. And then after <laughs> this like- is crazy, dude. After like yeah. going in on the bathroom, like we're sleeping in the same bed because it's tiny. So I'm like, I'm asleep. And I'm a light sleeper, so I'm like, damn, I haven't heard Ricky get back in the bed. So I like wait an hour, I'm still asleep, and I'm thinking he's in the bed. And I look over, and I'm like, oh, bro, he's in the bathroom still. So I get in the bathroom, he's just laying off on the floor, like looking at the ceiling. He goes, mate, get me to the hospital, mate, I'm gonna die. No way. And I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. Poor kid. It's so bad, dude. If, if another man asked another man to go to the hospital in India, 
you take him to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. yeah. straight you up. Take him to the hospital. Yeah. So we go to the hospital, and then the doctor's like, I was like six o'clock in the morning. The doctor's like, oh no, just, he gave us like one pill and he threw it on the table, made him sign something. He's like, yeah, just take your pill, go home. I'm like, bro, get my man an IV. Yeah. Get him yeah. something. something. Like yeah, he yeah, needs yeah. help. He goes, no, nah, take the pill, go home, and come back tomorrow. But well, he's going to be dead tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, so we're sitting, we're sitting in the, uh, I'm like arguing with this guy, this doctor. I'm like, bro, give him IV. IV right now. I'll pay for it. Give him, like, dose him up. Yeah. And, like, matter of fact, I need an IV too. So I'm, I'm at 50%. I'm, like, now 65%. You talk the guy into it? Yeah. Yeah. Ricky went from 10% to, like, 2%. And I'm like, bro, this guy's going to die. He's just pale on It was white. that bad? He was bad, bro. Wow. Bad. Yeah. So we sit. We, he gets us in there. He loads Ricky up with IVs, and he's just dumping us with all these fluids and antimicrobial shit. I don't even know what he, he would have gave us. but He makes it out. Yeah, we, we made it out. Jeez. Dude. And, uh, we was that the end now. of the Indian trip? Ten hours of IVs nonstop. No, it wasn't end. So at, right after that, uh, we, we had on our itinerary to milk a spectacle okay. and milk. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's gnarly back there. I'm yeah, listening. It's yeah. just it's crazy. It's, uh, we had to go milk. So Ricky's like now he's like, I'm like, bro, give me a, how, how are you? He's like, Mate, I'm like 70 percent. I'm like, are you going to milk this snake? Yeah. He goes, he goes absolutely. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> so he's uh, it was it was hectic. We finished the trip. Yeah. We went to Bali to go surf and relax for like three days. And then he had a family issue, so he uh, went home. How many massages did you get when you got to Bali? I got a foot massage on a beach by these old women. It was great. You nice. Must. It was great. Nice. It, was like, the only it, was like, it was like three bucks for yeah. like 30 yeah. minutes. And, it's, and it lasts That's forever. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah I gave him 10 bucks, walking. and it was like, it was like okay. Let me ask you, that. have you ever given a cassowary a massage, a foot oh. massage? I'll what tell a ridiculous you, I was at Mario's. Nah, <laughs> you're just trying to bring, you, you like, you work with cassowaries, or you've yes, shown at cassowaries. at Mario's place some years back, yeah. Um, yeah. it was me and Morgan, almost all the employees left for, we had a hurricane coming, and, uh. Yeah, we had to go catch the cast two cassowaries, put them in this uh, this metal thing. It was, was just that? what was that fun. like? So I was gonna say, yeah. Mor Morgan goes in there fun. with the we call it a blast shield, which is AKA a piece of plywood with a backpack on it, <laughs> literally yeah. a, like a backpack <laughs> stapled to the plywood. And uh, it's like a Captain America shield. He literally, <laughs> like, a piece of plywood. He had a. Uh, is he kicking and stuff? No, he's running away from us. Okay. So Morgan has a, this, the thing scared of a broomstick. So he goes in with the broomstick, and the thing's like freaking out. He's running around. He goes, "Mom, you got to corner it." He says, "And I'm gonna jump on and catch it, and then you gotta come help me catch it, and then yeah. we gotta put it inside this crate." So I'm like, "All right." He catches the first one, but he does it by himself. I'm like, kind of scared. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for sure. Uh, it's yeah. A I it's a dinosaur. Why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Morgan, I'm like, you know, at the time I'm probably like 200 pounds. Morgan's like a buck fifty. Yeah. You oh know? wow. So bro, he hops his cassowary, wraps the legs. He's got the neck, and this thing like falls down, and it's running with him on the ground. I'm seeing Morgan go from this kind of cage, and he's just. He's like, ah, ah, <laughs> ah, and then like, I think it's like, you just gotta let it get tired. Yeah. He's like, help! So I drop the blast shirt, I get on top of him, and Mario and Maria sitting inside the the golf cart, they're just dying laughing at us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Ma Morgan, he's like, oh, just help me get off my feet. So I help him get on his feet, picks the cassowary up, he like grabs the legs, he's got the, he's got the neck, and he goes in, he goes, open the cage, open the cage, throw it in there, and shut it, and now we gotta go to the other one. So yeah, now we gotta so do now that Morgan again. Morgan is just beat up, his pants are ripped, his shirt's like bloody. He's just, he didn't really get hurt. He just got like, like basically Nicked rug up. burn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I want to, I want to play a little game here. Can we play a game? Love games. Yeah. Okay. Let's play a game. All right. My, Mike, uh, he did that for fun. I'm guessing, right. To help your buddy out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's your guys game. There's a hurricane coming. You have to move the cassowary. <laughs> You've got the buck 80 skinny friend of his <laughs> helping you out. You see all this go down. I know both of you well enough to be like, nope. You guys are both like, nope. Of course. I do it. And then you get a phone call that goes. Hey, if you don't do this, everyone you know and love is gonna perish. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we you, must. So do you it. must. Okay, no, let's yeah. not do that. That's terrible. Let's uh, <laughs> no, let's just okay. say there's a there's a numerical amount of money that you're gonna get paid to do this. All right. Okay. What is it? Oh wow. S to basically, so I gotta be the first guy in. Yeah. You gotta go tackle. I got my Cassowary fucking piece too. of plywood. You've just watched a guy right. with a backpack and a piece of plywood <laughs> acting like he's Captain America getting his shit pushed in by a cassowary. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Um, What's the dollar value? It's got to be completely life-changing to the point where I can now just <laughs> retire and don't have to make TV shows for a living anymore. So I'm going to go, uh, yeah, it's it's $25 million. $25 million? Yeah. Like you did this for fun, by the way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Peter, your, your number's much lower. Yeah, it would be lower. I mean, <clears throat> I'd do it for like 500 k That's still a lot of money. Yeah, no, I mean. For us, you would, you would do it. 
for fry. For a fucking TV show. For the so. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't even yeah. on a payroll, dog. Yeah. <laughs> I just do it for just fun. Find it a sounds waiver. great. I mean. I, wait, I got a question I've been dying to ask Mike here. Yeah. I'm sure you've been approached by a shitload of people with ideas for you to do TV shows. Yeah, yeah. you were working on one when we when I last saw you. Yep. Yeah. All right. What's the worst idea that someone's brought you? Been like, hey man, I got this great idea. Oh, look what's at that the worst face. idea someone's so pitched bad. you? Can, can I guess? It's dating show related. <laughs> yes. No. Really? Yes. Dude, people are wow. so because I've been approached by the same. Yeah. They're trying to. Someone tried to get you on a dating show. Bro, they wanted me to be Tarzan and have like fifty Janes and have them compete and I have to judge them. So I'm like, <laughs> that's a fantastic I, show. By I way. desperately I would watch, watch that every second. Yeah, no, I'm that's I'm like watching that show bachelor. immediately. Yeah, yeah, that's a fantastic. terrible. You, you, <laughs> you're not allowed to wear a shirt, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. got to be like butt naked almost. Phenomenal. Like, yeah. with a Phenomenal. Brilliant producing. It's like, uh-huh. <laughs> got these girls trying to catch reticulated pythons and climb like big so, palm trees. And <laughs> <laughs> like, no. So are I'm they aware. pitching you this on a Zoom or is this in an email? This is on a Zoom call. And after that, I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> and then they were like, okay, well, second option is just like a celebrity pet finder. And I was uh, like, bro, I don't want to go help people find chihuahuas. You're, like, you're the worst <laughs> right. people. Yeah, I was like, they're well, like, yeah, you could you could be running all over uh, Beverly Hills with a flashlight. Yeah. yeah. You're like, nah, no, I, I just don't want to do that. This what? was uh, an L.A. production yes, company? Yes, exactly. Oh, man. What it was ca- like my first, like, three months with them going do, viral. You I was didn't like, do any it, of it, did you? Never. Not even a sizzle Not even a pilot, a sizzle. I would pay all of the money in my wallet right now to see the the pilot for Tarzan and Jane, or whatever it was called. <laughs> Tar- it would definitely be called Tarzan Finds His Jane. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. good. It, it, it was good. like, you ever see this, remember the stuff on MTV, uh, Flavor of Love with Flavor Flavor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they, they used that as an example, and I'm like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I cannot old. think of a worse pitch <laughs> yeah. to go in the room. Oh, like, also like, no. to hey, then remember <laughs> Flavor of Love? <laughs> yeah, to Let's use. Let's do that again. Remember? Yeah, yeah like you want to wear a big clock What do we call it? Jungle Fever. Jungle Fever? Yeah, and I'm like, bro. Yeah, that's kind of fucked that up. Uh, let, hang on, let me yeah, guess. I feel like that let me guess. The people on the other end of the Zoom <laughs> were... Right? Yeah. No, bro. Doesn't sound right. Terrible yeah. idea. I, I'm also guessing the people on the other end of the Zoom all looked like me. They're yeah. like, you must watch uh, Flavor of Love, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? You're like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought I was being punked like, for the first time. Dude, I was like, what is this? You guys that's joking? hilarious. What's your dream? Because uh, the cool thing about doing a TV show can be just that someone else pays for you to travel all over really yeah. that's all you do get out dream of it. projects what's like your fantasy thing that you, you would get to go do i mean i don't know i just feel like what what you know what we do yeah it's like it's it man you just know? Adventures yeah. I, I like i already lived the dream life you know yeah i mean your Traveling. youtube is is your dream life yeah right and i it's would like say. i you know i get to travel like whether i'm paying for my own flight or like an airline says hey post this and tag us and we'll give you a free flight to this place and then I get to that place, and that hotel's like, hey, stay here for a night, post a photo, and we'll give you three nights for free. Yep. But the whole nice. time, I'm, like, You're sleeping like, outside. You're like, and I'll solve your co- Cobra problem in your <laughs> yeah, backyard. All, all that there. stuff. So yeah. it's like I don't have, like, a ideal, like, you know, I would love to go work with panda bears. Nice. You know, and like, dress Hell up yeah. in a panda outfit and take care of the babies. Yeah. That's, like, my dream, honestly. Wait, see, that's the I show. Love this. <laughs> that's I love the this. Show. That's the show. Just incognito trying to, like, bottle feed baby pandas and bamboo <laughs> stuff. I'd rather watch Jungle Fever. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, well, yeah. pan, fucking Panda no, of Man. I'd rather watch I'm that watching Panda the Man. shit out of Panda yeah, Man. Yeah, you you want a Netflix special in a panda outfit? Can you imagine that tile? Oh yeah. <laughs> but no arms in the pan, like the sleeveless panda outfit. Just just, just tattooed yeah. jacket, just panda <laughs> outfit. I love that. Oh, that's terrible. I like that. No, but my dream awesome, my dream man. series would be uh, actually hanging out with tribes. That's cool. Like yep. going on with like full on like not naked and afraid, but. Hey, 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 hey. You know, <laughs> you know, like full on going to hang out with like real tribe members and like yep. living with them, sleeping in their huts, like like stay stay a month. Yeah. No yeah. Wi-Fi, no cell phone. Them. Yeah. We talked about that on the travel panel last yeah, year. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I would, that would be my dream. Yeah. That's, you know. Dude, and it's unbelievable too because like when you hang out, you know, when you get the chance to, to be around people who have just lived in these environments yeah. for generations, you watch them, you're like, they're fucking superhuman. Yeah, yeah. man. Unbelievable. Just like Amazing. the local knowledge is really unbelievable. The thing that always sticks with me is the children. Like, oh, yeah. We, I was uh, with this tribe in the, in the Amazon, and literally, like, the three- and four-year-olds are, like, running around, jumping in the water, swimming. There's caiman everywhere, right? Yeah. They're, like, <laughs> swimming, bathing. You, you watch this kid. He's, like, four years old. He shoots up a freaking tree, picks a bundle of bananas, and drops down. Then I get home to my four-year-old, and he's like, Mom! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 
can't put my shoes on. Dude, I'll and never like, forget. I just watched a kid like kill a snake, cook it, eat it, save his little brother. Like, I'm like, this kid, my kid's useless. He can't do anything. Dude, remember the kid? We were, we were just, we'd stop to like get some mangoes, and we see the kid in Madagascar. He's got a slingshot that he made. It's like a five-year-old. Yeah. He's got this little wooden slingshot, and just takes a rock. Plinks a bird that's like 50 feet up. Bird falls out of the tree. Got the meal for the day. Yeah. And it's like a five-year-old kid. Right. And just one shot got yep. this bird from like 50 feet. Yep. yep. Unbelievable. We are really useless in this country, it's, aren't we? It's bad. Yeah. It's terrible. It's unbelievable. My son cannot help himself to food in the refrigerator. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. This kid just sniped a bird from a slingshot yeah. he made and fed his family. No shit. Dude, has this been... Uh, has this been like a surreal thing for you to go from like, this is something I like to like, this is my job now and I get to do this? I've always loved it, How man. How did you start, Mike? I, I don't, I, I don't uh, know you that. Social media or just the animals? Just all of it, yeah. Man, I, you know, my family, uh, I'm from Rhode Island, smallest state in the United States. Yeah. So yep. There's yeah. not much opportunity for uh, <laughs> reptiles and mammals and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but growing up, uh, I had my, my grandma had it, my mom on my mom's side, they had a golf and cockatoo. Thought it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Sweet, yeah. you know. Um, my on my dad's side, my grandmother had a sister. She's half Native American. She had two Rottweilers and an actual like wolf. Okay, okay. damn. Like, like living in the, in the city. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so this is, a, this is wild. Yeah, and my grandma had a, a pit bull and a Pekingese. So I had just you know just the basic. I regular, guarantee you, the Pekingese was the the shittier the, of the a two. A thug. Yeah, <laughs> and, and <laughs> pit bull was like a teddy bear. Yeah, yeah literally, sure. a Pekingese was a warlord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a yep. full-on war criminal of a dog. That's funny. And yep. that was my best friend. Like we grew up together. Yeah. Um, she died at 17 years old, and um, long story short, I got my first snake at four, a boa constrictor, and uh, it bit me, and I didn't want it. And they're like, you you begged me for this I snake. I just got bitten like two minutes ago, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I begged my parents for the snake, and um, long story short. My brother held it after like 60 fill attempts for myself without getting bit. He held it and didn't get bit, and he started talking crap to me. And I'm like, "Give me the snake." Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I grabbed the snake, didn't bite me, and ever since then, we were cool. So I kind of like owe my reptile love to my little brother because he like. What's he do now? He does um, like BMX, motocross, broke okay. both his legs and his teeth, and Jeez. now he's truck driving. Oh wow! Like, right. wow. That's my boy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he loves animals too. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know. Fast forward, and I played sports and stuff, but I never strayed away from animals. Um, I always wanted to be a herpetologist. When I was a kid, mm -hmm. I figured out career day. It was like, I want to be a firefighter, basketball player, this and that. And I'm like, what is a person that hangs out with, like, frogs and snakes all day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, nothing else. That's a good right. way to get picked on, by yeah, the way. Exactly. Like when everybody's like, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a pilot. I want to play with frogs. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's the target. We're, yep. we're bullying that guy Yeah, so lo lo lots of bullying yeah. and then... <laughs> Lots of, you know, my family's all athletes, and I'm, like, the only nerd, you know, that's, like, looking for salamanders and flipping up <laughs> gutters and seeing what's an earthworm or a blind snake. And they're yeah. just like, dog, you don't want to go outside and hang out with your cousins. You don't want to go play manhunt. You don't want to play football. I'm like, no, bro, I need a freaking spot at salamander. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I got in a fight with a kid in my neighborhood because he put salt on a slug. Yeah. And I, nice. I just whooped his ass. Nice. I was, like, four. You know, like, yeah. I, didn't, I was great. like full on against it, you know, it's so, great. Uh, it took a lot for my family to like I, I, at one time I was banned from most family members houses with their animals because I let him go. Really? You know, yeah. Oh, I, let, wow. I let that golf and cockatoo go with my grandma. Oh, really? man. She paid like five grand for it back in the day. She got <laughs> wow. scammed. You know, yeah, yeah. They're five grand today. So yeah. you know, imagine yeah. five grand in the 90s. That's like <laughs> yeah. it's like 20 grand. Yeah, it's a lot going <laughs> you on. You know, Jesus. Yeah. She, had, she had got like some she got hurt, got a lawsuit, bought a bird. Uh, <laughs> golf and cockatoo, do. five grand. Whoa, yeah. terrible That's idea. That's where your yeah. animal had it for two uh, years. Had a big cage. I like opened the cage. Like, go hang with the pigeons. Come back. Never came back. <laughs> so, come back. <laughs> you know, what do you have in your personal collection of animals? Oh, now, a lot, today? man. I've got uh, two. So you built out a pretty crazy place, right? Yeah, yeah. out in California. Yeah, uh, I've always been like, uh, I mean, all this private stuff. You know, like never open to the public or nothing like that. Mm. Still working on staying. Fully private, you yeah. know, but um, I have like ten different species of varanus, um, from croc monitors, lace monitors, water oh, monitors. He's got croc monitors, there damn, you dude. Uh, yeah. I've Patrick's got, uh, fascinated by croc monitors. They're I, dangerous. I always say they're like yeah. the worst. Like, yeah, just the worst. Period. They're dangerous, but they're also so intelligent. They remind me of birds. Yeah. You know, if you can hang out with a bird with a giant beak, and they can either take your eye out or be your best friend. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with the croc monitors. Same thing <laughs> in the hospital with stitches or 
rip your tendons or you have a velociraptor pet. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. up to you to determine what you want. Or you have a velociraptor <laughs> yeah. pet. Yeah. Well, I've got anacondas, right. greens, yeah. and yellows, retics. Um, I've got two cans. I've got a Toco toucan, R, sorry. Uh, I've got a. Uh, uh, let me ask you this. We had Chris on yesterday, Chris Gillette, and he's yeah. like, never with two cans. They're terrible. They're terrible, right? Yeah. <laughs> Has he gone for your eyes? Not yet. No. He will. <laughs> he will, yeah. for sure. <laughs> and you, They're called soft bills, but there's nothing soft about that bill. No. <laughs> you know? Right. It's Don't just, make no sense. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Well, I've also, got, uh, he was like, they, they just hunt your eyes, man. They want the eyes. That's, yeah. 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 No thanks. No, fuck. That's a. a if, if, if my pet is described as wanting to take my eyes out, I don't want it. Exactly. Pet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got turtles. Uh, I've got birds. I've got three, th three different species of zebra, subspecies of zebra. You're, you're outside of L.A., right? Yeah. I'm yeah. like 90 minutes from L.A. Nice. I'm in Temecula, so it's like wine Temecula, country. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. where yeah. Kyle like, is. If, if you fly yeah, to San Diego. Kyle, our producer, is there right now at a wedding. Yeah. Yeah, in Temecula. <laughs> yep. at, a, at a winery. Yep. That's yep. exactly where I live. <laughs> that's a nice, winery, a nice wine country, and horse country. Dude, That's all it is. Dude, like living the fucking dream, dream, man. You, Thank you, sir. It's always good to see you. Love, guys. Thanks so much Big for coming fan on. always, bro. Oh, always. Love it, your dude. stuff, man. Feelings mutual. Thank you, bro. Love Thank guys. you for coming please, on, man. Please on, reconsider uh, Jungle of Love. No, not Jungle of Love. Jungle Fever. Jungle, jungle <laughs> Fever. Please <laughs> reconsider. For sure. Sounds fake. <laughs> yeah, guys. Later, dude. Thanks for coming on. Dude. Yeah, he's got to make that show. Number one. He has to do it. I agree with him, by the way. It's a terrible show that I would watch every episode of. Yeah. Next up. Uh, yeah. Next up, we got Robbie. What's up, buddy? What's up? Bro? How are you, dude? How you doing? Robbie Keezy. Good to see ya. What's, What's going, going on? on, man? Nothing, man. What's happening, guys? Peter, Patrick. Peter, Patrick. What's yeah. up, buddy? How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Not bad. Doing good. Awesome. Awesome. We just Having had Mike left. on Tarzan. Great guy. Music Love was him. a 50 yeah. out of 10 in the corner. I, I was just gonna say. <laughs> Couldn't hear a thing. I was like, uh, yeah, this is cool. There was a light show. I saw lasers <laughs> going. It's I don't know Dave. I you know it's Dave. Oh, that was Dave? No, it's I had no currently idea. Dave doing his magic show. He I was on yesterday. That adds up. Yeah. yeah. The thrill illusion. Oh, there you go. Magic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we got it. I thought I was at some, like, disco back in the 70s. I, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I kind of had that feeling. But I, I'm kind of sad that we're missing the show, but at the same time, I can't wait to give Dave some shit about this because yeah. it's a real problem. And when Jamie comes on later, I'm going to be like, you ruined our show. <laughs> yeah. Get off. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can hear anything. <laughs> How you doing, dude? I'm doing awesome, bro. What's new? What are you collecting? Where are you going? Dude, I just had stories. Uh, eight baby Cubans this year. Sweet. That's the awesome. Other, like two weeks ago. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, they're um, small people from the Caribbean. Yeah, understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They usually In Florida, they import them on boats. Yeah, they usually try <laughs> to come joke? over on boats. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> edit? Uh, it's no, no. Edit it's like, sorry, sorry. Bad joke. Cuban crocodiles, Crocodilius ramifer is one of the critically endangered crocodile species. Got stable, it. though, right? Yeah. Like well, it's Depends not you stable ask. because the problem they're having in the Sambata Swamp where they're found, yeah. there's American crocodiles. Yeah. So they're crossbreeding. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. And you don't have a lot of pure humans left. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, he's, don't he's choke choking yourself down. You want a beer? Bar. Nah, I'm good. Okay. Don't drink. Uh, nobody drinks. I do. Uh, Apparently, yeah, no we're the, literally the only people that drink. Uh, See, that no means more beer for you. That's true. There I haven't even go. touched that one. It's been open since we sat down. <laughs> um, no, but tell us. Yeah, so the Cuban Crocs, I, I didn't know that they were having this crossbreeding thing. Oh, yeah. Anyway. It's, it's a critically endangered species. And they're very elusive of Dude. a crocodile. Like, they're very, they're just hard hard to see. Yeah. They're, they're really hard to see, but they're very interesting. They're probably one of the smarter of the crocodiles they actually hunt in groups and um, oh wow that's interesting they're they're Very. more like a modern day velociraptor <laughs> they're they're super cool yeah it's yeah. A, you can they're so intelligent they'll track you and they flank you and everything we've had large groups of them yeah and they will actually just surround you and then come in one will rush you and then the others come forward wow and so they have a whole like social structure. Oh, dude, it's incredible watching them communicate. That's not a known. That's not a known thing. Wait, how did? Yeah, so how do they it communicate? Is, actually is. is it? Yeah, with Cubans. How are they communicating? Just by movements and grunts and everything. Oh, so they make noises. Yeah, they'll they'll make grunts and. Yeah. Force, oh. did you know this? No, not at all. It's, that's that's it's, one of the craziest things I've ever heard. Yeah, I had no Crocodiles idea. Crocodiles really hunting. Did. Very in very interesting. Yeah. It's uh, if you get a chance, go out to Gatorland, check out their group. On Sunday, right? Tomorrow, yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah. check them out. How, how big do they get? Uh, biggest one we've ever had was 11 feet. Okay, so pretty they're big. A small, well, they're smaller small crocodiles. Crocodiles. Yeah. Yeah. they're smaller crocodiles. Yeah. They're smaller, but, but it's pound. Still, that's still a 
big, powerful animal. To yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Pound for pound, yes. they're probably the most dangerous crocodile. Oh, they really? They can jump vertically six feet. Interesting. It's unbelievable. I had not thought of that or thought of them in that light. Oh, yeah. They're like a pit bull of the crocodiles. And aggressive. Oh, yeah. 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 You, so I always get, I get in arguments with people. They always say saltwater crocodiles are the most dangerous. I'm like, that's clownish. Well, uh, okay. How I say do you Nile, determine? I say Nile crocodiles are by far the most dangerous. That's my opinion. Because they how, actually. How do you determine, though, what's the most dangerous? Because you are you going by amount of attacks? No, I'm going by what. <laughs> What animal would choose, if given the choice, choose to hunt and attack someone? And it's okay, but that's not fair because your American crocodile, your saltwater crocodile, and your Nile crocodile have the largest range of crocodilians on the planet. True. Okay, so therefore, there's more of them. Of course. And interacting with humans, you're going to get more attacks. Of course. So they're going to be more likely to attack and hunt humans as prey because humans are what the easiest uh, prey yeah we're to the hunt. dumbest thing yeah. out there we're just meat yeah. sauce <laughs> yeah what what are niles are the number three killer in africa uh one I mean, mosquito two oh, hippo it, yeah. three niles i think so yeah. that sounds right yeah which is probably skewed but regardless um, the, i just think no i'm just i grew up around niles so right. i just think they're the devil basically. yeah but, <laughs> let me ask you how 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 could they jump uh, I don't know, but probably not six feet. Yeah, they can jump, no, a, bi- a big <laughs> Nile can, they can't really jump up. Yeah, too yeah. heavy. Yeah. yeah, too heavy of a crocodile, just like a big salty on land, they're not going to be able to jump. Yeah. Uh, out of the water, they can launch. Right. Sure. But Cubans little. can, right off land, they can jump straight up vertically. That's wild. And That's wild. it's, it's, it's intimidating. So congrats on those six. Are they going to zoos? Are I got eight. Them? We're What's, keeping sorry, them. Eight. Gatorland is working on something. Hopefully in the future we can send. Uh, I want to grow some up to three, four feet, and hopefully Gatorland pulls through with this stuff they're working on with Cuba. Head we can program? send back some to Whoa, Cuba. Oh, wow. That's amazing. cool. That That'd would be, really be true cool. conservation. For yeah. sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, that, that's something that we all dream of. What can we do for conservation? Gatorland's doing wonderful things, and I'd love to be part of that by, you know, we have pure Cubans. Terry Collins, another person who has pure Cubans, and Gatorland has pure Cubans. And uh, I think we're the only three in the United States that are breeding them. That's amazing. I didn't realize so, And this is my 11th time. So wait, are none of the zoos doing it? Uh, Kentucky used to. They don't breed them anymore. And I believe National Zoo used to have them, but they don't have them anymore. Interesting. Huh. So that's it. The three best bloodlines are at Gatorland, Terry Collins, and my place. That's so you, amazing. Robbie, you have a you, you have a place, is Glades Herp Farm. Is that a place that people can go? We used to have Glades Herp Farm. We closed Glades Herp years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and now we're just doing animal crossings. And it's basically a sanctuary education facility. We do private tours and stuff and gotcha. teach people about the animals, take them through showing them a bunch of venomous snakes, teach them about venomous snakes, about native snakes, native wildlife you're going to see. And then plus we do alligator trapping yeah. for our area. Yeah. And then we you're try. You're in South Florida, right? No, I'm in no, uh, about an hour north of here. Hour north of here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. So I'm up by the villages. Gotcha. Which you have the number one growing city in the United States. Which is what? It's the villages. Oh. I it's called know. a city. It's a city. Didn't it's the number one growing city in the U.S. Did you know this? No, never, never heard, heard of it. it. Yeah, but no. yeah, it's the, all the. It used to be a retirement community, but now it's, it's they've branched out and they're just that, building isn't houses. Isn't that the entire state of Florida? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, now it's all people from LA. Yeah, they're moving out <laughs> yeah, here, for sure. which I get. It's it's pretty it's pretty neat, it, but they're building all these houses there, and you get conflict between alligators. And humans, because humans think it's cool to go outside and feed a dinosaur. For sure. You know? Which, to be clear, it is. You shouldn't do it, but it's cool to watch a dinosaur eat. It is. You know? <laughs> like, I'm not encouraging people to do it, but it's very cool to see. Yeah. <laughs> the problem we're is... We're very honest here. We're, 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 not we're being honest that. here, but the problem is when you... you you're feeding them, and then yeah. you go walk Fluffy or right, Fido right. down by the lake, and the right. alligator shoots out of the lake and grabs Fluffy or Fido, right. and takes you with them yeah yeah let's go with fluffy or fido and kills you it's literally exactly what we were talking to uh, paul about earlier yeah it's like somebody feeding habituating a gator grabbing their dog pulling the person in the whole thing well we had a guy who had family from south uh, south korea 
and he was here visiting. Uh, the guy left, went grocery shopping. Okay. The nephew takes the dog and decides, I'm going to take the tennis ball with me, throw the tennis ball in the lake, and have the dog bring it back. And the guy throws the tennis ball out there, dog brings it back. The guy takes the tennis ball, throws it out there, dog goes, bloop, yeah, underwater. Yikes. Yeah. Next Bye-bye, thing you dog. know, we're called, and this animal can no longer be saved because it attacked in... Which is really pretty ridiculous. It is because a, an alligator eating a dog it's is, natural. is not See, a nuisance th- alligator. That was the thing. Like when Paul was on, he was talking about basically the, the matrix is if someone feels threatened, essentially. Right, right. You moved to a place with a lot of alligators. Right. Like if I moved. And threw a tennis ball in a lake for your dog to get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. Well, that's how it was here in Florida before. If you felt threatened by an alligator, too bad, because they were on the endangered species Mm -hmm. list. But since the American alligator has been saved and taken off that list. That was recent, right? Didn't they only remove it from um, the list like four or five years ago? It's been about six, seven years, I think. And yeah, it's pretty recent. It's, but they were saved due to alligator farming. Right. When we, like, when I first moved here, we used to have to release half our baby gators into the wild. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're taking baby gators out of the wild and eggs out of the wild. Yeah. Oh, wow. And plus there's an alligator hunt because there's That's so true. many millions of alligators in the state of Florida. Sure. Right. So it's a, it's a program that was incredible. You saved an endangered species, yeah. but now... We have to learn to coexist with that. Right, ins- it's like a pendulous. Right. It's like swung too far, and now it has to swing right. back. Right, like they- Australia is having with the saltwater. They're having the big problem with yeah. the saltwater crocs yep. right now. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're fighting right. over. Do we destroy them? Do we open a hunting season? Do we do what? Yeah. You know, well, Australians are wild. They'll do a call or something that makes no sense. That's what they do. Yeah, they Their go overboard. They go nuts. Yeah. Um, lately it's, this year's been so hot and we haven't been getting a lot of rain, so it hasn't been that crazy. It's been a lot of little gators, Yeah. but usually during breeding season, you get all the big ones because males are chasing other males uh-huh. out of lakes. Yeah, territorial. Yeah. And redistributing. And yep. yeah, that makes yep. sense. That's interesting. And um, that's, that's when you have that problem. Sure, sure, sure. So what else are you working on right now? What else is exciting? Um, the Cubans are a big deal. Doing that, yeah. uh, playing with the Crocs and the Gators, doing the Gator How rescuing. How many species do you have? Uh, I'm down to, I cut down to six species. Okay, which are? I've got uh, Yakari came in, Broad Snout came in, um, Speck came in, Niles, uh, Cubans, and American. Who's, who's the best? Cubans. There's no other species. Who's the worst? Cubans. Okay, <laughs> that's a good idea. There's only one species of crocodilian <laughs> yeah. that matters. Yeah. Cubans. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're fanatic. Ramifers. Yeah. Ramifer all the way. You're fanatic. I'm team Ramifer. That's fine. That's, that's good. It. That's it. There's that's no. Good. It, the other ones are when a bunch are you of wimps. Me one for my fish uh, let's let's do it. Let's, talk, let's, let's set one let's up. Talk off there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can actually give you no, one, I know but you California, I know you no, they're no, gonna no. say no. California, the state of California, and my wife. Yeah. Collectively. We'll say no. Well, yeah. uh, all you got to do is handle it a lot, teach it, and your wife will love it. Two years. Two years in California. You have to have two years hands-on experience before you really? can crocodilian. Well, I, I believe that's you should have to do that anywhere. Crocodilian is but not th- an animal that everybody should get into. I completely agree. But also define experience. Like, I've caught thousands, you know. That doesn't mean I'm having experience You're, you're not one. experienced at keeping it. I agree. You know, I it's, agree. It's, a, it's a total different thing when you're working on a farm like mine yeah. and you're feeding and you're going in, you're oh, yeah. cleaning out branches, you're uh, going in, collecting eggs, you're checking animals out to see if they're healthy. For sure. It's a totally different thing. For sure. For so sure. you should have to, you should have to work for someone doing I all agree. that, learning really that. Agree. And I have no problem with that, but to outlaw something altogether, that's, absolutely ludicrous yeah you know it's, it is. it's but also it's california is the kind of place a bit like florida if you let them go they'd probably survive oh and without uh, a doubt you know it that would that could be a problem pretty quickly yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it could the one saving grace we have here in florida it gets too cold 
la- north of Lake Okeechobee yeah. for most crocodilian species, except for the American except alligator. For gators, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. They're right. the most, and Chinese alligators would well, be the also, most cold cor- tolerant. Correct me. Oh, really? Yeah. But nobody has Chinese alligators in the pet trade. Uh, Terry's working with Chinese alligators. Really? Uh, Kyle Aswin's working with um, Chinese alligators. They're so cr- critically endangered as well, aren't they? Yes, they, they yeah. are critically very, endangered. Very limited numbers. Yeah. yeah. And, it's um, Kyle's actually breeding them too. Oh really? Yeah, oh, he's doing cool. wonderful work with them. That's really cool. And what? Um, so, I think I've read about Cayman, Nile crocs. I'm trying to think what else, but they find these things in the Everglades now, right? Like there are multiple crocodilian uh, species. Let, are let's, they reproducing or what's going on? They're not reproducing. It's just somebody lets one go. It's not even let one go. The story between the Nile crocs was um, birds had, someone missed a nest. Oh, and. And then birds, yeah. and drops yep. one. Yep. Yep. It grows up and they yep. found it. They've never found a population. Oh, interesting. So they're definitely not breeding. Okay, that's interesting. Um, could they crossbreed between American crocodiles? Sure. Yeah. It sure. could happen. Yeah. Now, uh, a lot of caiman showed up because during the hurricanes, a lot of, Places got wiped out down south. Uh-huh. So speck caimans and uh, there were even dwarf caimans that were spread out. Oh, interesting. So they grew up and, but huh. you know, you're you're a realist, okay? It say you have a crocodilian. It breeds. Um, say there's, it's a caiman, twenty five eggs. Okay. Okay, out of that twenty five eggs. We'll be very generous. We'll say 23, 22 hatch. Okay. Okay. That's already pretty good. Out of that 22 that hatch, those babies go into the water. They've got a fish that are going to eat them. Oh, yeah. The They've got maybe one makes it to adult. Birds that are yeah. going to eat them, raccoons that are going to eat them, yep. other caiman that are going to eat them. So maybe you get one that makes it. Right. Now, the problem is there were so many released, and there was a caiman farm down there. Oh, I didn't know about this. Yeah. That's interesting. Whereabouts? It was down in, uh, down by the racetrack down there, around that area. Hmm. And it had lost its fences. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, interesting. Well, Robbie, thanks for jumping on. Dude. I can always chat to you all day long. Always, bro. I crocodiles. You guys, well. Yeah. Thanks. take care, Looks man. Like we're having some issues over there, but... We're good on this end. Okay. Well, Robbie, thanks uh, for jumping on, buddy. Take care, good brother. See you, man. Good seeing you. Yeah. Awesome. How are we looking? What's going on? Okay. Well, this sounds like a good time for me to go pee. Yeah. We're going to lose every live viewer. Don't care. Got to pee. Must pee. Check one, check. Check, 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 check.
How are we check, doing? Check, check. We're good. We're back. We're can live. You, We're good. Can you open me that fat tire, please? Yes, I can. Thank you. All right. We're back. The magic show is still going on. Check, check. He's He just cut a parrot in half. I did. I found it funny. I was just reading the chat to see what was going on with the technical side of it, and somebody said, I think Retep's mic went out, and then somebody else said, best mic to go out, and I was like, yeah. Oh, that's a deep cut. It's ruined my day, and so <laughs> fuck off, but now I'm going to talk way, way more. Uh, you know who did it? That guy right there. You He's son the of a bitch. Said, <laughs> he's the one who said it. All right. Sorry All right. for making you wait. Clint, get up here. Clint, come on in, bud. Clint's reptiles. All right. What's Sorry up, dude? about that. Welcome. Clint, Clint is the smartest person. He's at. the only PH. He's the only person with an education that well, we've had on. Well, that's not true. That's not yeah. true. That's not true. <laughs> uh, Clint, we talk right Dr. into the mic, we, too. Yeah, when you, you got to talk right into it. That's right not here, true. Okay. Don't forget we had Dr. Plants yesterday. Oh, yes. Oh, that's PhD right. in, in planting. Dr. Plants. Clint, what's going on, buddy? Oh, I'm having a great time. How you doing? Hey, Audi. Hey. Hey, I'm Peter. Peter. What, it, what does it mean to have a blobfish as your spirit animal? Pretty much, I just look like it. Oh, he yeah. Does, though, the look. resemblance is uncanny. Uncanny. <laughs> I got seven chins, a big, yeah. <laughs> I hope when you get in the water, you swell up all oh, day, yes. too. Yeah. I'm very. I was, uh, I was telling Clint the other day pressure. that I was actually not really familiar with his work, and. My Rhodes, you guys know, like every time we're podcasting, my son Rhodes comes running into the office. Like, yeah, he yes. does it uh, 500 S times. Screaming, a day. never wearing a shirt, never or pants. But I try and keep <laughs> his his pe penis below the camera. That's smart. <laughs> um, but uh, he came tearing into my office. Like I was telling you this, like four or five days ago. And he's like, Daddy, 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 I want to learn about Cayman lizards. So I went on to YouTube typed in Cayman Lizards, and Clint's video was the Numero first one to come up. Uno. And then we went down a whole rabbit hole of your videos. Oh, perfect. And yeah. that's how the algorithm <laughs> works. Yeah, it worked. And I learned many so things which, about Cayman Lizards. Which Terrible video passes. was it? Aren't they rad, though? Oh, they're amazing. I've caught them in the Amazon, but I've never never kept one or that's anything. That's so, so cool. Which species? Oh, I don't know. Are there multiple species? They're, they're, I think, well, I learn there's much. a Paraguayan uh, species that... It doesn't have the orange head. Oh. It's much more just uniform brown. It actually looks more like a caiman. Oh, interesting. No, and this had the bright orange head, the green body. That is so cool. Ecuadorian Amazon. Kind of a funny story, actually, how we figured out how to, how to catch them. So we went down there chasing all these critters around. I was young. I was like 21, 22 years old. And uh, we saw our first caiman lizard on, I don't know, our third or fourth day. I was like, oh, my God, caiman lizard, caiman lizard. And, like, my buddy goes, like, shooting up this tree, trying to catch it. And, of course, just plop into the water, yep. gone. Right. Didn't get anywhere near it. They're, they're terrestrial and also aquatic. Right. Amazing animals. Right, right. And uh, so we're like, shit. And I was like, man, I really want to catch one of these caiman lizards. So, anyway, long story made short, I ended up uh, taking a wire trace that I was using for fishing for piranha, making a lizard noose out of that on top of a long pole. And then the next one we saw up in the canopy, he just sat there. He thought he was blended in. I slowly got the noose around him and uh, pulled it pulled it tri tight, and the wire was strong enough to hold him and then got him in. It's the darndest thing. You know, like so many animals, if it's an inanimate object. Do you want a beer, by the way? Oh, no, thank you. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yes, don't drink. I don't. He's a teacher, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Sorry, please. <laughs> no, but we've, I've offered a beer to everybody today. They've all been like, no, nah, I don't drink. Like, well, I just look like an asshole now. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to put it in those words, but since you brought it up, yeah. they are accurate. <laughs> please, please continue. Well, it's just, you know, there are so many, so many animals, if it's an inanimate object, they don't care. I mean, you know, you can take a really defensive snake a lot of times, and you can just poke it right in the face, like a wild snake. Yeah. You just poke it right in the face of the snake hook, and it's just sort of it's like, there. that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but if yeah. I tried to do that with my finger, oh, yeah. you're done. like that, that wouldn't work at all. Yeah, 100%. And it, like, I don't know how they're distinguishing so quickly they're like that thing that's attached to that guy i'm not even gonna worry about that that's right just, keeps that's just coming at me like things do yeah it's amazing but yeah yeah noosing noosing is a an incredible technique it's kind of you go you really want to make well. sure you do it right yeah yeah but yeah, yeah. I, I can hardly i mean you'd have to have somebody with it because they all just they're gonna drop straight, straight into the water down into the so water, unless you yeah. had somebody in a boat with a big net yeah below yeah, it yeah. like that's probably <laughs> the only way to do it that'd be interesting Clint, you've experienced I guess both sides, right? You, are you currently a professor? Are you teaching somewhere? I I would like to be. Okay. But I don't have time. So yeah. I haven't been teaching for like the last year and a half. 
Uh, of the but before that, channel, because, yeah, because the YouTube and then and then we've got our, our facility, Clinch Reptile Room, which okay. is in Springville, Utah. Nice. Between those two things, so uh, I can't. I don't have any time. So you did, but you spent time as a professor mm-hmm. teaching biology, genetics, stuff like that. Yes. When you talk to your students, were did a lot of them want to work in the field, or did a lot of them have aspirations to do more like media? Uh, as far as with with their biology degrees, yeah. yeah. So I I taught different groups of students. So so some of my taught were were non biology majors, which are my favorite ones. Yeah. Because it's like this is their first exposure, and maybe their only formal exposure to how rad the natural world is. Mm-hmm. And I get to talk to them about everything. You get to open yeah. their eyes. And, and yeah, yeah. I mean, you blow their minds every day. Yeah. Uh, when you get into the biology majors, I mean, a lot of them have aspirations to be, you know, to go to medical school, things like that. Um, you know, I, I think it's one of the great disservices that I think is often done to people is, you know, like they're, you know, we, we tell people go to college and study something you like. Yep. And so, <laughs> like, you go to college, and, you, and I fortunately didn't fall into this. Like, I love biology, but I hated my biology degree. Same. Yeah. Uh, Same. And it's not fun. No. But I, I knew I wanted, like, I knew I loved animals. That's what I wanted to learn about. Like, if I'd just gone and done something I would, I liked, like, there's lots of things that I like. I took every art class in high school. Right. I would have loved to be an art major until I got done. They're like, what's your job now? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> An art teacher. <laughs> and, and the reality is that's where a lot of people land with biology degrees as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, if the, you, the majority, the majority. Oh, for yeah. Sure. If oh, you, I mean, you know, like I have a master's degree and a Ph.D. also in biology. At that point, you can do something with a biology degree. Sure. But a biology undergraduate, unless you want to be a swivel chair pipetter. Yeah. There yeah. are no degree. There are no jobs. Right. For somebody with an undergraduate degree in biology. Uh, which you is, have which to go to some sort of graduate it, school. It, it's also, sorry, I don't mean to no, interrupt no, you, Glenn, but it, it's crazy if you think about it because choosing to be a biology major as an undergrad is basically like choosing to forfeit 50% of the parties and fun of college because mm-hmm. you're working much harder than the communications, yes. the art, the. and I'm yep. sorry, I mean, it might, people might get offended, but you are. It's a harder it's a harder major than being a global studies major, which is a made-up major Dude, for my university. I mean, but, it's uh, interesting, though, like, because I went in as a bio major. Yeah. And you got to take bio 101. Mm-hmm. It was literally six months about the Krebs cycle. So yeah. it was just fucking photosynthesis all day, every day. Yeah. And, like, You're like, I was when like, does oh, this get I'm, fun? I'm switching. Yeah. And so I just switched, and it was way easier. I have a week on plants, and plants are rad for a week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That makes but sense. But like, you know, if they if like day one they were just like bombardier beetles can rocket uh, chemicals out of their ass. <laughs> You're like, like, well, I'm, I'm sticking in around. This. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what I thought my degree was going to be in. Yeah. Like like yeah, like yeah. Uh, the the fact that they could take the subject I'm the most interested in that I study all the time for my own personal entertainment and joy. And suck all the fun out of that. Like that's a skill. Like I don't know how. Yeah. I don't know how you yeah. make something this cool. It really is that a lame. It really yeah. is a skill. So you know, Clint, you're interesting because you come from a world of academia, which you know I, I started down that trajectory, and now I oftentimes shit on it, quite frankly, because I like you, it sucked all the fun out of something. You know, I think when you're 18 years old and you're like, I'm gonna go into biology you think you're going to be Indiana Jones of animals, right? That's basically what you think. And then you spend six months on photosynthesis, and you're <laughs> like, well, I hate this. Yeah. And uh, you've managed to bridge the gap. I mean, not that you do the Indiana Jones, but you're a really good communicator. You, you know, Like you're saying, you're very consistent in the media you put out. Where, how do you tie those two things together? What would you say to people that were interested in both paths, you know, both doing media and doing academia? Which is, by the way, 95% of our channel's audience. Correct. Yeah. That's why it's, it's like mostly like 21-year-olds are like, what's the next step? Yeah. So, so how, how to move on? Well, I, I'll tell you. So this kind of gets back to the, the piece of advice I would give somebody who's like finishing high school and thinking about their future is not to like find a major you enjoy, but find a career you want and Take whatever steps are necessary to get that career, no matter how unpleasant they are. Can I ask you a question quickly? Yeah, just interrupt. Do you think that it's worth deciding on that what that career might be when you're 18 years old? 
It, it's worth if at I least look at moving what the that shirts way. Shirts I used to wear when I was 18. I was like, Jesus, <laughs> like, what? What yeah. a terrible. Well, I mean, mis- I was no, dumb. this shirt's great. Shut up. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean? Is that is that is that the right choice to make that decision that early? It it, de- it depends. You Versus know, just explore. Well, there's there's room there's room to explore, and I've I've been wandering, but I at least. I mean, the reality is, when I did my undergraduate degree, I was planning on going to law school because I didn't know how one made a career out of animals other than being a, a reptile breeder. Right, mm-hmm. right. Or, or working minimum wage uh, shoveling poo at the zoo. Like, yeah. those were the two right. things. Uh, or so being a veterinarian, and I didn't want to kill things. So maybe maybe the, the better way, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but, like, find your passion more than your career and figure out how to explore that. Well, you know, yeah, I, I, I studied zoology... Honestly, because I could study whatever I wanted to. Yeah. I, d- I did. I, I was working on a minor in political science, and I was a little frustrated because of what you said. Yeah. My degree was so much harder than the political science so stuff. So much. Yeah. yeah but but I, I love, that's what I wanted to learn about, even though it always came hard to me. Yeah. Like, I was much better in communications and, you know, English and, you know, math. Biology was always hard for me because I'm not a great memorizer of random things. Yeah, right. Sure. I have that's to, what a biology I have to understand. degree is, for the most part, is memorization of a zillion different processes. And that has nothing to do with being a biologist. Nothing. <laughs> as nothing. a biologist, you need to understand it. Uh, and as an undergraduate in biology, I had to memorize a million things, and nobody like nobody understood them. Right. <laughs> You're just right. like, I can fill in this diagram. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Label it all, move on. Yeah. It's exactly right. And so it was hard for me, but it's what I wanted to learn about. I wasn't until I was a senior. I was watching an episode of Crocodile Hunter Diaries, which was a documentary it. about about Steve Irwin's zoo. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I think I'd like to do something with animals just a lot more than I'd like to read case law. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and I spent the next few years figuring it out. I, I went and worked at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Oh, cool. And, and then I, I, I was a missionary for two years in Peru. Oh, wow. And... You know, during that time, like I bet I, you were I the worst missionary. Oh, I bet you were like, "Ooh, lizard!" the whole time. Well, I okay. So that's what I thought was going to happen to me. I thought I'd be like in the jungle, like, "Whoa, this is amazing!" I was in the Atacama Desert. Oh, geez. it's the driest place in the world. Yeah. I mean, I could go yeah. hours on a bus without seeing anything alive at all. Oh wow! Like not just no animals. No, no yeah. plants. Nothing, nothing alive. Oh, it looks wow. like Sand. Mars. It's like that's, it's like maybe no. sometime in the ancient past. There was life here. Oh, wow. Did you, when you were in the Atacama, did he, you see he any? Could not have brought this did up, you, by the way. Did you see <laughs> any little six-inch tall humans walking around? <laughs> six-inch tall humans. Uh, tell me more about these humans. Uh, oh God, sorry. Should we leave or? No, <laughs> no. He, he's he's. I not thought as someone who spent time in the Atacama, have you seen the Atacama humanoid, the little six-inch tall uh, mummy that they found in the oh. Atacama Desert? I, I, I did not get to oh, see that. Oh, you must you oh, must look into this. It's fascinating. It's incredible. He's obsessed with it. I, I did cryptid, see a, I did see a mummy that found. they found recently just sitting there, but it wasn't six inches tall. It was a full size. No, person. this is oh, like too tall. Google this by the way if you haven't. This is this little humanoid thing. Is that it, was it's mummified. like an alien. It looks I mean, like it looks an very alien. much like an alien. Deformed, got deformed the human, head. alien, you know, something, and nobody knows it what seems it is. About right. We know what it is. Fascinating. Yeah. Peter knows what it is. Yeah. Even even aliens aliens travel across. Across the galaxy, they arrive here. They still couldn't make it in the Atacama Desert. <laughs> right. Also, six-inch aliens. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, traveling across you, the, the you're, galaxy. You, you, you. I'm not, I'm not getting ludicrous. into it. With we you. know what happened. They live within the Earth. These <laughs> Atacama. Um, so anyway, aliens. So yeah. So, how would you say? I still think a biology. You know, we're sitting here sort of poo-pooing it, but I think a biology degree is a very useful degree. Oh. Well, that that's a thing. Um. When I finished my undergraduate degree, I would still say that the vast majority of what I knew about animals came from my independent study. Uh, a thousand percent. But by the time I finished my PhD, like, I definitely, like, in the content I create, I create types of content now outside of the pet stuff, but when I, when I get to talking about zoology and evolutionary biology and phylogenetics, I make sorts of content that not very many other people could make. Uh, you know, most because of your background, because of my yeah, because yeah, of my educational education, background, yeah. and so like it's it's I, I love what I learned, um, and and my path I did wander here. I I, I mean this YouTube thing was a, an accident. Mm. I didn't yeah. I didn't even know people made a living on YouTube when we started our YouTube channel. Sure. It's literally what everybody who's come up here has said. Like yeah. they just like, started <laughs> yeah. a channel and somehow it took off yeah. after five years. Oh yeah, and and so. You know, like I didn't finish. I didn't imagine when I finished my PhD, people would be like, "What are you gonna do now?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm gonna focus more on YouTube." 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And then people yeah. would laugh out loud. For and then sure they'd be like, they well, would. he's not laughing and he's usually joking. It's <laughs> like when I tell oh, so people I'm on, on a podcast, they're like, yeah. That's cute. The hell that's cute. About? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a neat. job? Yeah. You mean you actually make money? Well, not <laughs> no, much. No, but baby. <laughs> you don't have to say it out loud. <laughs> so you, you dropped phylogenetics there pretty quickly. Uh, can you explain that and then, but do it in a way where, like, if there's uh, like a kid listening that's going to get them really interested and fascinated really quickly? Yeah, cool. That's a tough challenge. <laughs> Well, phylogenetics is one of the coolest things you could possibly learn about because it is how various organisms are related to one another. And, and this, this makes me so happy. So um, there have been a lot of studies done on graduate students that study phylogenetics as graduate students. And they make all like, sorts of mistakes. It's like a mistakes. Black Mirror episode. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> the students are They make all yeah. sorts of mistakes interpreting phylogenies. They can, they can put the, the data into a computer and generate a phylogeny. And the phylogeny is great, but they will misinterpret the phylogeny. Mm-hmm. Well, we've got a video uh, called something to the effect of, you're basically the hagfish of reptiles. <laughs> That, that video will teach you how to correctly interpret phylogenies in just a few minutes. and Because it's actually not hard. The more you know about it, the more wrong ways you can think of to interpret them. Uh, Interesting. This, this summer, we did our first summer camps for, for kids 8 to 12. I taught them phylogenetics and how to interpret phylogenies. And these kids were doing it right. In really? the camps, that's amazing. Something that graduate students that study phylogenetics can't do. It's not. It's not hard, and it's so cool and so interesting. And we've got a huge series of videos on this. So if you're like, I don't know if I like phylogenetics, just watch a couple of them because yeah, they're yeah. the most popular videos on our, on our channel. Huh. And and you know we'll talk about whatever. But just sometimes you would just never expect certain organisms to be closely related to each other. Like like for example, elephants. Uh huh. Um, their closest relatives are manatees, dugongs, and a little furry Rock creature donkey. called a hyrax. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's you know, wild. Isn't so that crazy? crazy. They are like, not closely like related to, to rhinoceroses and hippos at all. So, and the whole group is just bonkers. It's called the Afrotheria, yeah. and it is a backcracker's insane <laughs> group. Yeah. Clint, you're like the embodiment of. I would listen to you talk about anything. I was gonna say, man. Like I could just sit here and listen to him talk. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't like phylogenetics until right now. No, now I, I love it. I'm desperate. I can't wait to go back to my room and just start watching videos. About straight up, straight yeah. up, dude. Thanks so much for thanks, coming. Thanks, It was a pleasure yeah, being really here. Nice thank you so you. much. Yeah. Great to meet you all. You too, man. And uh, yeah, thanks, Clint. That was oh, awesome. That was a, that was a quick yeah. Now I want to know what my spirit animal is. Uh, Clint's spirit animal. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. I know that, what it is. Yeah. Uh, there's no way to say anything without offending this man. You have to offend him. Oh, it, I would accept blobfish, so. I'm going to go think. with a. No animal is offensive. Moray eel. I'll take that. Are you okay. calling him slender? <laughs> yeah. I was also about to do a slender one. <laughs> what, what was yours? What were you going to do? A giraffe about? beetle? Oh. Not a giraffe, giraffe <laughs> yeah. beetle. That is a very cool beetle. Very cool beetle. <laughs> I'm going to say a uh, rhesus macaque. Oh wow! <laughs> Just lots of energy. Do you have herpes? He's bouncing. Uh, yeah. he's, <laughs> no, oh I haven't. I haven't been out in the Everglades yet. <laughs> he's bouncing off the wall. Thank you, Clint. Thanks, buddy. Thanks so much, yeah, man. Thank you. That was awesome. Wow. All right. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. Super. Love that guy. Kyle, Never where are you, buddy? What's going Crocodile on? Crocodile Kyle. Yeah. What's up, man? How's it going? Good. Good, Good to see you, it. man. How you been? Hey. How you doing? It's Peter. What's Patrick. Up, How you doing? What's going on, All dude? Right. Not too much, not too much. Having fun here. Good. Did you just get into Animal Con today? I didn't see you uh, no, yesterday. No, I was here late last night. I got oh, here late gotcha. last night. Okay, yeah. but you missed the bar shenanigans. What bar shenanigans? Exactly. Yeah, keep <laughs> good, it that way. Good, right? No, we'll be there tonight, that too. That's Don't why, worry about that's it. That's why I'm hoarse. <laughs> um, dude, how's it going? How's the Primitive Predators? What's great, new? Great. Tell us I mean, stories. Well, where do I begin? Well, I mean, every day is a crazy story. So, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, Kyle Asplund, founder of Primitive Predators. And what that is, is it's a reptilian, mainly crocodilian sanctuary in South Florida. Uh, I've got my first alligator when I was 10 years old, and I still have her today. And that sparked this amazing passion that I have for crocodilians. And you've and, been building for a long time. Yes, yeah. yes. So I moved down from Pennsylvania to Florida. See, everyone said Pennsylvania. earlier. Pennsylvania. Everyone. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, everyone. Pennsylvania is pretty lawless. So you can have almost any animal, uh, especially reptiles. So 
it's a blessing and a curse. We can get back to that. But, um, you know, so I moved down nine years ago with 15 crocodilians and set them up thinking I knew how to set them up based on what I've learned from other people with natural ponds. But then you're also dealing with hurricanes. You're dealing with even just crazy rainstorms. So yeah. flooding is a factor. Yeah. You're dealing with the cold. I mean, believe it or not, I've had nights under 30 degrees really? in South Florida. I didn't know that happened. So alligators, no problem. But crocodile, crocodiles, it's a death sentence yeah, for them. Yeah, for sure. Wow. So pumping in water to keep them warm and then just overall maintenance. So based on everything I dealt with, I then re revised the entire property and built these seawall material cr crock ponds. So we drive them into the ground. It holds the sides. The crocs can't destroy the pond, but it's still a natural pond in the bottom. So it's beauty. So cool. It's beautiful because it filters through. It doesn't green up like a pool. Yeah, wood. you always have clear ponds. Like I yeah. always look at your stuff, and I'm like, how does this guy have the only clear crock ponds on planet Earth? <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. It's amazing. How big, how big is your place? Uh, so I have two properties. Uh -huh. uh, one is 42 acres. The other is 12 acres. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a yeah, lot of space. It is. It that's is. That's awesome. And the beauty of the sheet pile is it's it's sheer wall, so you can really utilize space so well with it. Sure. Whereas obviously natural ponds, you have to grade it down nice right. and nice right, and right, right. You know, because then it'll just fill in, and crocodiles just destroy it. So. That's awesome. Yeah. So what uh, what projects are you working on right now? What's changed? I mean, I, I've never been to your facility. I'd love to come one day. But yeah. what uh, what are you working on there at the moment? Right now, the goal is just to open, you know, yeah. open the public so people yeah. can really see it for themselves. Uh, you so were over a year yeah. into it when I last saw you, which was over a year ago. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you've been going at you've been cracking at this for a while. It's been crazy. It's yeah. been very hectic there, but it really is, has shown it's paid off. You know, the crocodiles. You know, the sheet pile ponds are doing great, exactly how I designed them. The crocodiles really seem to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And now this next step is just to open up so yeah. then people can come and enjoy it too. Um, we've had a couple, we, this is our second day, did four hours yesterday. We've had mm. a couple reptile, croc, gator people on. Most of them have the croc Dundee hat, <laughs> the gator teeth. Yeah. It's like a full thing. You just look like a kind of like a, just like a bro who just rolled out of the frat. Yeah. <laughs> My father, even to this day, still laughs at me because I'll show up to reptile shows, even in Pennsylvania, yeah. and he's like, you do not blend in at all. No. Yeah. Right. no Never you're, smoked you're, a cigarette. You're too normal to yep. blend in. Yeah. You got to start smoking cigarettes immediately. No tattoos. <laughs> beard. So. Need a nice big beard. Was there yeah. a point to that, or you just wanted to tell him he looked good? <laughs> just wanted to insult our yeah. guest or what? No, it was a, that's a high compliment. Oh, okay. So yeah. No, but I, I guess I was going to say, like, does it, when you, I'm assuming you spend the vast majority of your time with the enclosures, with the animals, doing the education stuff, but does it, how, it, it doesn't seem like it's like your full on identity, like I need to look like the croc guy. No, and that's what I, I take pride in the enclosures that I built and the animals, yeah. you know, that, that call it home because I don't like to say that I have because it's, it's, it's all a pride, it's, I'm very proud of yeah. what I built for these animals. And that's what it is. It's a sanctuary. It's a forever home for these animals. You know, so that's what I kind of show myself through the enclosure design and the beauty of the animals and the beauty of the setups and just seeing them live exactly how they are supposed to be designed for in the wild. And that's right. what I believe an enclosure should be, is an enclosure should be, is everything those, an those animals can do enriching-wise in the wild should be able to do in their enclosure and captivity. So there must be a lot of like science, like I'm assuming that you're, you got to be really into the science of just how all the water moves. Yeah, and all the chemistry that. Like, and everything Do you have else. a background in like ecology or, or any of that or do you just figure it all out? No, it's just more of the do it yourself, hard labor and figure out from your mistakes and just every day making it a little better. And, you know, I've. I mean, it's it's almost 300 crocodilians on the property at this point. So you, but you have a lot more than just crocs too, right? Yes. Yeah, what yeah. else do you have there? Uh, tortoises, about 50 tortoises, as well as 150 venomous snakes. Wow. But my main goal now is obviously, you know, going back to my roots of the alligators in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. is that is a problem. You know, there with it being unregulated, people buy baby alligators. Anyone, anyone can walk into a reptile show and buy a baby alligator You're for hundred dollars. They just have them for sale at pet stores yes. and stuff there. Oh yeah. wow, I've never seen that. So yeah, now, I mean, I've, I've rescued seventy-five alligators in the last two years by going up there. I have a private facility. I've been getting them from row homes in Philadelphia. Eight-foot alligators, like these big, big alligators. Hmm. But they just have them in their backyard, like in a doghouse, essentially. I mean, there's horror stories. I mean, one I got. Tell that us was one. Yeah. One was actually kept in 
uh, an attic because he wa- the kid wasn't supposed to have it. Wait, but in, sh- you say in an attic? Yes. And Continue, he showed I'm up sorry. with it, and his mom said, well, you can keep it, but it has to live in the attic taped up. Taped up? Taped up. With it around its mouth taped up? So it would live up in the attic, except for one day a month, he'd bring it down, untape it, put it in the bathtub, let it drink, and he'd feed it a piece of meat, tape it back up, throw it back in the attic. Jesus. For years. That's like, oh, that's like sick, like... Sadistic. That's like that's Silence like, of the Lambs. That's what I was thinking. I was trying yeah. to remember the movie. Yeah, it's like Silence of the Lambs. Shit. Yeah, but it also shows how resilient these animals are. Yeah, you know, right. it's a shame because it just shows what they've been through. And that's it's actually unbelievable that that animal like ate and did all that that one day a month. You yes. know? Wait, Even how? if it was five days a month, like it's amazing that it ate. Yes. I would I would think it wouldn't eat. You know, yep. it would just sit in the tub, sort of rehydrating, so weak, and then being like, oh, you know, I'm not going to touch food. Yeah. How amazing. is that animal responding now? Amazing. Really? I mean, she is Full incredible. Incredible. Hmm. Incredible animal. So she'll be coming down this fall. I, I got her about two months ago. And uh, the bigger animals I quarantined for a little longer b- because also they're harder to get down back to Florida. So I got to, sure. I have a uh, of transport the regulation. Vehicle or no, just, just because, because it's, it's, a giant it, it's a bigger undertaking for sure. It's yeah. so funny because like every time I've moved big crocodilians, it's been under a very stressful circumstance. Like, Oh, right. this crocodile ate 12 people. We got to get him out of here before the village ki- kills it or whatever. Yeah. Tire croc. Yeah, tire croc, any of those ones. We just, like, tape the shit out of them and throw them in a canoe, throw them in the bed of a truck, and peel out of there as quickly <laughs> as possible. Yeah. It's funny to think of, like, I've never nicely, and I don't mean this to be, like, abusive, I've never nicely transported a crocodilian ever. I don't even know what that is. We're just usually like, get it out of here. Yep. <laughs> you know, like, yep. tape them, th- <laughs> wheel them sure. out of here. Yeah, that's funny. But that's what's cool is with our sanctuaries that we take pride in that because we have time. We don't have sure. to rush the capture. Sure. So we have a, f- he's probably pushing 16 foot Australian saltwater crocodile. Whoa. And putting a rope on that animal and trying to drag him out of the water, it's, ex- it's extremely stressful for us. It's for extremely sure. stressful for him, for dangerous sure. for both parties as well. So we had time. So what we did is they're very food motivated. We just trained him to go into a trough. Yeah. And eventually he, he just, under repetition, yep, he just kept coming in. And one day we shut the trough, yep. put a crate in between the trough and his pond because when they get spooked, they just want to go back to the pond. So he turned around, went straight from the trough into the crate, and away he went to the new facility, which That's is awesome. right how down much, the road. How much does a croc that size weigh? Oh, he's, he's got to be pushing 1,000 pounds. That's crazy. A lot of pounds. A, big a lot of LBs. So with the gators, I'm assuming a lot of them are together in, a, in within an enclosure. Do they socialize with each other and stuff? Or? So that's the biggest issue from with captive alligators that I've gotten the rescue alligators Girls. is the majority of them are by themselves. So they have zero social skills whatsoever. So there is, right. I'd say, 5% of those animals, is, there's no coming back. They have to be by themselves. Um, and there's, I'd say, maybe 25% go through a stage of, being a jerk right you know and that's why you have a community aspect where it's not just one picking on the other you know and, and it's it's natural in the wild that they're going to pick on each other yeah um just as long as you're being cognizant of it keeping an eye on it and making sure there's nothing serious could you imagine if you took 25 children and at age 10 you're just like all right they're completely they, isolated. They had never been with another kid. Never show them another kid. And then as, as adults, you're like, all right, let's throw them all in a room together. Well, now add the bite force and the teeth. <laughs> yeah. Bananas. Even yeah. worse than that, you know, a lot of these alligators are days or weeks old when they come up to the reptile shows. So they're barely out of the egg. Uh, they, they don't they barely know lose. anything. Yeah. Nope. Right. So how much I always think of crocodilians as being a big instinct over nurture. I mean, would you agree with that? Because... You're saying, you know, they don't know anything. They're only a few days old, but they kind of come out of there knowing what to do, right? For sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, I mean, that's the beauty of alligators is they're very easy to get eating. Yeah. They can take uh, large gradient, like temperature gradients. Huge. So, yeah. you know, if people don't have a heater, it's okay. If, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It keeps them alive. You yeah. know, that's the thing. Is yeah. it ideal? Far from ideal. Of course not. Yeah. yeah. But. You know, that it, like I said, going back to the resilience, it shows how tough alligators are and what they can put up with. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what I've seen is the social aspect is so important that it's not just simply instinctual, that they certainly learn it uh, just being around other sure. alligators. That's interesting. When, when they're going through their jerk phase, and you said 5%, they're never going to get out of that or they're never going to be able to be in. So when they're going through their jerk phase, what's an example of like something That's they what you do? went through when you were 14 to 19? He's still in it, like, th- yeah, 13 to, like, 30. <laughs> um, 
what's an example of something that you would do that's where you're like, this is acceptable, this is part of it, versus an unacceptable behavior during the jerk phase where you're like, I need to separate this one? Sure. Uh, what I say a lot of times with crocodilians, it's not the bites per se, it's the stare. So, hmm. you know, a lot of times is I've seen crocodilians kill other crocodilians just by staring at them because it's just the stress of just looking at them. Wow. Um, that's, that's it's interesting. Easy. Because they're so resilient. They're so tough. I mean, a bite f from one to the other is nothing. I mean, they'll heal yeah. up with that. I mean, they'll rip each other's legs off and they're just like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But usually <laughs> what I see is so I, I design enclosures where they have spaces they can get away from each other completely. Uh, no matter how many there are, how little they are, they should always have a space that they can get away. Um, so the key factor that I've seen is chasing is fine. That's normal. But it's when they grab and then you see them chomp down on the tail is means okay. that one really means business, you know. Got it. And sometimes they'll thrash as well. So, again, there's, there's stages at which, you know, okay, that's fine to, okay, that's a little too much. Okay, that, one, that animal keeps... Uh, um, uh, expressing that behavior. Got it. So the staring is like the equivalent of like the eighth grade bully just kind of staring at you in class, just doing this. Yeah. And you're sweating exactly. and you're just and stressed you're like, the entire Lunch, time. He's going to murder me. I will never make it past 12:08 right. p.m. today. And that stress can literally kill. Yes. So I actually had ah. three Nile crocodiles that I got when I first moved down, and the the two the male and the one female were always together even at the previous facility and the other female was off to the side so when i moved in my facility they started eating no problem but she was always very weary so i actually went to west africa and came back 10 days later and it looked like she had liposuction every ounce of fat was gone wow. out of her in 10 days in 10 days how just because you this know she's an animal that can go a year without food exactly yeah and i quickly moved her that that day moved her out she would not touch a piece of food i tried live fish i tried you know live chickens i tried everything hmm. and she that's the thing with crocodilians too is they can just there's a light switch in them that if that's flipped there's nothing you can do for them wow that's and interesting. A lot of times it happens when they're just stressed from one animal to another. And I think just from them moving to my facility, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. Because huh. the one pair, actually, the male and the one female were even breeding that night. So I think just the stress of it all just did her in. Huh. Damn. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. So it's pretty, pretty clear to say crocodilians are your favorite. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, dream species for you to interact with, capture, keep, any of it? Yeah, yeah. I would say probably Australian saltwater crocodile to see in the wild. I'm looking to go to Australia next year, but I'd love to see them in the wild. And, you know, I've... They're not hard to find. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luckily for me, they're... <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, I have 21 species of crocodilians on the property. You know, so I've always. Oh, you have them all. Well, you're most missing of them. two. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's really impressive. I didn't know you had 21 yeah. species. That's really impressive. And that's the thing is, everyone. Chinese like, alligator. Yes, I bred Chinese alligator. Actually, just bred the male to another female this year, so got a new, added a new bloodline to. Wow. So you have all Chinese the caiman. Animals. Yeah. Except black. Except black. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why not allowed black caiman in Florida? There's not a lot of black caiman in the states overall. Not allowed them? No, they're not. There's not very many at all. Really? And they're the yeah. most common too. Yeah, that's yeah. wild, huh? Um, but I've really focused back on just the rescue alligators. You know, it's it's such a rewarding program that I've built to see these animals, like I said, in the attic of uh, yeah. someone's home in Pennsylvania, to living outside, you know, in a natural pond, interacting with others exactly as they would do in the wild. It's it's extremely rewarding. Can I, can I ask you a question? There's so many of you guys, right, that, that have the same passion. I was just trying to look back and think. You, Robbie, Chris, Paul, like you guys all share a passion for rescuing these gators, right? Why, and, and maybe there is and I'm just stupid, but like why is there not like a big unified effort to, to do, you know what I mean? Is it, is, it a, is it a personality thing? Is it a state thing? Like, why is there not some like large unified effort across the state for the rescue programs? Well, I don't want to speak for them, but it seems as though they do a lot of the nuisance alligators in yeah, Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas that, so that seems like it's there's a lot. That's of its programs. own thing. There's a lot of programs for that. Uh -huh. There's very, very few programs, especially ones on the scale that um, that we're doing at Primitive Predators, where we're 
not only taking them in in Pennsylvania, but bringing them back to Florida and putting them in these naturalistic enclosures. There's very, very few opportunities. So I definitely saw a niche because, again, growing up in Pennsylvania, I always went back to the reptile shows frequently, and I kept seeing this issue over yeah. and over and over right. again. And I said, you know, I, I got to step in and do something here because it's not all about what animals do I have. It's not about what facility do I have. It's what can my facility do for even the captive alligators that are suffering. Gotcha. So yeah. you're, it makes sense. It's a different type of rescue. It is. Yeah, that it makes is. more sense. I hadn't, it's funny because I hadn't distinguished that, but it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, it's just interesting being here for two days, just the amount of people who are so singularly focused on what they do. Yeah. I'm kind of like, I wish I cared about something this much. You don't, yeah, well, but Peter, he doesn't care about anything. Who, him? Yeah. Nah. Nah. Not even his family. <laughs> That's not true. Um, Just kidding. Yeah, well, but it's, it's, it's like, I, I said this when, we, when Brian did the opening show thing on the panel yesterday, you know, especially when it comes to people that are interested in being creators or whatever, it's just pick your passion and go for it. It doesn't matter, like, if there's something that you love as much as Kyle loves crocodiles, I love animals that are in the edge of extinction. It doesn't matter if it's freaking goldfish, you know, just go for it. Like give, give that everything. And I think that's what you see like in this room is people that true. thrive at communicating that critter or thing that they're so singularly passionate right, right, about. Right, and right. it's great. It's nice that we live in a world where you can get that information out and fi find your tribe online or whatever right. and share that. Cause I, I don't think right. that existed 20 years ago. You know, like, For how sure. did you find other fanatical alligator people 25 years ago? Like, it didn't, you know. <laughs> Grab the yellow pages. Yeah. <laughs> Animal <laughs> con. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kyle, Kyle, thank you, man. Awesome. So yeah. good to see you, buddy. Thanks for good jumping on too. the pod. Um, when do you think Primitive Predators will be open? By the end of the year. End of the year. Yep. When can people start coming to check it out? January? January 1st. January 1st. Yep. Nice. New Year's Exciting. Day. Grand New opening. Year's Day. Yeah. We'll see you there. Cut <laughs> the ribbon. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Thanks for jumping Thanks, on the Thanks, Kyle. All right. Good job, man. That was cool. That was a cool guy. Yeah. I didn't offer him a beer, and he's the, probably the first guest we had who would have said yes. <laughs> I blew it. Too bad we're I out. I blew it. I blew it. All right. Well, next up, very exciting. What's up, Kevin? Come on in, dude. We're not Kevin formal McCurry. here. Hello. Hey, bud. How are you? Hi, guys. How you doing? Hello. Hey, man. Peter, Patrick. Do you guys know each Patrick? other? Uh, I'm yeah, wondering if he even knows what I do, but we'll, we'll see oh, how he does. Well, I, I know that you have a major meth addiction problem. It, that's true, and it gives me uh, the heightened sense of awareness for, to allow me Tell to do us, all the things uh, that I do. Explain, explain, because the, there's now an inside joke that doesn't make sense. These guys are like, wow, that makes was no really sense. This is, this is great. Yeah. I'm up here. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm very animated when I talk, and sometimes like I'm like a part-time vegan, so I'll get like maybe a little skinny. So there was a video where I was talking to my buddy Brian Barchek, and a, a few of my naysayers <laughs> took an opportunity with my hands moving. Well, he's moving his hand by his mouth. If we just throw a meth pipe in his hand, and it made me like smoke like fake smoke and Wait, then someone it, animated all of this or like oh, cgi'd no, it well yeah so we had a, a real a pipe yeah so well it's yeah so it's just photoshop and stuff so they did it and then it goes around and then people are asking me like really and i'm just <laughs> like geez so oh, yeah. of course you know to to deal with that a little while later donnie did a video and he's like, well, if, if really Kevin smoked meth, he'd probably have 10 pipes. So he put like 10 pipes in my mouth. Nice. So I'm just uh, nice. So, but it's this, it's this <laughs> thing, but it was done so well that some people I'm hyper and real, whatever. And well, little, you do a lot of meth. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, no, I don't do, I don't do anything. So there you go. <laughs> I don't even, even do much of that. Would you like one? No, I'm good. Thanks. So <laughs> trying to get someone to take, yeah, I can't get one person. To have a I'm up, I'm up. No, it's, it's. Kellen, tell us about your pythons. Tell us about breeding. Tell us what's going on. Uh, that's that's a very yeah. That's a, a general question. It so is. But obviously, explain to people that don't know what you do. Uh, you create these morphs and like tell us a little bit about. Yep. That. So um, I'm also known for one of the things is uh, originating a lot of the ball python mutations. Yeah. So I was into all these um, like wild caught ball pythons, and I couldn't afford all of these really exotic things at the time, like walnut pythons, black headed pythons, diamond pythons. So <laughs> I would pour through shipments of imported ball pythons from Africa, and I'd look for little oddities. And I thought that ball pythons were the great vehicle for like a pet snake compared to like a cow king or a corn snake because they're very, very small. Sure. And they're very defined in what they need to eat. Sure. A ball python is perfect. Easy, it, it, too. Yeah, Super easy. easy pet. It, but at the time, they didn't even think that. 
So, oh, really? Yeah, because we were dealing with captive. We were dealing with uh, wild caught. Wild caught versus captive. And, and so they were picky. And they were picky oh, eaters, terrible that's eaters. The so, opposite of what I think. So what I decided was, well, if I could just take some of these odd-looking animals and make them reproduce, but where it's the genetics, so it's an inheritable to repeatable, uh, you know, morph. Yeah. Then it would be a perfect animal. So I started going through these shipments, paying money for odd animals. And people are just like, God, what's wrong with you? Like, you know, there's all these other cool animals. <laughs> well, but besides like, the meth, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah I, I don't think there was even much meth going on at the time. But anyways, so I started doing that and I didn't even know how to even breed these animals. So I just jumped in there. I focused on it and I started actually uh, breeding uh, inheritable genes in these animals that were all new. And then I would give them these goofy names. OK. And as I did that, people started taking notice. So I did like the first pastel jungles, the first caramel albinos, the first spiders, first super pastels, and on down the line, first ghosts. So just, just for those that maybe don't know what any of this is, you have a ball python, and everything Kevin just named is like a crazy color variation. Bright yellow, pink and blue, white, yep, yep, scaleless. Yep. I mean, like you, you say, I don't know what I'm talking about, but like it's these crazy different diversities that you've I'm, I, I kind of envision you sitting there with a Punnett square, yeah, like well, being like, oh, this, this, this. Yep, and here it we was, go. It was all self-taught. But in the beginning, you're paying money or you're trying to get these genes, and you don't know if it's inheritable. You can get animals that sure. uh, look. Yeah. That, no, they just they look interesting, and that's it. They are an anomaly, oh, and they're not inheritable. So we have, like, the phenotype, so it's the look of the animal, and then we have the genotype that there's an associated repeatable genetics. Uh-huh. And so we started breeding these weird animals, and some of them were inheritable. And then you start showing it out to the market, but nobody had ever bred two genes together. So I did the first pastel jungle and the first spider. Okay, what and, do those look like? And that's called the bumblebee. So, so yellow and black. Yeah, yep. Okay, yeah, yellow and black. So I just and I to to help me get the vehicle of the ball python out there, I would give it these odd names. And I would just try to show it off, and and it stuck. All the name calling, uh -huh. and it started creating a whole like industry it's, and a whole it's, revolution. It's, it's the biggest thing at a reptile show yeah. now. Is Dude, the, the I mean, I went to my first reptile show with Forrest this past year in a, uh, near LA, and just the the python variations and the colors. It's, it's insane. As someone who does, has no interest in even keeping a snake, I was like, I might need a couple of these. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's simply, it's, uh, it's living art. Yeah. So we're yeah. just, yeah. and we're trying to, this, <clears throat> this drives us so much. What happens if I breed this to this? What will it make? Because it's going to make something that does not occur in nature. Although the original genes occurred in nature, now I'm combining it because I have the little perfect little science you, experiment. You ever mess around with uh, like CRISPR or any of that? No. So uh, I have a friend who's a, uh, a, a biologist, a molecular biologist, and he talks about that. So there's a rat snake right now that I've been dealing with, and I'm like, what they've defined this rat snake as is actually wrong. And I explain. It, it's, explain. Its behavior was different. Its body shape's different. So we have this rat snake, and they're saying, well, it's a melanistic Jansen eye. And I said, well, no, actually, I think it's more. Uh, more like a melanistic uh, red tail rat snake. This is probably okay. gibberish to you. Sure, different sure, subspecies sure. of rat so snake. So I started yeah. looking at the, no, it's a different species. Oh, species yeah. altogether. Okay. So Interesting. I started looking the head scalation and uh, the, the head scalation is different. Okay. And so we're actually now going to work on it. And if we get our way, we're going to do all the genetics of it and, and show all the breakdowns of all the base uh, components of all the different, you know, yeah. uh, attributes. We're at the, you know, hit it with a, primers and just snip this one little uh, locust site and we'll start looking at that but if we get our way we'll it probably be called goniosoma uh, sabbathi like black sabbath because it's oh <laughs> that's fun yeah. <laughs> yeah so here's an interesting question you're, you're creating these living art are they are all these morphs one species well, no. So we, we do all different species. So I, I do lots of reticulated pythons. I do Asian water. I'm sorry, I sh let me let me let me re-ask that or let me clarify. My question being: Are all the ball pythons one species of ball python? Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. Are all the water monitors? Are you mixing no. Asians and others? Okay, like so Asian water monitors. Then we have different locality stuff, which are uh, as evolution goes. Yeah. We they go onto an island and then that gene starts to of course slowly adjust to maybe like it's a small island so their their maximum size is yeah. smaller not to overwhelm the the you know food sources yep. and the yeah, resources yeah. 
So yeah, so insular there's a dwarfism. Lot of, yes, insular dwarfism, and so we have water monitors. And as time goes on, just as always, we start looking at things a little harder. We reclassify them, and we see different attributes that are inheritable. Yeah, that's different than let's say like a mainland and stuff like that. So yeah, so much well, to learn. Oh, good. I was just gonna say, does anyone ever? I'm sure you've got. I don't know what your lab looks like. I'm picturing there's like red string going on the fucking board. Yeah, like a beautiful mind of snake yeah. photos. But yeah. uh, is there anything that you've got an idea you think it might be possible, but you are like haven't figured it out yet? That's, oh, yeah. So you, you, you well, right. uh, imagine something and you re reverse engineer it. So you go, okay, I want something that's all white. Let's say it's just all white. So we, we obviously look at things besides leucism, we look at albinism. And then you have to have albinism as the lack of melanin. So now I want to eradicate the pattern. And so I might look at like the, the patterns. Well, if I null out this pattern, which would normally be melanin, and I start doing like make it hypo or whatever, I can reverse engineer that white patternless animal. So it might look like leucistic. Leucistic is this. It's a command that says, don't make the proteins for melanin and right. all that, which uh, right. uh, essentially is pattern. So we do it like that, but that's, that is literally How what many generations? Leaders, How many generations? Uh, my, like my water yeah. monitors, I'm up to six generations, which is significant. But, all, but, but like you're trying to get this, you're trying to get blue, oh, blue dark blue, it, light blue, and white. How times, many generations? Uh, it could be, well, in some cases it could be two generations. You know what a cow reticulated python is? No, so I know what a reticulated python is. Okay, so I breed lots of reticulated pythons. Yeah. I create this cow retic. So it's I gotta a look blue, this up. It's a, yeah, look it up. Okay. Blue-eyed leucistic snake. So it's essentially white yep. with blue eyes. Okay. But it has a leaking gene. So as it grows, it wow. starts getting all this cookies and cream kind of look. Oh, wow. Yeah, and there it is. You know what it looks like. So we basically engineer this stuff, and that's um, uh, it's, it's a protein that starts being produced over time but it's uh, looks like a milkshake you get at carl's jr it's probably yeah. that's what uh, it looks like look at that thing yeah. it's a genetic relationship called epistasis where you just get this like really strange thing there's all sorts of different stuff but let's say ball pythons they're the perfect fruit fly okay you know far more exciting yeah, than yeah. drysophila uh -huh. and whatever but you can learn so much in genetics interesting so what would be if you could mad scientist concoct the coolest color variation what would it be how would you do it? Let's open I this think up. The cowrie everybody. tick. That that's pretty is hard cool. to talk. That, that is, that's pretty rad. Yeah, because each one is different. Okay. So there's, it's not repeatable whatsoever. So they're unique like a fingerprint. So let's say so let's say I come in here, I fly into your facility in a helicopter. <laughs> I get out, I have cool sunglasses on. <laughs> I got a suitcase. I go, look, man, I got five million for you. I Take need it all. I need <laughs> save it. Take the employees too. <laughs> I need I need a, a ball python that has the exact. I really want it to look like a leopard. Yeah, how long, how long is this going to take you? That is a that's a little. So you have isolated dots, right? And yep. is it, so we, the rosettes we, around. Yeah, the you dot. have to take the pattern. So you have to fight all this different stuff with the, the patterns. That would take a while to get this isolation. You can get the dots, but then the size isn't, isn't significant enough. Right. So you want like. It would take a while. It would take probably many, many genes. We, we How many ball... years are we talking about? Well, we're way far in the game, so that could probably be done probably in five years. Five years. Yeah, That's a million bucks a year that. for you, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you got to ask him to throw in the cool sunglasses, though. Yeah. 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 Generally, five years. My, my whole hobby is a money loss almost consistently because everything, I'm like my own biggest customer, so sure. all my money is reinvested sure. into all my... With the meth or the snakes? <laughs> uh, meth hasn't worked out very well for me. It, I've all, this is my third set of teeth. No. <laughs> they're beautiful. They're, 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 they're beautiful. stunting. Yeah. Yeah. Love them. Um, um, I can tell you something. Yeah, please. All right, so I, I watch I watch your show, and I, I it's, it's interesting, and we talk about, you know, like, things that are extinct and maybe coming back and I, sure. I listen and want to hear your opinion on that. Sure, please. There is um there's a fungus. He's the producer by the way. It's so his show too. I, I, Not you him. guys he do sucks. it very like it's very like well, always the, the beer and all dude, that yeah. stuff. It's very low key. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's very reachable and you know, we like that. We're just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, please go on. There's uh something uh years ago 
there's something uh, now that's known as snake fungal disease. Yeah. So snake fungal disease. I'm the guy that discovered it. Oh, really? It took me 10 I didn't know years. That. Billy over there yelled at me because I suggested letting go some water snakes from a different watershed. And yeah, he's like, and I, can, I, can, I can go on all day yeah. long about snake fungal disease. 10 years, I, was, I do timber rattlesnake stuff. Okay. So I was watching timber rattlesnakes and other non-venomous snakes. And I noticed with my severe hobbyist eyes, uh, I noticed that there was a problem. Yeah. And I was going into, some, in some cases, research sites, protected areas, looking at the rattlesnakes. And I'm like, well, that snake's sick. That snake's sick. First thing is, I'm going to try to talk to the biologists, talk to the researchers. Figure and out go, what's going hey, on. Hey, you got some yeah. problems. They denied it. They denied. They said they're healthy. You don't know what you're talking about. Absolutely. And we became. Mm. Where uh, have we heard that story ever before? Yeah, exactly. We became, in, in some degrees, we became adversaries. Uh -huh. And they would uh, undercut me and talk smack or and try to convince other people that maybe it was my ball python disease. Oh, yeah. I was bringing it to oh, the snakes. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. So about 10 years, and I was looking at it and observing that it created a uh, um, a PowerPoint presentation. I presented it at, at like conservation. Wait, what state was this? Where was this? So you were doing this was, uh, it Carolina. Was, it was no. It was going on in uh, Vermont, oh, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, wow. Connecticut, and New York. Wow. Okay. And I was looking at all these different populations. So what I did is I started um, capturing snakes and taking, or actually snakes that were dying. And I would, if some snakes would actually die, yeah. I would send the samples to USGS. Uh -huh. So I made friends with the guy named Jeff Lorch there. Okay. So I kept on like, Jeff, there's a problem. It's a fungus. It's a fungus. Yeah. And he's like, well, just send the things in. And so they tried to grow it out and they, it was unknown. So the problem was, so when you do histopathology, so you're visually looking yeah. for like the, the attributes of this fungus, they're misidentifying, right. they're calling it aspergillus They're doing whatever. But we really need to plate it out. We need to grow it. And then we need to uh, work on the DNA and do PCR sure, so that. Sure. So at first they couldn't find it, but they kept on getting the samples. And they're like, it's something. We just, we can't do anything. And then they found out that it's a slower growing fungus. And it was being outcompeted by all these other prevalent fungus that were in the samples. Oh, and ultimately oh, they got it. Yeah. They got it like, Kevin, we got it. And uh -huh. it's new. We don't, we've never seen it. And so it's been classified three different times. Now it's called Ophiomyces ophiodicola. Okay. And think about it as a parallel to Geomyces destructans, white nose syndrome in bats. Oh, oh, That's yeah. It's killing okay. all the bats. Yeah, I don't know so the Latin killing, names, but I know white nose, yeah. It's killing uh, colubrids, so it's killing milk snakes and green snakes and garter snakes and water snakes. Yep. But it's also killing. They know uh, what it's from? Snakes. They know what the, the origin of I it is? I would probably say so. I did a peer-reviewed uh, paper where we took corn snakes and we inoculated it uh -huh. with it, and we showed that these animals actually evolved with it. So it's not like an introduced thing. So, so is, these it a, animals, is it climate-related then? Yeah. It's what? quite possibly climate-related. So what's happening, I, I firmly believe in global warming, and I think what's happening is as we're raising the ground temperature, there's in temperate North America, these animals go through the diapause, the hibernation and stuff like that. And when they go to the den and the Good hibernaculums, it, the fungus is there, but when it touches the snake, the snake quickly goes to a temperature below right. where the fungus is reproducing, and then we have this balance. Yep. Now, as the ground is warmer, we're that two degree shift, the is fungus is eating the animal like a refrigerated piece of meat. It has no immune response, and their immune response to it is very uh, primitive. Instead of having antibodies, they release neutrophils, which yeah. actually burn. Oh, wow. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So but, sorry. So back to your original question about the extinction side of it. Uh, no, I'm I'm like I look at things like thylacine yeah. and stuff like that. I I, I just I want to because I get excited about that. It's pretty I'm, exciting. Yeah, but I look at somebody like you. You've kind of given me the crib notes. You you speed along and like, is there hope? You know, that, for a thylacine. Yes. I mean, yeah. We we I think we all Patrick and I Peter too. We've convinced him, but <laughs> I definitely believe that in parts of Western Papua that have never been explored, uh, literally are impenetrable to human beings outside of maybe a small handful of tribal hunters, there are still high, highly possible remnant populations of thylacine. Thylacine yeah. were on that continent, we know about it 
indistinguishably 4,000 years ago. They only just rediscovered the Papuan singing dog, which is a large dog that literally sings and calls out. And they're like, oh, there's huge packs of these things up here. So when I was watching your show, I was always thinking Thiocene Australia. And then I was watching you guys discuss this, and you started talking about the Papua New yeah. Guinea and the highlands where people don't go. That's what I think, stuff. yeah. And I didn't even know that. I didn't yeah. even consider that. So it actually gave me renewed hope. Good. Because I'm always thinking about, you know, taking something from an extinct you know, state and then bringing back to yeah. the whole genetic DNA modification. Yeah. De-extinction. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, which excites me too. Like the, you know, uh, a mammoth or Yeah, or the colossal whatnot. work. I'm working with them a lot as well. And yeah, man. One, one way or another, I, we'll see if that I have a book, How to Build a Dinosaur. Oh, you ever, cool. you ever, you ever no. That? No, I don't He's know. He's talking about, so a chicken egg. Yeah. The, the, what the chicken embryo goes through, it has a tail, it has teeth through part of its development and yeah. then, the then there's it releases it shrinks uh, drops yeah it drops mm -hmm. the tail yep. and then gets rid of the teeth yep. but they're saying it's literally the model for potentially a dinosaur in some case if we can just in you know inject or or crisp right you just in. manipulate what yeah, the, the gene the, reactions yes. do like oh continue right. to grow those teeth make that tail thinner. i want to pitch you real quick here we go kevin i'm going to pitch you a tv show that i'd like to do with you Forrest, you're the Discovery Channel exec. Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, this, is the, this is the executive game. Peter, you're the underling. Okay. I'm okay. the underling. Yeah. Um, so at I've got this at great Discovery or with you? Let's not call it Discovery. Just any yeah, network. At, at blank network. network I did right. some stuff with Discovery. They're not always so uh, great. So I really am excited to introduce you guys to Kevin. Yeah. He's the mad scientist of snake breeding. I'm already um, bored. So anyway, he's got great energy. Some people accused him of being on meth. It's not true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but here's what we're going to do. Uh, it's a four-part limited series. Yeah. Kevin is going to um, take some reticulated pythons. Uh -huh. They're very, very large. Uh -huh. He's going to do his mad science, and he's going to create 100 reticulated pythons that have the venom of a black mamba. Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay. And then that's, what, that's a long road. We're, um, we're, that's like eight generations. I do um, Kevin, I told you not to say that in so, the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do uh, hybridize some animals. So yeah. I've bred some animals that if you look how the, the taxa of them, you would say that they could not breed together and actually have viable offspring, and I've done it. Yeah. And uh, so if you take venomous species and you breed, you intermingle them with you, a chance to create new types of venoms and stuff like that. But you're talking Insane. to reticulated pythons. So all venom is is just modified saliva. And the yep. road to That's get there, I try to hybridize some nominate python with something that's uh, not highly venomous but less venomous to start just that to whole see. thing. Yeah. And, and like fast pace or fast road uh, evolution. Well, let's hear so, let's hear the rest of this well, pitch. So Kevin's just told you the science. He can do it. Uh, he can do we're it. That's what it. I heard out of it. So what did you hear? Is that what you heard? Yeah, that's what These I heard. These reticulated okay. pythons, you know, they're going to be like 20 feet long. Yeah. They're going to be very, very venomous. Yeah. And then we're just going to rig a bunch of cameras, like over a thousand cameras in the subway tunnels of New York City. <laughs> okay. And we're just going to release them and see what happens. Yeah. And the liability for this will be on... It'll be on the network. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, knowing that, and, uh, you know, I, I would say blind yes. I don't okay. see a problem. Blind yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. What's we wrong with 20-foot deadly venomous snakes in the Let's subways of New York? Let's just see what happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to create chaos? <laughs> yes, that's exactly Just I mean, releasing that's good for the TV. snakes and... Uh, yeah, can I, just, can, I, can I interrupt you for one yeah. second? Here's how this meeting would actually go. Is there a love interest in this? That would be the next question. They wouldn't even say that's preposterous. They'd be like, so who, tell me about the cast. Are they diverse? Is there yeah. a love interest? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm buying it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kevin needs more money for more math. That's, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much. Dude, thanks man. for coming, buddy. That, that was really, really interesting. Appreciate it. That was super fun. Thank really you. interesting. I like that. What do you think of my idea? Uh, it's terrible. I, I mean, I like need, the snake. I want to see we one. We need reticulated pythons with venom. We, we do. Just need it. Need them. I learned that might solve the rat problem <laughs> that we're always you talking about. You are the about. rat czar. Yeah, the rat czar problem. <laughs> Ooh, look what we, it looks like I'm, we All right. Mind. Well, this is going to be a fun one. I see someone coming in with a prop. Yeah. Very nice. Get hey, in Jamie. Here. Get Come on here. up. Yeah. Come on up. Jamie Lee Womack. All right. Everybody. So yesterday Jamie we had Dave Womack. on. Hey, Jamie. What's up? How you doing? Good. How are you guys? Who's this? Good. This is Jinx. He Hi, is Jinx. my blue-throated macaw. Hey, He's buddy. about 14. How you doing? 
I've already been bitten by something yeah, else. Yeah, I was on like, stage, he may yeah. not appreciate it. <laughs> no, that. I, that's why I went slowly. Uh, <laughs> this one can fly away. Yeah. But, um, which is, he's more likely to do. So, birds are kind of fight or flight. Yeah. So, if they're fully flighted, they'll just fly away. But if you clip them, then they only have the option to bite you. So, I've tried this every guest except for one that's been on the podcast today. I'm not even going to ask you. Jinx, would you like a beer? Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> how old is how old? What's the parrot's name? Uh, his name is Jinx, and he's 14 years old. 14. And how long will a parrot like this live? He could live upwards of 80 years. Would old. you like to play with this bottle cap? No, thank you. Okay. Don't Bad. hurt her bird's beak. I have some bird safe <laughs> toys over like at my it. booth if you want to see him play with something. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, Jamie, so yesterday we had Dave on. We spent the majority of the time talking about like his wingsuiting with the uh, with the peregrine or peregrine. Yeah, right? Yeah. It was pair. like a, I think it was a hybrid, but yes. Yeah, you were there. I know it was, we were messaging with Dave and stuff. I wanted to, so first of all, obviously, you're Dave's wife. Yes. You guys do shows together. You have a beautiful little daughter. She's not so little anymore. Last time I saw her, she was little. Uh, she's growing, growing up quickly. Tell us a little bit about what you do with the parrots specifically and the birds and yeah. Yeah, so, you know, Dave loves working with people. I, not so much. <laughs> I'm much better with animals. So that's kind of where I go. I work with the animals. And uh, this year I definitely noticed that I was becoming more of a video editor, uh -huh. which was a little bit sad to me and depressing. So I hired a video editor and now I actually get to do what I absolutely love and that's train the birds. So I currently have four what I call project birds, which are birds that come to me under different circumstances that really need help and they can't be rehomed until I work with them and get them to a point where somebody else can then work with them. So I, you know, videotape the whole process. I put it on my Patreon. It also goes to YouTube eventually and people get to learn from my successes and my mistakes and just kind of see how I'm working with these birds because every bird is different. So I can use the same techniques on four different birds and they're all going to respond completely differently. That's interesting. So that's where my passion is. It's really just working with these animals and showing somebody else that like, hey, it's not that hard. It doesn't take that much time. You can do it too. Yeah. Um, these birds are really How much smart. time does it take? Like if you wanted to own a parrot and you want it to be really well taken care of and well trained and all that. Well, are you talking four or five hours a week or? So we're really talking quality over quantity. The yeah. amount of time isn't that important compared to the quality of the time that you do spend. So think about the people that we usually meet are really well intentioned. They want to spend lots of time with their birds. So they're like, oh, I'm just going to have it out like a cat or a dog. The bird gets into trouble. They like to chew things, destroy things. They get annoyed when you try to stop them from doing those <laughs> things. And it just ends up making your relationship go downhill. Whereas the person who's more intentional maybe only spends five minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, you know, an hour in the evening. But they're really dedicated amount of time where they're like, hey, you're having a meal. We're doing a training session. We're doing flight. Those are the people that have better relationships with their animals because yeah. everything's building on something. So, so we just say be intentional sense. and pay attention to the quality. So you just for a second there, his his feathers on top of his head kind of frilled up yeah what was that he got stressed about something or what is nope. that so for him and all of his feathers they can mean pretty much anything so as <laughs> they fluff up it can mean he's totally pissed off or it can mean that he's becoming more content in this context he's becoming more he content. looks he looks like he's chilling out oh, yeah. Good. yeah so you i don't know if you guys can really hear it but every now and then he does like this little beak grinding noise that's a really content noise um, but if he, it was followed with like eye pinning and maybe hunkering down and like looking at Forrest a certain way, I would say, oh, he's getting aggressive. He is looking at Forrest a certain way. He is well, he thinks my shirt is his native home of the jungle. If, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> is it, can I fly through that yeah, window? That's what he's thinking. Um, yeah. So, Jamie, when I, you guys told me something interesting last time we, we all hung out, which was about the celebrities. That you, I don't know if, how much you can talk about that. It's up to you. But you, there are a lot more celebrities, mostly in Hollywood, that have parrots than you would think. Hmm. And Jamie and Dave have done the majority of their parrot training. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we have done some work for celebrities. Um, we don't do it for trade, <laughs> so we can't. Like, we don't typically talk about it or make videos oh, about well, it or I anything that. like that. Well, I blew that. I blew your cover. Uh, Too bad. But we do. Like, we, we work with anybody, to be honest. It's just, like, the people that need help, whether you're a celebrity or not. Everyone needs help. The rescues need help. Um, we just want people to do a better job understanding the body language of these animals so they can do a better job communicating but and they don't end up in rescues. I just find that bizarre. I don't know why. I don't know why I find, a, uh, like, an A-list Hollywood celebrity owning a parrot bizarre. <laughs> but it's not just so much that. It's I just I just, like... I'm certain that if you're a big Hollywood celebrity, you don't have that much time. And no. I feel like birds are the most time intensive pets, which is, well, I don't know. I just I'm, find the whole thing. I'm odd. guessing a lot of them are like, hey, let me get the best parrot trainers. 
and then the parrot's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, right. It's done. I right. Don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, I will say, so one of one of the celebrities that we worked with is an actress, and she actually took her bird along with her on set, and she would take it everywhere with her, tour with her really? on her tour bus. Oh, that's cool. And that bird was the best bird we have come across. Wow. Because it has developed what we've called the noun experience, which is new people, places, and things all the time. So it's exposed to things. And birds are naturally curious. They want to check stuff out. It's when you don't expose them to things and then suddenly right. do that they don't handle it well. So the fact that she actually utilized her lifestyle with her bird was fantastic. It was the one she rescued from a really unfortunate situation and circumstance that didn't do well going into that because it had never been exposed to anything, that it was now hypersensitive. Mm -hmm. It got a lot of anxiety. It just had some some really sad background that she had nothing to do with that was really hard to Dave was saying out. yesterday that uh, very casually, he's like, well, you know, a parrot has the emotional intelligence of a five-year-old human. How do you... That's a, that's a massive statement. How are we... Way. Yeah, how yeah. are we measure like how do you measure that how do you know that so it's because of irene pepperberg she is a scientist and she did a study with alex the gray and uh alex the gray is a famous gray that she did the study with uh, an african gray an african yeah. gray Parrot. and uh Parrot. yeah no. and not she person. was able to do not, not a gray human being <laughs> not a gray yeah, alien. Not a gray no. human. peter it's not a gray <laughs> alien. she has Sorry. some pretty amazing excited. stories where she was able to teach this bird cognitive abilities so like even doing interviews and stuff this bird would be offered five almonds, for example, and she and uh, the bird would be like eight really? and negotiate with her. That's amazing. Um, this bird could communicate that it wanted to go outside. This bird could make up words. So wow. it knew what a cherry Jesus. was and a banana. And then it would make up the word binary for an apple because on the outside it looked like a cherry, but on the inside Love it looked bird. like a banana. Yeah. Wow. So th th that's amazing. That's the most incredible thing I've heard the entire time we've been here. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty amazing animals. Uh, so, go ahead. I, was, I, I could just ask a lot of questions. I, that's all parrot. I'm going to do. I'm yeah. fascinated. <laughs> um, why do birds with high anxiety pick their feathers out? Can you oh. say that again into the microphone, please, Forrest? Why, uh, podcast host <laughs> on your 300th podcast. <laughs> why, Jamie, do birds with high anxiety pick their feathers out? Could you stop throwing things? I just things? dropped my cell phone. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> what a mess. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, feather plucking goes pretty deep it's not a natural behavior for birds to just mutilate their feathers because right. then they can't fly outside right, right? Um, so typically we only see it in captivity we see it because of malnutrition like we just don't feed them right we feed them what we eat that's not great mm. uh, we also see it because we don't offer them any sort of enrichment or anything else to do so when you're They're locked bored. in a cage you got nothing else to do you, just mutilate right. you yourself? start over preening then you start barbering then you start pulling and then it becomes a coping mechanism based on the scenario and environment that you're in and then it's really hard to stop so I hate to draw this comparison but it's kind of like when people cut oh, it becomes self-reinforcing and it's a it's a really bad coping mechanism yeah. basically it's an unhealthy one anyway that's interesting yeah I think I think they were building a tank uh, showing how quickly they could do it, maybe? Yeah, it was a, it was a escape off to see who could make the best looking. Ah, escape. they're having a little co a little contest. Yeah, well, sounds fun. Yeah. So how so you've trained this bird extensively since it was how old? Yeah, so we got Jinx around like four months old, four or so five months old. Fourteen so. years you've been interacting with this bird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a long time. Wh what is like? Is there any scenario in which Jinx would just be like? Yes. Give you a little, <laughs> give you a little cheeky bite. Yeah, there's plenty of scenarios. <laughs> what, what, um, what I, if be? somebody approached me with, you know, something that he didn't like and he didn't have an escape path, I would probably bear the grunt of that. Okay. Um, oh, interesting. If if he was to get very excessively heightened in a heightened state of emotion and just like way overworked up then that could lead to a bite. Um, if he was excessively full on like food and treats and stuff and I'm trying to get him to do something he doesn't want to do yeah. and I just don't stop. There's many scenarios There's in which scenarios he'll bite There's scenarios that you. I can set up where of course I'm going to get bit because I'm, I'm sort of asking for it in a way because I'm not right. set up to be successful. But I will say most people don't recognize those scenarios that they what set What would up. happen if you stuck his face through this part of the chair? Right <laughs> Shut <here>. up. <laughs> what did I bite for? Earl earlier a snake, a snake got earlier. stuck in there and then it bit me. 
Yeah. <laughs> so he it can... was 100% Peter's fault. <laughs> yeah, it was. Jinx can fly, right? Yes, so he can fly. He just did the. He was flying around over there. Did doing you the see him? Show. I oh, saw him no. go up a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in our show that we just did, Dave makes him appear and he does a flight around and comes That's back. Cra- so yeah. That is crazy. We love showcasing flight. Like these animals, he, that's yeah. what makes could them Could you make unique. it fly right now or is that? I could. I don't know that it would go so well in this scenario. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's not attempt it. Again. Yeah, let's not yeah. do it. <laughs> What's so, one more disaster? <laughs> <laughs> one true. more disaster. True, true, true. Better views. Let's go would, for it. Would you tell people that are watching this at home? I, I have a feeling that many, many people that are watching this are like, man, I've always thought about getting a parrot. Yeah. What would you say to those people? Do I would it, say, don't do it, think about it. Like, what I mean, would you I love them, I have them, so Obviously. I feel hypocritical to be like, don't do it. But that's okay. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that you should just go and know what you're getting into. Because a lot of the time, people do not know what they're getting into. So go yeah. to a rescue and see what we do to these birds. Because that is non-natural, how they are there. They're biting, screaming, plucking. None of that is happening you know, out in the wild other than vocalizations, but they're healthy vocalizations, yeah. you know, their communication. Uh, so I think just seeing the damage that we do in rescues and seeing what people are getting into will show you the worst of the worst. And if you can deal with that and you can kind of work within that scenario, it'll give you some experience to go off of, of being like, yeah, you know what? I'm in this. I dig this animal yeah. completely or this is not for me. I'm just going to stop here. Why are there so many cockatoos in rescues? Cockatoos. What's their deal? Oh, cockatoos. Are they all the like Nigel from Rio? They're all just Australian. I and felt jerkish? like that was pretty legit. Really? I did feel like That's that good. was really legit. Um, I will say the white cockatoos, especially from what we have personally seen, because we've seen them in the wild in Australia. Yeah. They're amazing in the wild. I was able to target train a bunch of wild cockatoos. Really? It was super fun. Wow. Yeah. And I loved it. It was an awesome experience. In captivity, though, I just don't think that they thrive as well. They're a naturally more cuddly species, as people will say. So that's uh-huh. why people get them. Meaning they they're cuddle just them. They tend to get excessively hormonal, huh. and then they get aggressive. And oh. they're super hard to manage that way. I saw him, his tongue touched your hair there for a sec. Yeah, he found my rubber band. Um, <laughs> He's like, I could snap this. <laughs> so, like, let's say Dave's out of town. Yeah. You're home with the parrots. Yep. Do you ever find yourself in a conversation with a parrot? And we are just like, whoa, whoa, shit, that was weird. I was just fully <laughs> thought the parrot was a person. I do, you can be keep, I do like have full, complete conversations with them, especially when I'm training, especially when I'm trying to get a bird over fear. I'm usually having a conversation because I'm relaying what I'm seeing out loud. So if I get hesitation, I'm like, oh, why don't you want to do it, buddy? Is it this? Is it yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, is it yeah. the hat? Should I move it further away? Are you cool with that? Will you do it now? So yeah. I do have full That's like funny. conversations. That's essentially what you do with a child. It's exact. Well, it's the exact yeah. same. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. The exact same so thing. and it helps me like be a better trainer as well because then I'm I'm vocalizing what I'm seeing yeah. and then I have to respond to it right because I've said it sense. out loud. Yeah. So uh, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I like it. You getting a parrot? No, because I know that I I don't won't put the work in. Yeah. I don't have the time. Yeah. Right. No. You don't have a quip about him not putting the work in? I felt like that was a perfect layup for you. No, I don't know. I, I, I stopped listening. Let me ask you this first. Ago. Why don't you have a parrot? I have how many birds? And I, I <laughs> don't let Jamie hear this. I hate all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have like 30 chickens, 10 guinea fowl, like six or seven peacocks. They're awful. They're the worst. They peacocks, make nothing but noise. I've heard pretty bad things. Oh my God, they're terrible. And yet, every time somebody's like, oh, I have this peacock, I'm like, Come on, put it in the yard. As, as much go. smack as you've talked about about your birds, yeah, I watched you nurse a little. Uh, what was that thing? What was a that? Swiftlet, a, a cave swiftlet, swiftlet back to health with an electrolyte pack. Yeah, in a very caring wow. and loving way. It was it was very cute. Right, I'm I'm trying to be tough over here. Would you back down? Not with that shirt. <laughs> Tell people. <laughs> Not with that shirt. Yeah, we were in uh, we were in this cave in Vietnam, and uh, you know they have all the swiftlets nesting on the ledges. And there's a baby one that had fallen out of the nest, and it wasn't so small that it couldn't fly. It was just obviously had some form of exhaustion, mm-hmm. and was just like lying there, like oh, yeah. lazily flapping its wings around. And uh, I grabbed the electrolyte packet into out the of mic. My into the mic. <sighs> You're really Billy's bad at yelling this. at me. I've done it so <laughs> many times, and I still don't do it right. Um, I grabbed the electrolyte packet and mixed it in a little dropper and gave it to him. And he like, took a few minutes, and then he flew back up to the nest. It was pretty cool. Aww, I was like, whoa, really that cool. worked. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was cute. I'm yeah. glad that worked out. Yeah. That's the awesome. next one we gave Red Bull didn't go as well. 
<laughs> I'm kidding. That didn't happen. Um, Jamie, hey, thanks so much yeah. for coming on. This is super cool. Thanks, Jinx. Yeah, thank you guys. Bye, he Jinx. was pretty chill this Bye, whole time. So Will I Jinx just it. hang out in your hotel room tonight? No, it's okay. not pet friendly. <laughs> it's not really? a pet friendly hotel. We're here at a not pet, pet animal friendly. Con. So where are you staying? Uh, so they have a custom built trailer where we have like long cages so that their tails don't get all gross and stuff. But oh, okay. Yeah, so they stay in the trailer. It's all the temperature controlled. AC. Yeah, okay. That makes yeah, sense. It has yeah. to be here in Florida yeah, and everywhere so. else that we go. So yeah, they're happily in there, but then I also walk around Animal Con with him so that people can see him and at the meet and greets and stuff. Sure. So yeah. Nice. But yeah. But thank, thank you guys. You. I appreciate it. That was great. It. So come on. It was really fun. Bye, Jinx. Bye, Jinx. All right. Dude, I'm still thinking about the Cuban alligator. Just the fact that it can launch six feet into the air? I mean, I guess that's good for just getting birds. Does it use its tail we, to bounce like we, Tigger? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a that's vertical. That's what I was picturing. Yep, yep that's how it goes <laughs> like this. We, that's going to be used in a battle royale soon, I would think. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, that's a good feature. Jumping gator. Yeah. Um, all right. Well. I see someone coming over. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. This guy was in the hot tub with us last night. Oh, was yeah. He? Hot tub guy? Yeah. What's Come up, on man? in, man. Come on up. Urban Rescue Ranch. Can I have one of these hats? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. What's up, dude? Hey, How hey, you doing? Man. Forrest. Ben. Nice ben. to meet you guys. Hey, Ben. Peter. Hey, we, Patrick hey, we, and we Peter. We met last night. Yeah, we had some hot tub time. It was fun. We talked a lot about uh, cassowaries. Oh, there yeah, you go. Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a cassowary? No, no. My friend offered me one, and I said... I said, what do you think I am, crazy? No, I, you have to feed them so much, you know. It's a lot of fresh fruit. And also, they can kill you. So Yeah, yeah that's can. for sure. You know. So tell us about uh, Urban Rescue Ranch. So uh, I guess it started uh, whenever I was in college, senior year. Um, people just started giving me animals because I was the animal guy. I had chickens and some ducklings. Uh, to See? make a very it's long story It's a gateway drug. Short. Chickens are a gateway drug. Yeah, they are. It is yeah. the gateway <laughs> drug. I, I'd say that to everybody. Um, and then people started giving me baby pigeons that fell out of the nest, uh, baby squirrels, feral hogs that had been like, uh, you know, they, they shot their parents and then their dog went and got the babies and, you know, uh, and then I just started learning before I knew you needed permits for the wildlife, feral hogs, you don't, um, what state is this in? We're, we're Texas, oh, the okay. great oh, state of Texas. Yeah, I was going to guess. Yeah, yeah. Gonna guess. Yeah. So anytime somebody starts stories about hogs. And they don't call them pigs, yeah. it's taxes. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, after that, uh, basically, uh, I started, I graduated and I started working in Austin for a couple years. And this is before the content. Um, but I started uh, taking in ostrich chicks with curled toes uh, and emu chicks with like rye neck, uh, issues like that. And I have about a 70% success rate with uh, taping, the, you know, taking care of them, putting them on the right diet. And then uh, and they'll do pretty well. And I actually initially did that as a way, as a side hustle to make a little bit of extra money because, you know, these farmers will give me these little messed up chicks for free because they're just going to call them. They're going to euthanize yeah. them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So if I can take care of them and, and, and make sure their legs straighten out, and you can very easily with the right diet, giving them niacin supplements um did uh, you know how did you well. how did you figure that out just i just read primary research literature on ostrich chicks i, I oh. majored in sales at, at baylor but i came in as uh, neuroscience and uh god just kind of shifted my direction <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah we were talking and, about that uh, earlier yeah yeah but uh it's funny yeah it's a, it's a whole to make a very long story short uh that's how it kind of started um, and then as I was in Austin, I finally saved up enough to get my own place. Uh, and, uh, and then with that little backyard, I was able to get mentored for wildlife rehab while also taking in other animals like, like, you know, uh, you know, a Rhea that was attacking all the other animals, hmm. uh, on this person's property. And he was just Rhea gonna, like South American yes. ostriches, just no, okay. so you yes. know. Yeah. Okay. They're very cool. I didn't uh, realize how big they were until I was down there a couple years ago. No, they're, they're neat massive and uh and this one particularly was hyper aggressive you have a lot of scars yeah i so, just <laughs> noticed this so he would just yeah. bite me a lot of these are, are you from my kangaroo this? Yeah. this guy has a ton um, of scars but a lot of them are from the kangaroo some of them are from my wildlife but <laughs> um but they so this one rio would just attack me right um and and i just started filming videos of going out and doing my farm tours in my little backyard while he was just constantly you know, and the whole thing was just like, see, guys, you don't have to kill him. Yeah. Just because he's a little angry, you know, he would just be like tearing <laughs> chunks out of my arm. Yeah. And uh, and then, you know, at one point, you know, one of those videos just really popped off on YouTube. Uh, and then we started getting, you know, a million views every video. Nice. And, uh, and then that was right after I had bought this uh, crack house in Waco. 
Um, so wow. uh, that's another long story short thing. I felt like God was calling me to to move up there because there's a big need for wildlife. Have you met our friend there. Kevin? Yeah, <laughs> he's very into meth. Ke- he's in. No. This is this bad is, joke. Never oh, mind. okay, got it. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, keep going. But yeah, so we ended up moving up there. Um, and then, uh, you know, it was a slow process. I like sold my car and I got like a short bus and that was my daily driver. <laughs> and uh, nice and I would move driver. the animals in the short bus. That was the that was the battle bus. That was our rescue vehicle. OK. And um, and then eventually, you know, as we as we started getting set up up there, like taking taking all the you know the meth the, the crack pipes and and uh and uh, like was there actual like yes oh, yeah. wow yeah. underneath in our videos like in, in there's videos of me just like ripping crack. up the subfloor I, and it's like oh syringes <laughs> like, yeah. gnarly. And, and i didn't know anything about construction but i did all of it just by asking the followers like guys please <laughs> <me> please <laughs> and i would i would like i'd spend the weekends there and like sleep in like a in like a bunk bed with a mosquito net draped over it and huh. um, oh, man and so and and then so we we got a really awesome loyal fan base from that because they saw like as i was like living there also that you know we were making the places for the animals nicer than the actual house yeah, yeah right um and uh and then you know my baby kangaroo that was an orphan from a meat farm and another thing is that people in texas they hunt and eat um Everything. ostriches kangaroos Everything. yeah people you can shoot a kangaroo uh or a zebra on a high fence ranch in texas right capybaras you can hunt <laughs> in texas that's bananas um, uh, and, 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 and like that's so what's wild. what's more yeah. typical yeah. though is like black buck antelope yeah fallow deer axis deer sika deer all that so I'll also get um, black bucks that are uh, orphaned that like they, they were born on a livestock trailer during transport. And uh, my, my son, Patrick Bateman, uh, is a black buck that, uh, that w- <laughs> when they let them all out on this hunting ranch, uh, the moms ran out, like the females ran out. And then he was just sitting in there because he had just been born, like still with the sure. amniotic fluid on yeah. him. And, yeah, yeah. Huh. So Patrick Bateman. you mentioned that yeah, you, some of your yeah. scars are from your kangaroo. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've recently got into a debate on our social media with, do you know who John Jones is, the MMA fighter? No, but, oh, yes, yes, I yeah. do, I do. Yeah. So he's a badass John heavyweight Jones. UFC mm-hmm. fighter. And we released a video debating whether John Jones could take a kangaroo in an MMA full fight. full-grown red mm-hmm. kangaroo. And, and we said the kangaroo would, Kick his would, ass. Would, would smash him. He got, he got gnarly. He was like, nah, he, he, out, he laid out his whole plan of how he would take a kangaroo. He literally said, set Bro, this fight up and I'll send take him over. the kangaroo. We've already got a uh, debate. His name's DeBaby is my kangaroo. Uh-huh. He's already set up to fight Jake Paul. Uh, okay. Even though I don't think Jake Paul will actually do this, he verbally agreed on multiple occasions <laughs> to come. We have, we have video evidence of this. Well, John, John uh, Bone Jones would kill Jake Paul. Perfect. And so, j- yeah. I, well, wait a minute. No, never mind. No. <laughs> I think DeBaby could take Jake Paul. I don't know if he could take that's, 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 John that's Bone that's Jones. Question. So what are your scars from, though? Like it just gets gnarly so, and it kicks you or whatever? Yeah, people think the kicks are what will get you, but it's not the kicks. You know, he could kick me. Like he'll get me, he'll get me in the – the nether regions and that'll you know that'll knock me out sure not really though uh the thing is his claws you know they've got biceps and triceps that yeah. are strong you know yeah. yep. like you know and he can just grab on and he won't let go until he's scratched you know and these are these aren't that bad there's sometimes whenever you know i'll go to the gym and people will think that i'm like <laughs> a murderer because <or> <laughs> i've just got scratches all over my arms but are You're like, don't worry, it's just a kangaroo. I got I a thing I with won't a kangaroo. Com- I won't yeah. comment yeah, on that. Right. <laughs> oh, no, I just got in another fist fight with my kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's uh, the most uh, exotic or interesting animal you have on your, at your rescue? That's a really good question because, it, it, you know, all of them I've, I've interacted with every day. Like that kangaroo I've spent every day with for the mm-hmm. last, you know. And when we had the freeze in Texas, like, I, would, I had to, like, bring him inside and sleep like every night with him because it was <laughs> there was like 40 degrees in the house you yeah. know and he was a baby hmm. um and uh, we had no electric and uh but i don't know man honestly i i think uh they're all equally pretty out there mm-hmm. uh, people love the capybaras the most mm. but i wouldn't say they're more exotic than a bria no sure. i would no. agree so i i'm really interested in your rescue is a little bit different from others where you have a sustainable agriculture component to it. Mm-hmm. Can you explain that? So uh, by sustainable agriculture component, I just mean uh, 
uh, we we do farm sanctuary, and I also show people like, hey, you can you can breed I am Chimani chickens. You know, you can have like side hustles where you're breeding like a rare breed of chickens. You're just hatching eggs. Everybody does it, right? Um, and uh, with those, or hatching an ostrich egg or something like that. And then the, with the money that you get from that, right? And there's there used to be good money in it. Everybody started doing it, so there's no money in I am Chimani's anymore. Um, <laughs> But, you I know, let's you. say with the ostrich eggs, we hatch the ostrich chicks. You know, if we rehome those to people, right, uh, we can take the money from that and put it directly towards the wildlife rehab. So now I'm a permitted certified wildlife rehabber. And, um, you know, and that that never makes you money. right? No. Yeah. The government doesn't pay me. You know, we don't have grants. Um, and uh, even though we're, we're through the state, the state doesn't give us any funding, yeah. right? So you actually lose money wildlife rehabilit with rehabilitation. And I don't solicit donations yet. So, um, <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, wait I'm waiting until my house is done. I don't want people to be like, I don't want to be asking for donations and then be like, here's my new living room. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. But I, yeah. I, I, I've been living in the crack house point. for two years now. Wow. Um, now I'm finally building something that's a bit bigger and the crack house is just going to be the office. Are you calling it the crack house? Is that it's what you're It's a crack home it? now. The that's crack a crack home. That's what it says. <laughs> He's got dish towels. Yeah. 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 He's got a home sweet home sign. So, all right. So, Texas, there's all sorts of shit that needs rescue. You get a call. Someone's like, look, man, this guy couldn't take care of his tiger. It's getting euthanized in two days. Can we bring it over to you? Can you figure it out? Tiger? No. I have like 20 people I could also call immediately gotcha. and be like, hey, can you take this tiger? Like I'm friends with Cameron Park Zoo, which is 15 minutes from me. And then a lot of other people that have good facilities. Um, now, if someone says, you know, we have a baby kangaroo, we have a blind kangaroo, we have all these other things, it's like, sure, you know, within reason, I'll take what's necessary. But I also have to realize, like, these are my, I, I have one person helping me out. Right. Um, and yeah. I'm doing everything, the filming, the editing, I do it all on my phone. So, so Damn, sorry, dude. Yeah. So, so you do all lot. this on your phone and it's a YouTube channel primarily? Yes, sir. And that's, is that where the funding for the crack home and the sanctuary and everything's coming from? Is that how you're doing it? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. That's, that's all of it. It's Very just the admirable. YouTube ad revenue. And, and we started with TikTok, but TikTok doesn't pay you jack diddly squat. Yeah. So <laughs> they do now, though, apparently, with minute videos. Gotcha. So. Yeah. Okay. That's but awesome, that's, dude. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's cool that enough people can form a community around it to help yeah. support it and watch it grow and be emotionally and actually invested in it that's awesome yeah. i'm very very thankful we have that's we really, have great really followers cool. what uh what crops do you grow because I, I like the sustainable farming side of it so what actual like things well, do you grow i meme around with with pumpkins and stuff i'm gonna have a big pumpkin orchard we also have some bees so i do i do beekeeping i'll sell the honey eventually Dude, like, but uh very interesting do a lot of stuff yeah, so yeah we, it's basically minecraft everything you can do in minecraft <laughs> we have that was the whole meme from the beginning was like see guys it's just like minecraft like i'd be in the crack house with like <laughs> like breathing in like black mold and i'd be like it's just like minecraft it's just like minecraft <laughs> so <laughs> But it's true, you know, eventually we'll get an axolotl and I think we'll have everything you can have on there. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why did you say eventually we'll get an axolotl? That was because so that's, a mi that's a Minecraft. Oh, oh okay. okay. Gotcha. I didn't so get that. you got that's some geese? Uh, yeah, I had some and then I, I gave them to somebody that has a bigger, better place. Because they're terrifying. Uh, yeah. You ever one, take a goose bite? I had one named Donald Trump and another one named Obama. <laughs> Uh, and they which were both, was the nice one and which was the mean one? They were both, well, when Donald Trump lost his old mate, which was a mean one, and then he went through a period of mourning, which they do okay. uh, after they lose a mate. And, uh, and he was just abandoned downtown in the river, you know, like on public water. You can, okay. just, you can just take the ducks if they're abandoned on public water and they're domestic. <laughs> um, and uh, so we took him in and then another like after he was like mourning in the corner, you know, and there was an exact moment in one of our videos where we brought another one from a seas where somebody was going to jail and we, you know, they, they had to get rid of all their animals. Mm. Um, we, we took that. I'm going female. to jail. Will you take my goose? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the second we introduced her to him, he just perked up and then oh. they just immediately he, he immediately Ob showed her where the food is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But now uh, they're at like a great big lake where somebody's taking great care of them. And they're still awfully evil creatures that want to kill you. <laughs> yes. They are. I mean, tell me I'm wrong. No, I actually they're had mean a, as shit, right? I had a horribly traumatizing experience. My brother's right there and he could tell you that uh, I was traumatized by a goose at a young age. So what it, it uh, knock you down? Yeah. Come at you. No, it, it chased me into a creek. <laughs> and just kept pecking me. Oh, I would have oh, loved man, to have witnessed that's this. Terrifying. <laughs> me too. If this was someone else's child and not my own, I would love to watch it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 
wheezing laughing. Yeah. And it's oh, your yeah. kid and it's a travesty. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that you experienced that trauma. I it's okay. I forgive you. I forgive it. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How big is the uh, the urban rescue ranch? Three acres. Three so acres. Uh, we, we, there's some abandoned Hence lots next urban. door, and there's a big 300-acre lot behind us. But we are five minutes from downtown. Um, so downtown Austin? Uh, Waco. 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 I could not afford three acres in Austin. Yeah, That's Austin. what I'm saying, bro. When I, I got in a very lucky time with my house when I sold it. Uh, between that and, you know, I, had, I was in tremendous debt. And uh, I felt like God was telling me to quit my job and trust in him for the income. The day I finally quit, the next day I get all these texts from my friends. Literally the day I quit, the next day all my friends text me saying, bro, you're on trending next to Mr. Beast. And it was a YouTube video that I posted three weeks prior that had gotten no traction at all. And I'd never had traction on YouTube. That was just boop. Wow. You know? cool. and, it, and it was just a horrible and low was, effort. What, 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 what was low the effort content? Video. It was just uh, uh, how to survive a Rhea attack. <laughs> you know, and, that was just, and it was just Sounds me doing like my farm title. chores. Yeah, it's a very it was just title. me going through doing my farm chores and Kevin attacking me. And um, <laughs> and that's how it happened. So, so His bird's name is Kevin. By the end of that month, <laughs> great. Um, and I, I was nervous about quitting my job, right, because it was a work from home job and it's a corporate job, you know, and and, um, you know, but but at the same time, I was like I was taking time from my employer. Right. I wasn't doing you know, there was a culture during COVID of like, let's just be on Facebook all day, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, which, which happens. And uh, when I did quit, you know, uh, by the end of that month, I had made my Oracle salary in a month. And by the end of that year, the entire property uh, and everything had been paid for. Wow. And then a year from that exact date that I quit, uh, we hit a million subscribers. Um, wow. Dude. And now I think we're at 2.7 something. So, for you, man. so what's the uh, like 10 years from now is the plan like? You know, do you more see crack like, houses. You got a hundred. Yeah, more range. crack. More crack houses. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, so uh, we're gonna start a uh, uh, eventually a location in Indonesia. Oh, wow. um, and uh, where you know how they have those wet markets where you know uh, they'll very be, there will be like thirty owls and a little. I was just there a couple of weeks ago, uh, and this is something I wanted in to Jakarta? do. Jakarta. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in Happy. Bali, but Jakarta's are way worse. Oh, trust yeah, me. Yeah, and Sumatra's are r pretty bad too. Um, the animal market in Jakarta is unlike anything I've ever seen. So, so b basically, um, what I can do with my knowledge now that I'm a certified wildlife rehabber, it's just giving fluids. Ninety percent of what we do, give fluids and feed, to yeah. feed all that. Um, we can go there uh, with less money, have more of an impact with no permits. Um, get these uh, owls that are being, you know, there's half of them are dead in the cages already. It's terrible. Um, and then just rehydrate them, get them back, you know, teach them how to hunt again, and then take them to a place where they're not uh, ideal, you know. And hopefully, like, with our nonprofit, where we would have ideally an Indonesian on the board, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we can buy land yeah. and then preserve it and then have the animals either on there or release them in a conservation area, cool. right? Um, so it would be an interesting way to do that and then also promote conservation while also directly helping animals and doing it for a heck of a lot less money. Right. Also, sure. I saw a monkey for sale for $60, and that was the white boy price. That was the, oh, look at this white boy. Yeah, He's going to yeah. pay yeah. double. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. so like the, the idea that, that uh, here, right over there, those monkeys are worth 25 grand, right? Oh, yeah. So it's like if people are paying 25 grand, that's what they said. So if people are paying 25 grand for a monkey there, you know, and you could get one for $60 over there, you could help a lot more monkeys. Yeah. You could also take them back to the but, wild. But here's my here's my debate on that and i i'm not trying to throw you under the bus here mm -hmm. but i'll put you in the hot seat let's see aren't you fueling the trade now no yeah for sure it's the same kind of thing as those guys that go out and they're like yeah let's buy like 10 dogs we're rescuing dogs from the dog meat trade in this place and they buy a bunch of dogs and it's like, right. well, what are you going to do with those dogs and now those guys have a, a lot more money to go get more dogs exactly right. yeah exactly so so how uh, do you balance that yeah the, the balance is you know it's you first off you could go out and give them a bunch of money, right? Or a little bit of money in American dollars and you're helping the animals, right? Uh, you could also just do nothing and then these animals will die and then no content is being made and no animals are being helped and no conservation effort is being made in, in that place at least, right? So I, I'd be interested in hearing some perspective alternatives to how you can help the situation. But I also think that through creating an organization there, especially an NGO that yeah. is that with Indonesians there, then you can also create reform. And it's already happened in Thailand. Correct. They don't do that in Thailand anymore. They used to have horrible wet markets in Thailand. Now they don't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the way that you change things is you go in there and you start 
with compassion and doing something good. And then you get to broadcast that and show everyone, hey, this is what actually happens. And then once the government gets enough of a push and they start to realize like, oh, this actually would be like Thailand, where they say, oh, this actually would be better if we stop people from like you. I have a video recently. And they do great stuff. Indonesia, they, the government does some good stuff for mm. animals. Like they can serve the sea turtles. We helped out with releasing sea turtles at a site. We yeah. saw Komodo Island. It was, kind of, it was kind of a. It was mostly like just a tourist trap. You know. It didn't used to be. Not when I no, went. It's when real I went, bad, there was dude. nothing there. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. I have just a video. Handed, you get handed a broomstick, and they're like, "Don't die." <laughs> now, <laughs> when did God, you go? Yeah. Oh, like 15 years ago. Yeah, dude. Now I have a video uh, where it's like I fed a sea turtle to my prairie dog. I also na that's what I name all my videos just to get some little clicks. It's a, it's a bit of a meme. Got it. Uh, but anyways, in that video. Uh, you can see what Komodo Island is actually like and when the tourists go it's literally just like dozens and do like 30 to 40 people all crowding around one Komodo I oh, dragon that's just so they can get a picture hear. and then the park rangers are just photographers that are just like hey 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 get get back get further away and then they just <laughs> take pictures at a right angle but I just filmed like oh, everybody you're kidding. all standing around yeah that's so interesting it couldn't have been more different when I went it was like we stayed on Bintang Flores, which is the island, big island near to Komodo. Uh -huh. And there was one boat that you could get like every three days to take you over there cool. if they had enough fuel. Yeah. And then they took us over there and you get off. And there were rangers and stuff, but they hand you a broomstick and they're like, here are the rules. Don't wear red. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't get too close. And they're like, we'll pick you up tonight at six. That's and cool. They just that's like, wild. And, yeah, and, I think uh, you can still that do it. that now. I know it's changed a lot in the last like four years. Apparently since COVID, it's gotten worse. Yeah, um, interesting. But that's what people said. Uh, but at the same time, now you can still, I think, but you have to pay a little extra. You got to pay a lot extra to get that like personal. You can go at night and herp at night with like yeah, just some yeah, guys. Yeah. We yeah. did all that. There was cool. no, and there was no, reg I mean, it, literally, if I'd been like, I want that Komodo dragon, you would have been like, man. <laughs> Go yeah, ahead. He, yeah, know. just go ahead. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Now, but. yeah. Now they're if you take a shell from the island, they're like, give me that. I oh, want, really? I want it. Yeah. Oh, no. Wild. It was a very I mean, I I wrote about this in my book and stuff. It was a whole different experience then. There well, was no a lot hospitals. Happens in 15 years, man. Yeah, That's crazy. it was crazy. There's no hotels. There's only homestays. You had to sleep on someone's floor. It was like a whole That's different so cool, thing. Though. Yeah, it was a whole different thing. Yeah. Ben, well, really cool having yeah. you on, man. Thank you so Dude, much. Good super luck. Interesting. Yeah, Good luck. Man. You know, hey, I'll buy more tonight. crack houses. Yeah, like, of course. Why I'm not? I'm not actually going to steal this from you guys. Why? It's yours. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, really. Can I have that one? W which one? Uh, the okay, fat tire one's committed already. Somebody, <laughs> somebody got it already. Thank you, brother. I really right, appreciate it. You're welcome. It. See you, buddy. Take care. That was cool. Yeah. That was cool. Pat said that he's heading back to LA. He'll see us on. on yeah, Monday. he's the worst. I I hope he never returns. Um. <laughs> We got uh, All right. Jay. No, this is good. This yeah. is good. Jay's Jay's definitely one of my best friends here, so I'm very excited about this. Jay, get up here, bro. Come on. Who is this skinny guy pretending to be Jay Brewer? Jay Brewer. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How you doing? I learned how to push the table away. All right, here's what, here's what we got to do. We got to tell people listening at home the story that we always tell when we're together, which is that uh -oh. first TV show story. Oh, that's right. Because it's really funny. So. First of all, there's nobody on the internet that's interested in animals, including every single person that watches who knows. Who, everybody knows who Jay is. You know who Jay <laughs> yes. is. Right? Prehistoric pets. Jay's huge. He does the coolest stuff with big snakes, gators at his place. To t explain your place a little well, bit, the reptile I mean, zoo. My place is really a small place, but it's a cool place. And it's a place that I built literally from animals, getting different animals and things that I love that I want people to be able to come and check out and interact with, because I like the interaction part of animals. I'm just edging the microphone. There we go, whoa, whoa, whoa. There whoa. You go. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, it's, it's, you know, it's an interesting place. Yeah. And I think he's gonna tell a fun story, a fun story, I'll jump ahead of him. Go um, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Naked and Afraid here. <laughs> was when we were, had a, we were working on a reality show. I was, I had a reality show that we were working on, and that's where I actually met for us is he showed up one day as a co-host to be on, on a show that we're going to work together Yeah, let me on. explain it. Can I explain it yeah, all? Yeah, you're all right. on it. So if anybody that is watching or you guys in the audience know my story, I was just a biologist and then I did Naked and Afraid and then there was like a three-year gap in which I met Patrick and Extinct or Alive was born and everything else. During that three-year gap where I was like, oh, how are we going to figure out, how am I going to figure out how to communicate like wildlife to the masses this is I, I still don't really know what youtube is but like before youtube tv shows all that stuff um i was trying to figure all this out and the same production company that made naked and afraid renegade 83 
guy there named Randy gives me a call and he goes, hey, you, want, you still want to do wildlife TV and like show wildlife and how cool snakes and animals are? I was like, of course. Snake and Island. Yeah, Never, that that, they were going to start off with taking us to Snake That's Island. Right, in Brazil. That's right. right. Anyway, this guy Randy calls me and he goes, hey, come on down to L.A. I'm going to introduce you to this guy named Jay Brewer, the reptile zoo. We got a show. And you know, like Pat, you can speak to this. You know, a producer like I got no info. They just right. knew I was an en enthusiastic and excited. So I knew nothing. Yeah. And they're just like, get down. You're going to love it. And I was like, OK. <laughs> yeah. And I roll down. I meet Jay. We hit it off immediately. And, and I get fed the story and the lines and everything else. And the story is this. It's pretty funny. Jay owns the reptile zoo. This is all real, of course. And he is the number one cool, crazy snake guy in the world. OK. And I'm like the field biologist, young hotshot, like maverick. Okay. And Jay is going to have all these sultans and celebrities and all these bigwigs come to him and go, I want the world's largest anaconda. I want the most venomous spitting cobra. And then you got to go catch it. And Jay sends me to go and get them. Right, ah. which was the part of the show that we were like, no, nah, that ain't going like, to work. We yeah. don't, I don't <laughs> go, these, these people don't come to me because I go capture wild snakes and put them in a box and ship them to people right and they do it because i have the i have some of the coolest giant pythons and different things and so i was telling them we need to change that narrative a little bit and it, it was a fun anyway we didn't get the show because of because it was too controversial I was and of course like, no, it was I'm controversial because it was we were it's so controversial we don't want to do that no we didn't right. want to do that <laughs> but it was fun i got to meet jay then and there and he got to let me handle everything and we had a really fun time and then we've been friends that was like that was 10 years ago yeah the funny part was is i when i was sitting there they were you know having stewards basically shooting a sizzle reel trying to wrap up a show finish up it was beyond the sizzle reel but it was it was so funny because i'm i don't do anything scripted i i can't you you, you just got to tell me what basically what you want it to be about and i'll do it i'll do a great job and forest here can like you give him a book and he'll read a whole page and you'd think he worded it like every single word perfectly. And then they put me Did on the other side that? of it and I'm like, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this guy's like more than a trained professional. He's born I've to do it. I've never done it in my entire life. That's what life. I mean. He's yeah. like born for it. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> he's a textbook in his brain when he just reads that page. And it was I was just so opposite. And it was so funny because I had... I had the person that brought me into the show idea, and she got really mad at the producer because she's like, quit putting so much pressure on my my talent. Yeah, and I yeah, was like, yeah. calm down. I mean, just, I, I just, and so eventually he learned how to use me, and then he's like, wow, you're good. And I'm like, I just am natural. If you just have to let me be me, and we'll make this work. And but now, funny. and now, thankfully, you can be you, and you have a really cool show on Roku. Yeah, and yeah. You've, uh, you, since then, of course, You've done all kinds of amazing shows. A lot of TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so we just got a new Roku show. Uh, it's on. It's called Reptile Royalty. And I gotta say this line: streaming free on Roku. There you go. <laughs> got it. <laughs> you got funny. it. That's in. their line. That's their catch tag. You fulfilled your contract. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. You're yeah. good. Tell us about uh, the zoo. Tell us what's going on. What's new? Uh, Where, where is are it? the big snakes? Where is your place, Jay? Big snakes are doing good. I'm. Uh, getting ready to do a lot of traveling. I'm kind of excited about it. I'm going to go to the Philippines. I'm going to go back to Dubai, Saudi Arabia. That's kind of like going home. It's uh, Fontina. Is that where it is? What's the name of the it, town? Uh, uh, I'm in Fountain Valley, California. Fountain Valley. Fountain yeah, Valley, it's yeah. in Orange County. I mean, pretty 10, 15, 15 minutes from Disneyland for the. So wait, what? It, so you go to Dubai a lot. What's the reason? Is just people want snakes there? I'm sorry. You said you go to Dubai a lot. Oh uh, yeah, I just ha I go to Dubai. There's a lot of people that have their own private zoos, and it's a big thing in Dubai. It's, private yeah, zoo I thing. mean they have their own zoos, and you know I say private, but they they have other families come, and it's an incredible place to visit. I get a, I mean, I've literally my hashtag living the dream is the concept of of that I'm started out this poor orphan kid that ends up in palaces and some of the most amazing places on earth and i just i don't it's hard to wrap my head around it because i say living the dream because like i had my dreams but it got so far beyond my imagination that it's like undreamable it's unthinkable mm. and i mean I, I just i wish i could explain some of the stuff i've been able to do in my life i mean yeah it's it's insane one time i went to a country and they took me to this football field sized place and i'm not allowed to say where or what but 
they proceeded, I was the only person, they proceeded to have 150 animals perform with 150 plus trainers. And I was, it was just for me. <laughs> How do you dream up stuff wow. like that? I mean, it's like, it's beyond bizarre, you it know? Is. It's wild. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, you look at the, some of the stuff you've done in your life. It's yeah, it's thanks, insane. man. It's insane. It's fun. I now mean, we get Galapagos to Island, go find a tortoise that doesn't exist. With that guy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yep. it's just like, how do you describe that? Uh, it's hard to. It's definitely hard. Yeah, to I mean, it's just, then, you know, so I just put it in three words, living the dream. There you go. <laughs> there you is, go. That, is that true that you were, you, you were an orphan? I, I actually was orphaned. I, I started out adopted, and then I was, or, I basically, my mom had, my adopted mom had passed away when I was four because we, a long story, but we were really poor. And uh, at 14, my dad drank himself to death. And the part in between there is too miserable to talk about. Got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, it's okay because I will tell you that. I you am, have such a strong family I life am now, who I am because crazy. of those trying times. And, and I just, I, now I look at problems like, wow, something cool's coming. I look at it the opposite. You know, they, Right. You know, you can all use that whole saying, you know, what, if you want to grow, want to grow something, you got to put what on it? <laughs> Fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. You know? And so life has been like sometimes life's rocks are kind of the building blocks for your future. And I, I so it's been an amazing time for me. And I just had a grand do- uh, oh, grand, I, was I just to, had a grandson I was about to do the yesterday. I was about to- <laughs> Congratulations. Shay just had his first grandson yesterday. Oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. He found out late last night. Give him a round of applause. That's yeah. awesome. He's I'm so happy. I'm pretty excited. I'm He's really so excited. Happy. Lewis. Yeah, Lewis, an eight eight pound. I should know the ounces, but I was I waited all night for the how much it weighed and I how much he weighed. And uh, it's it was experience. Even even that. I mean, we were my daughter was told you'll never have children. I told my daughter every time it ever came up in topic. That is baloney. I'm not going to use the real word. <laughs> uh, we, do, we do. I'll do it for you. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And I said, who are you? Who is he? Who's the doctor that tells you this? He's nobody. Yeah. You know, I mean, no offense, but he's nobody. You're speaking Peter's language. Yeah. yeah. You're getting Peter all red. Yeah. And yeah. so, and so uh, I just, doctors. you know, and said, know. here we are. <laughs> we have a beautiful baby. And uh, sorry, Mr. Doctor, but you didn't know anything. And, and I've I found that a life story nobody so does. many times, like over yeah. and over. I've heard that story. If I, if I listened to one-tenth of the people that told me I'd never make it, mm. I couldn't keep tr- – I'd never be able to even hold that much data in my mind. You were yeah. saying that yesterday when we were up on the uh- – I, I literally – I'm the poster child. I was – you know, I, I was – today's world, to be honest, I would have been, I would have been aborted. I, everything was wrong, right? Mm. And then I had learning disabilities, and I had, like, t- not a good childhood. And I still got to say, thank God I had a chance. Right. <laughs> right. You know, I may not bring everything to the world, but I bring what I think is important. It's important. You, know you do mean? a really good job. And, and, and it, it, I just think of all the, I just think of it as an, I was given an opportunity and I just think that we all want a chance, right? Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I, it's good, did, dude. Did you get uh, bit by a 20 foot python? Oh, nope. no. You didn't? Are you talking about which 20-foot python? Yeah. Well, there's a, there's an actual real 20-foot python story, and I guess I'll just go there. Do it. Yeah, you so do it. when I was, so about, I don't know, I was about 10 years into reptiles hardcore, like breeding them, and I had a breeding facility, and I had this friend of mine that was like the, you know, like had his first dollar saved in the bank. His whole life was on a piece of paper. A little bit different than me. Yeah, right? Right. <laughs> Perfect everything and i got i walk in my building and he's gonna meet me for lunch he's never been late a day in his life and i decide oh i'm gonna finish feeding my snakes well i feed this old 20 foot plus burmese python and it grabs itself instead of the rabbit because it's a little bit senile right mm-hmm. okay. and i'm like oh poor old snake i open the thing to go take the, to offer it a different rabbit and it comes off and just hits me right in the <coughs> oh, private parts no and I'm thinking to myself, Yikes. this is the most embarrassing thing in the world. Wolf. I got a 20-foot python. I can barely breathe because it feels like I got drop kicked. It must oh. have hurt By like a hell. Super Bowl yeah. star, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm rolling around the ground, and I'm thinking to myself, my friend's going to be here any minute. It's going to be the most embarrassing moment in my life. I got to get it off, <laughs> right? And I'm rolling around the ground. Like, a minute later, I'm thinking, where's my friend at? <laughs> yeah. like, Another minute later, yeah. I'm thinking, 
holy cow. Yeah. And it's like teeth are caught in my Levi's. Oh. Right it's still on that my it's, yeah, it's personal it. parts. <laughs> and I am literally. Patrick doesn't like snakes. This and I, I have so no arm strength yeah. whatsoever. But luckily my legs are strong enough to keep it from wrapping me. And I'm like four minutes in. And I'm like. Four minutes may not sound like long, but ask him about what four minutes feels like when you're done breathing underwater. Oh, yeah. No, that's, a, that's an eternity. That is an eternity. It's an eternity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I, you know, I'd like to think I'm exaggerating on four minutes, and I probably told the story in the beginning. I was ten minutes on the ground. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but literally, and he finally comes in, and I got him off, just got the snake put away, and he looks at me and goes, God, you look horrible. What's up? Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, should I even tell him? No. And no. I'm thinking... I'm going to tell yeah, him. Yeah, you got and he, it. And I'm like, when have you ever, I, I start yelling at him, when have you ever been late? And he goes, I know, I've never been late in my life. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just figured you're always late, so you, you would be late. You know? And so he ended up apologizing. And every time we tell the story, he goes, I've never been late since. <laughs> but anyway, so that was a, that was a, the best 20-foot snake story I could ever get. It's a good one. <laughs> That's wild, dude. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, snakes bite once in a while. You yeah. Mean, you're, That's the I've seen so many of your videos where a 16 18 20 whatever foot retic or berm is lunging out at you i mean you yeah. you get this every day this is every day in your life yeah and you know what's funny welcome to social media it's every day i t I, I pull eggs from these snakes and half of them are like sorry can you explain that for our yeah, audience I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting like i'm why the, into the eggs it. and the whole thing yeah like why so, you're doing it so i breed i i breed i i got into my hobby real deep when i started getting into weird genetics because I've literally been able to produce about 300 snakes that have never been seen on Earth. And then when I say that, they're all reticulated pythons, but they have a different pattern and a different color. So all of a sudden you get a striped snake, a yellow snake, and a snake that has high red and another snake that has a high another color. And you start overlapping these, you get all these different combinations. Now they're all reticulated pythons, so I'm not inbreeding them or anything like that. And, of course, reticulated pythons are killed for their skins. At the time when I started, they were brought in for pets on a regular basis. And I thought, well, we can't take them out of the wild forever. Why not just breed them in captivity? I mean, I go to the supermarket and I buy chicken. I go, you know, I do all, you know, he goes fishing. You know, I mean, I go fishing. And so I just thought, why not just let them breed in captivity? And I got really deep into it. So that's what the snake thing is going on. And a lot of times those snake eggs are full of world's first, never been seen before animals. So, but to explain it, so he has these 20 foot snakes, incredible, super color morphs, everything. Largest ones in the world, actually. Largest in the world, which wow. I didn't know. And they lay these big clutches of eggs, right? Then he has to go in and extract those eggs to put them into incubators. He kind of just leave them because they'll get crushed and messed up and everything else. And about every 10th mother has forgotten that it's been captivity and that I grew it up from a baby and I'm the good guy, <laughs> and which so every good mom would want to do, right? Who's this guy <laughs> taking my eggs? Yeah, yeah. You could do the math from there on out, a 20-foot snake that's capable of eating a 150-pound prey item. Right. <laughs> and then you see, like, I mean, he, he just said it, but you see Jay going in to take eggs away from a mother that's like, I don't think so. Yeah. And it's like this purple <laughs> neon blue snake that's 20 feet long, and this thing's just like, mouth open shooting at him and jay's like plucking <laughs> and, and it looks Daintily. and it looks hostile yeah. but the real hot the real truth is i'm letting her burn her natural born you know energy on me so that i can then just gently remove her from the eggs instead of grabbing her by the neck like i did the first clutch wrestling and her. wrestling her around and possibly popping vertebrae and popping eggs and and i just learned that if i just let her burn her nervous energy and so you could say be willing to take it for the team that I could have a super high success rate on the eggs. You know, all of a sudden, you know, I mean, I'm literally playing with eggs that they're, they were honestly, some of them, not that it's about money, but some of those eggs were $10,000 a piece. Mm -hmm. And that's not wow. why I would yeah. willing to take it to the team because even if it's a normal snake, I don't, you know, if it could be a $10 snake, I don't, I want the egg to survive. I want the mother to be fruitful in what she wanted to do. Right. And a lot of people are like, well, why would you even breed a snake in captivity? Well, I think that letting a snake do its full life cycle is natural, and I think that the, that when you take away the ability to have babies and nurture life, and I just think you're taking away the, some of its, like, what an animal's about. Sure, yeah, it's natural You know it's what I mean? I just want it to do yeah. its own cycle, and so that's what I do it for, and that's why I do it. And, and uh, like I was saying earlier, is those snakes aren't all aggressive. A lot of them are just 
I pull them off and hold them and those videos never get popular, but it gives the, the people that get caught by the snake striking end up going in learning the backside and, and getting to learn a lot about animals. And that's the part that makes it really rewarding. I just wish that was the front part that I could pull everybody in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jay, what's the one animal that you've never kept at the zoo that you wish you had or oh, wish you could? Komodo a dragon. Komodo I mean, dragon. End of story. I mean, I've, I've had some such amazing encounters in Komodo with Komodo dragons. It's just, it's like stepping back in time. Have yeah. you been to Flores Island near Komodo? I didn't go to Flores. I went okay. to actually, uh, what do they call it? Uh, there's, oh gosh. What's the name of the main island? Uh, I went to Bintang Flores and then went from Flores to Komodo. Okay, Komodo. I went to Komodo, and but there's there's I, they they call it like Site One, I think is what they call it. Of the four islands that have Komodo dragons. Yeah. In there? Oh, I don't remember. So, anyway, I think names, they call yeah. it Site One. But anyway, I went to two different islands, and one of them just had like three giant Komodo so dragons, cool. and I got some incredible experiences. Some I always say living the dream because things happen that just seem impossible. I was walking the beach and I saw this giant big eel on the ground washed in and I thought, oh my gosh. Wow. Cool. Komodo dragons are going to eat this. Yeah. And so I kind of picked it up, threw it back on the beach in the evening and bam, here comes two giant Komodo dragons. Here, you know, and, and they, they didn't. One of them became the dominant male, you oh, know. Yeah, but it was like, I'm yeah. standing right next to this Komodo dragon that's chucking down this huge eel and I'm just like, that's it's awesome. like a fantasy. I mean, yeah, it's like, it's wild. how do you yeah. even just, you know, moments like that, you couldn't even plan, rehearse. No, Jurassic Park. Yeah. yeah. It's you only get that out in the wild. You just got to go for it, see what happens. Unbelievable. You get to do a lot in the wild. I get to do a little bit in the wild, comparingly to you. Yeah. But wow. Incredible. Jay, thanks so much, buddy. Thanks, oh, Jay. Love it. To see Good you. to have Likewise. you, man. We'll have some more drinks by the bar tonight. <laughs> celebrate. Hold on. Celebrate. I don't drink. He has, he's me, me, I, I, he's gonna drink. He's going to drink I for me. I will have the drinks. Yeah, he'll, he'll you'll out. sit there. And we'll put lemon in his eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that was last night only. I'm done with that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> thanks, Thank buddy. you, brother. Thanks have a lot. great day, everybody. You know that four hours, four hours goes by. It does. We have one more guest. We actually got two. Ah. Yeah, is I gotta. One, I actually have to go confirm that. So is one of them a monkey? <laughs> well, now you're ruining it. Yes, and one of them is a monkey. No, it's called a tease, bro. Oh, teasing it. All right, I actually yeah. gotta go make sure that's still happening. I'll be right back. It's called a tease. Um, Good that segue. video is viral uh, online. The one with him squirting the lime juice in his eye. Oh, really? Yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere online now. I was really shocked that other people did that. I couldn't believe it. You were disgusted last night. It was. It was. It was just. No, I'm not doing it. There's yeah. No chance. Yep. I mean, uh, Caesar, which hat did you want? Let's see. The Wild Times Adventure Co. All right. Pretty cool. You can't have. You can't have the fat tire hat. This is Peter's personal hat. <laughs> we can't do that. Uh, I think I see. Oh, there's Sarah. Hey, Sarah, do we have our last guest? I don't know what that signal means. It was just a point and a smirk. She's just like, no. That's fine. Let's bring, mon let's bring the monkey on. Let's get the monkey. He can't be hey, found. Hey, Forrest, see if the monkey can come on now. But sign their book. Sign their book first. Should we do a battle royale? Just sure. me versus you, head to head? Yeah. What do you want to do? You got a, you got one? I let's see. Anyone have one? Go ahead, Caesar. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Would you rather fight a six foot tall duck or a three foot tall jumping spider? <clears throat> There's no good way here. No. There's no good answer, because a six-foot-tall duck, I would have no... There's no fucking way. The duck would kill you, but the spider would scare you to death before you even engaged with it. Does a jumping spider have venom? I don't think Let's it does. Let's just say no venom. Oh, it does. Billy's shaking his head furiously. It does. I'm going the duck. I'm going to fight yeah, the duck. I'm going with the, the duck. I've, I've seen, seen six Howard foot the tall duck. tall duck's head's going to be like this big. <laughs> have you ever seen Howard the Duck? Yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah, I mean, that's what, I, that's what you'd be fighting. Let's see. Is he coming over with Jinxie Monkey? I think he just bailed. 
No, I just see him in with a monkey back. coming over. Don't leave the live stream. I was just kidding. Forrest is coming back. Here we come. Come on in. Let's go. Kinsey Ooh. Monkey, everybody. The only monkey with an Instagram here at Animal Con. <laughs> oh, I was just going nice. to call him a monkey coming up. Nice. Hey, Billy, grab me a water real quick. So what have you done oh, I have here? Two, we have two monkeys. Solicited some new All right. Guests. Well, we lost Tyler Nolan, who was supposed to come on. So instead, we got some monkeys. And Good Nikki, job. Got jump Look at here, these. Here, 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 here. I can stand. Have two seats. Oh, wait. I got two now. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, my goodness. Yeah, this is going to be right. mayhem. You Forrest, you might want to grab your beer off the table. Nah, it's for the monkey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, hi. Some cute hi. monkeys. This is Hi, Kinsey. Hi, Kinsey. Oh, Kinsey just gave me a Hi, kiss. Kane. Hi, Kinsey. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Kane, she is so affectionate. Hi. So, introduce yourselves. Tell us what you guys I'm do. Giving you that? a hug. What's that? Oh, Where my you go? goodness. Oh, you Kinsey. Go I'm Kinsey. Yeah, here. And this is Rico. Hi, Rico. We didn't meet properly yesterday, very, very briefly, but nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. This is Kinsey Monkey. Hi, Kinsey. We do social media. I see that. We go live mostly on TikTok. Oh, you're in big you're, uh, he's trying you're to screwed. Groom you. Yeah, he's going to kill you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Picking tell us about Kinsey and Rico. Uh, I mean, obviously um, they're Capuchins, but tell us more. Well, Kane is actually from Way Back Exotics here in Florida. Okay. Um, she doesn't have another baby at the okay. zoo, so Kane comes over to play with Kinsey. They have play dates all the time. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And so Kane kind of is yours? Is? No. No. No, she's not here. Oh. The owner of the zoo, she's not here. Forrest, what kind of monkeys are these? Capuchins. Sorry. Got it. The mic was being stolen, so you, that's why I had to whisper it yeah. over Peter's shoulder. These are capuchins. <laughs> Tell us about them. What are the oh, temperatures like? He's looking at the beer. <laughs> he's looking oh, at the beer. beer. How was that, bud? Did he's he drink the only it? Oh, he just, just got a little whiff. How was that? It's okay. Kinsey that tire is going to like that, Kinsey I think. will throw it back. <laughs> um... So, I, I, I grew up with a monkey. I'll tell my story. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell my story. Uh, and then the reason I'm going to tell it is because I don't suggest anybody get a monkey. I don't like, You guys are different, and I'm obviously not I tell everyone, this. don't yeah. do it. Now, I mean, you. I want one already, but... You like, have no idea how yeah. mischievous yeah. and difficult they yes. are. Oh, God, um, I'm sure. So, I grew up in Zimbabwe in Southern Africa. Oh, wow. And okay. uh, one, one time when we were turning fields over, we found an abandoned vervet monkey. And, okay. uh, you know, it was very strange because we had oh, vervets all around the property. Right. It's very strange that there was an abandoned one. And we found out later that he had been abandoned intentionally because he had a, a heart condition. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, Chippy was his name. He was my absolute best friend. Bottle fed him. He was a tiny little baby. Bottle fed him. Saw his eyes open for the first time. Everything. I mean, tiny. Aww, yeah. Used to... Uh, sleep on top of my mosquito net as a bunk bed when I was growing up. And then I'd get out of bed in the morning, jump on my shoulder, we'd go to breakfast. He'd, uh, hey, th these guys love this story. He'd run across the table, oftentimes put his feet in the oatmeal, and then like climb up my dad. And my dad would go furious because he had to go to work. Yeah. One time he got a shotgun out, tried to shoot the whole thing. Oh, it's crazy. Chippy? <laughs> Chippy? Chippy. Yep. Chippy. Chippy the monkey. And, uh, and yeah, it was an amazing pet until he hit adolescence. Okay. And when he hit adolescence, he just decided he was the king of the castle. Yeah. He was an absolute piece of shit. That he uh, right. he tear my sister has scars to this day, like all over her arms and legs. Yeah. Where he was just because she was the littlest, crazy. she was my little sister. Dude, okay. You know, so pick on the baby. Right. And anyway, all of this is for me to say nobody should get a monkey. But <laughs> tell us about your monkeys. No, I, I agree. <laughs> Stop drinking my beer. Um, you know we do social media yeah and you, oh, you could talk into the mic babies. if you want yeah i'm sorry that's, that's okay. okay um people see these adorable babies on social media and they're like i want one yeah, yeah. and well, look how adorable this they is. are they're if so i could cute. just do this part of monkey i would say everybody get a monkey yes right? yeah. but they turn a year old and they're like insane. what was i thinking insane yeah. they can't handle it yeah um it's 24 you know seven oh, this is like non having a child that can that's on steroids but also <laughs> this yeah. energy yeah. is 24 7. right it's right. this it or out yeah. there's no like oh let's chill and watch tv no yeah, yeah. no how old are uh, Hi, these bud. two kinsey is one and a half okay and this is kane and he is nine and a half months oh Kane's my gosh how old nine and a half months just a curious that explains little the energy yeah. yes 
Yes. And I'm shocked. He doesn't go to people. Oh, really? Yeah, he's really? been going yeah. to people today. I'm like yeah. shocked. Stoked. Maybe he just likes being he on, likes on you the guys. pod. He's yes. just a pod monkey. He's a pod he monkey. Is. Maybe we need a pod monkey. Dude. I will not be the one. No, no, no. Oh, he's eating. He's eating a paper clip. He's having a ball. He's having a ball. What is the, what's the name of the uh, the channel or the Instagram that it's you guys Kinsey have? It's Kinsey Monkey. Kinsey Monkey. Yeah. All TikTok, right. um, Instagram. We're just starting YouTube. <laughs> she said like and follow. Yeah, do it. Um, yeah. Of Kinsey yes. is spelled K-Y-N-S-I-E. K-Y-N-S-I-E. K-Y-N-S-I-E monkey. So you said this part's really fun, obviously. What's well, but the, it's fun for... For 12 minutes. <laughs> uh, it's just that it never ends. Never ends. It never ends. And then, no. like, imagine that, except it's your phone, it's your wallet, it's yeah. something right. very yes. dangerous, something very valuable. I, they yes. hide it, they steal it. What did your dad, do, or what did Chippy do to your dad that caused him to shoot it, Chippy? Uh, so, literally, <laughs> every morning for maybe three months, he would run across the breakfast table, and my dad wore like a suit to work every day and everything. Uh -huh. And he would like get in my dad's breakfast. Oh yeah, oh necklace. Uh, he would get in my dad's breakfast and then like jump on my dad's suit or give, mess up his hair or something. And my dad warned me. He's like, if that monkey messes with me tomorrow, like that's it. You're, the monkey's gone. And I was like, no, dad, I won't let him. I won't let him. I won't let him. And literally didn't care at all. And the next day, literally straight across Same the thing. dining room table. Feet in the oatmeal, <laughs> straight onto his suit, straight into his hair, and he's like, "That fucking monkey!" Yeah. <laughs> like when it got that, and Chippy like leapt off of our our veranda into the right. trees. My dad like ran to the back to get a shotgun. I was like, "Cry!" I was like, "No, Dad, please!" Oh no. <laughs> I don't actually think he shot at it. I don't really know. Of course but, not. He um, shot the gun though. He shot the gun. Yeah. yeah I think he just, And it. I never let Chippy come to breakfast ever again. So <laughs> That's it worked. Yeah. A good thing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 That's great. So was this there, is this is a was blast. Was there cinnamon in the oatmeal? I'm not sure. Okay. I, I was I was 12. That's a big thing. They love cinnamon? Oh. Yes. They, uh, you guys yeah, like cinnamon? Did you guys know that monkeys love cinnamon? It's a natural thing okay. well, for them do. to Let cover their scent. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So there are certain things that they will wipe all over them to cover their scent. And cinnamon's one of them. Cinnamon's one of them and mosquitoes. Really? Yeah. That's they will wipe things on themselves like onions and things like that. Really? For, so yeah, I'll mosquitoes. I learned about monkeys, which is not... <laughs> this is hilarious. Which is not not widely known. My monkey Chippy. He's got it. He got a sip. That's okay. He's allowed. Yeah. No. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. My monkey for him. Chippy loved riding on my motorbike. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So I had a little Pee Wee 50 motorcycle that I'd ride because we lived on a big farm. Right. Uh, that I'd like ride around the farm, and if he heard that bike start, no matter where he was, he'd come he's zipping on. down and he and he jump like Chris, awesome. sit on the handlebars, and ready to yeah. go. Yeah. Loved it. Loved that it. That is awesome. Yeah. So Dude, you guys are based where? Here. Here. We're in right outside of Orlando. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah. And Kinsey's traveling around being an ambassador monkey. She is. Yeah. She Teaching is. People. She's our little Miss Diva. Yeah. Yes. And people love her. People love her. Does anyone well. in She's the a audience social butterfly. have any questions for either of the monkeys? <laughs> no. No. Okay. <laughs> How about, th whoa, whoa, <laughs> how about this? Because this is going to be the last thing we do on the pod, I think. Does anybody want to come up and see the monkeys while they're here? Come on up. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. You all right. Idea. No. Yeah. Come get some monkey time, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah monkey it's time. Monkey now, time. Now, <laughs> I doors. will tell you, be careful uh, with him. Is there that will work? Yeah, yeah, don't, don't pick them up. I just now, created chaos <clears> by suggesting Be this. careful with him. Because he is not social Billy, like Kinsey what's it is. What's like over there? What's the stream look like? Oh, sweet. Look okay. at him. That's amazing. Yeah. That, we're, we're breaking down barriers here. Yes, yeah. he is doing amazing. Look at his so, to be clear, don't pick him up, is what you're saying. Don't pick right? him up. Oh, yeah. watch no. the nose Just ring. Seriously, I wouldn't let him get that he if would, I were you. He would bite. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Has, no, have no, you ever been bit yours, by a captain? Yours I don't think he'll go for, but if he got his, if, but if he got his fingers in there, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever been bit by a capuchin? Oh, how many times? What's up? What? Yeah, how many times have you guys been bitten? Hundreds. I, today? No. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You've never been bitten? No. She's never bitten oh, you? No. I'm oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 I'm oh, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is she fantastic. Is. I assume it hurts. I, I mean, our vervet hurt yeah, like I mean, hell. She's not oh, yeah. Blood. Any monkey no, time in No, it's just like home. a leave me alone yeah. bite or yeah. I don't want that bite or whatever yeah. it happens to mm -hmm. be. Hi. Yeah, you don't, you don't want that. Hi, whoop. Yeah. No beer. 
No beer. Okay. I don't know. That's over there. Susie, was that you? <laughs> this is it's monkey pure may chaos. It is monkey I'm mayhem. Taking a video while time. we're live on the pod. Yeah, guys, he wants you to sit. Follow Here. He wants you to sit. He wants more beer for sure. This is hilarious. All right. Hey, thank you both for bringing That's Kinsey. Yeah, thank you guys. That made a lot Kinsey's of fun over. to have them been on. Awesome so far here. This Good. Weekend. You're enjoying animal yes, time. It's cool. I love lots it. of nice people. Lots of fun monkeys. It's yes. a good time. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, Thanks awesome. everyone who hung out. Yeah. Thanks to everyone watching on Bye, monkeys. the internet. Bye, guys. Thank you. Yeah. yeah thanks, everybody. That's not us. That's them. That's them. Yeah. But it's, okay. That's our cue. That's our that's cue. That's our cue. All right. We're out. Good night, Thank everybody. You everybody. Thank for you. Thank you for watching online. We love you. All right. You want to stop the um, live stream? Tyler, what's up, buddy?